You absolute donkey. It's raw. I told you it's raw. Cook it better. Come on. Come on. Grill the fit. Oh, hey. Sorry. I didn't see you there. I, uh, <clears throat> I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't channeling my, my, my inner Gordon. No, no. Of course not. Not at all. No, no, no. It was just, uh, uh, um, um, you know, making sure that my, my cook was doing a good job. See? Everybody's waiting on these cave fish for 308 health. Soon, with enough cave fish, I can take on any slayer tasks in Melvor Idol. But that's not why you're here. And that's not why I'm here either. We're here today to play a visual novel. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to show. One, there's a database of visual novels. I don't even know where to begin. Like how and why does this exist? But I'm surprised I didn't find it sooner. Look at this. There's an endless amount of visual novels. I double checked to make sure that this is mostly okay. Um, obviously, some of these visual novels are kind of insane. <gasps> Lord Hentai, my good friend, welcome. Yeah, this is such a good site. It is. I spent some time on it. Um, definitely found a, a bit more material to play with. Um, but today we're playing something that I don't think is listed on there. Actually, maybe. Let's see. Summer with the Shiba Inu. Holy shit, it's actually listed on there. <laughs> That's actually nuts. <laughs> okay, well, it is listed on here. Today we're playing Summer with the Shiba Inu. I use it all the time when I read stuff just for a quick TLDR and find the voice actors. Wait, does it list everything? Holy crap. Oh my god. Wait, that's actually amazing. Oh, it does. Yeah, it has a little summary. So let's, let's find a random, a random visual novel. Uh, maybe, okay, maybe. Let me just hide this. Let me click random a couple more times and hopefully it comes up with something. This has been sexually explicit. Wow, I saved myself. I definitely saved myself. Show me anywhere. Yep, let's not show that on stream. We are not showing that on stream. I, yep, I can't show that on stream. Oh boy. Holy cannoli. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this is a great site. Thank you, Lloyd Hentai, for showing me. Because, yeah, definitely ex explicit. Highly recommend you don't hit uh, random. Yeah. This one's safe. This one's safe. This one didn't give me a warning. Look, Boy's Hostel Word. That's a, that's, that's a wild name. Wild name. See all the different voice actors and stuff. We're not here for boys a uh, hostile word as well as the others that I saw, as long as I don't hit to back by accident. We're here for a summer with the Shiba Inu. I can't even begin to explain what this is. Like, I, I don't even want to explain this. I just want you all to know, I'm not a furry. Dogs are just cute. Yeah, and like, think about it, right? You have a bunch of dogs that are living their life like regular people. Like, look at this. I wish I could show this like image. Like, how do I get the, like, logo for this? Just the logo for it. We'll see it in the game. I am waiting for the the second part of this series. <laughs> called Autumn with the Shiba Inu. Which is currently in Kickstarter. So please, whoever you are, if you have any sort of extra money lying in your pocket, please, for the love of God, back the back the second game of, of the series i played the demo recently i think last 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 how many how how long have i been gone last friday uh oh sorry i'm still getting used to uh, fitting things around there we go. yeah roughly around last friday is when i played oh no oh dear god Oh no. Oh dear god. I have done terrible things to the options. Oh no. There we go. I played the demo of Autumn with the Shibrino and I was hooked. I was instantly hooked. You can't go wrong with using dogs as stand-ins for people. You absolutely cannot. I think that is a five-head move. An absolute five-head move. So, today, we're gonna play the first game in the series. Which apparently doesn't have any connection to the story of the second game. I don't really know how that works, but I'm curious to see how it works because it seemed like there was a lot of context that I was missing from the second game. 
I mean, look, it even has dog facts. When they sleep, she begins to curl up and use their tails to shield their face and nose and then protect the sensory from the Doesn't every dog do that? Doesn't- does every dog do this? I feel like every dog does this, no? Huh. Okay, I'm gonna check with our dog, Yogi. She has a small tail. I'm gonna double check her tail when, when she sleeps next time. All I can tell you about this game is that it's a visual novel involving dogs as people. Humanity has been wiped out. We're dead. Gone. There's nothing left of humanity. We're all- we're extinct. Dogs are the new apex predator. Not even wolves, not even like jaguars, but cheetahs. Are they cats? Do you think there's like a society of cats? Do you think Canine Da, uh, which is the in game Canada, the Canine Da, is at war with the cat them? We're about to find out. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, what is this? <laughs> Instantly? I'm so glad that I got this game. Say, Max, you really can't tell me where you're taking us? Oh my god, look at him! Look at that dog! Dude, the way it wears a polo, it wears the same polo as my elderly father. This guy wears this sweater like a middle-aged new, new homeowner. All the dog is missing is like uh, uh, white New Balance sneakers. Nope. Can't tell you, it's a secret. This is my old friend Max, who I haven't seen in years. Yesterday he said he would take me to lunch and show me around the city. Oh wait, sorry. I also forgot, I had a limiter on. Because yesterday went kind of crazy. Take the limiter off. We're currently in the central zone of Tai Pa. That's really good. Taipei, Taipa, Taiwan. The capital city of Shiba Island. A lot has changed. Wait, Shiba Island? It's the same island from the autumn game. <gasps> a lot has changed since I moved away. For one, he's not a Shiba. What's going on? Is he a Shiba? Do, do Shibas come in that color? Can Shibas have two colors? I've never seen a two color Shiba. I've never seen a two color Shiba. Max moved here several years after I did, so I'm a little embarrassed that he's the one showing me around like I'm a tourist. Tai Pa is as bustling as ever, the central zone being one of its busiest areas. Sorry, just double checking the volume. Just make sure it's not too loud. But the music's so good, so I don't want to kill out everything. Sorry, live volume mixing. I should have done this before. Listen, okay, I haven't streamed in like a week. I'm still getting used to my setup again, sorry. There we go. As Max guides us towards our unknown destination, dogs mill around the street. It's so busy on the street that it's hard to avoid pushing. What the? Like these other dogs as we walk. Huge digital signs shine brightly, even in broad day daylight. What is that dog? He has a little police badge. Cute coffee shops, each with, with, with its own unique decor. Catch my eye as well. One has lush vines creeping all over the storefront, leaving only a gap for the entrance. Oh my god, there's so many of them. Is there a third one? Through the gap of the vines, I catch a glimpse of what- Oh my god, there's more! What looks like more plant life and thick tree, tree stumps that serve as tables. That? It sounds amazing. Wait, tree stumps that serve as tables? Hey, that place seems really cool. Let's check it out sometime. Max pauses to take a look as I point to it. He cranes his neck to look inside. <laughs> it's pretty cute. Oh my god. Okay, is it weird to call these like anthropomorphic dogs cute? Right? That's like calling a person cute. That's like walking up to someone and being like, you're, you're cute. It's kind of weird. I don't know. But but they look so cute. Look at them. Look how happy he, look how happy Max looks and Sid looks. Look at that little boyker. I've noticed it before too on the way to work. I'd be happy to try it out. A short walk later. After several trains, we stop in front of a building. The building is made of red brick with some steps leading up to it. Ta-da! I know it doesn't look like much out here, but the virtual tour looked great on bar. <laughs> <laughs> they really went in on the on the uh, the uh, the uh, the, uh, the uh, dog theme, the the uh, dog theme. They actually could have okay. Realistically, if Yelp wasn't already a copyrighted name, they could have kept Yelp as the name instead of Bart. It absolutely would have fit. Max approaches the door but doesn't open. He starts catching himself before he runs face first into the door. He nudges the door with his shoulder. 
Do they walk on their hind legs? Wait, how did he open the door? Do they walk on their hind legs? Oh my god. Wait, okay, now I'm starting to really think about the logistics of a society of dogs, right? Because nothing's changed. Wait, there's a human! Look! There's a human! Look! Oh my god, there's a human in the background. Wait. We must look, look, look. Oh my god, that's, that's the last surviving human. Oh my god. Oh my god. Suspicious. Last human alive. Oh yeah. Human. What? There's no way. Humanity's last hope. One singular human. Do you think she's freaked out that these dogs are like walking and like talking around her? And she can't do anything? <gasps> Hero Boyle, my wife is in the chat. Please be uh please be please be nice to her. Or else. Like, uh, she must be terrified, right? I would be terrified. Imagine you woke up one day, and all of your, every single dog that you've ever seen or known is just walking around sitting at, at the cafes, walking on their hind legs. Because how else do they open doors? It doesn't budge. <gasps> the door's broken! <laughs> no idea. It seems like an eclectic place. That's the reason I chose it. Maybe there's some secret password we need to enter. Um... Can you look it up? Already on it. Max calls up his wrist phone menu, making some gestures in the air. Um, we need to figure this out. Some reviews allude to something interesting we need to do to enter, but they don't say outright what it is. Uh, what's the place called? It's just one letter. Q. Q. Maybe it's close there? I checked and it shouldn't be. If they couldn't update their real-time schedule for some reason, that's really weird. Wait, what's that? Is <laughs> Isn't that a doorknob? Oh no, we can't open it. Max, we can't do this. We have to walk away. We have no opposable thumbs. What? A doorknob? A doorknob. You mean... Wait, I remember something. Humans. Yes, this world used to be populated by humans. They were these primates with opposable thumbs. Oh, come on. It hasn't been that long. What do I feel old because of the fact that I've seen doorknobs before? I sit down before the- oh my god, wait, it, that's actually- I actually nailed it. I 100% nailed it. It's literally- they- Doorknobs are extinct because dogs are the new apex predator in- in this world. Oh my god, I actually nailed it. I sit down before the protruding sphere and grip it with both of my paws. I'm able to turn it without losing my balance. The door swings inward to reveal a staircase. Good things knobs were phased out though. <laughs> Prevented these things clearly did not understand the anatomy of dogs. True. It's precisely why many years houses use them for rooms that puppies aren't allowed into. My parents use it for the pantry. Oh, look, they look so sad. He looks so sad. He looks so adorable. Wait, stop. He's a person. Don't call him cute. But look at him. He looks so sad. Look at him. He's like, look at his head. He's like, oh. He look at him. He's just. He's just so sad. Oh my god. Wait. We save that. Per tra tradition. Set pup. Per tradition, we keep every photo that we have. Set pup. Mm, yes. Perfect. Mm, yes. You joined me, doggo. Mm, yes. Come here. It's okay. Don't. Don't. Don't cry. No, 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 no need to be sad. Shit, is that Max or Sid? I've already lost the track. I remember trying to bite the knob to get to the promised land of treats, but ended up with a pat oh, but, but ended up with only a particularly sore jaw instead. Well, there we go. His Sid. It, his name is Sid. Ah ha ha! I haven't seen these things since the arena days. Oh <gasps> wait! Oh my God! Context. Okay, for context, the autumn with the Shiba Inu demo mentioned the arena, and I had no clue what it was. I felt like I was missing so, so much context. Uh, we're about to get lo a Lloyd dump. <gasps> Our eyes meet, and he looks away. Why, Max? What's wrong? Oh no, wait. Sid, you're in the way of the attack. Sorry. Get behind me. Oh. Oh. Oh, <laughs> look at them. Look at them. <laughs> anyway, we're here. The stairs lead to an area with wooden floor paneling. There are rooms that have a raised base separated from the main area with sliding panels. 
The panels have some membrane-like material that's thin enough to let light through, but thick enough that we can't see into the rooms. Paper? Oh, oh my god, look at the silver dog. Yo! A dog comes up to us in red traditional dress. It's fashioned with several layers with a large golden button holding it up neatly over the dog's shoulder. Welcome. Hi, I called earlier and made a reservation. He talks with the server and we are led to one of the rooms. And I hoist myself up on the ledge, oh my god, look at him. And make yourself comfortable on one of the cushions around a low wooden table in the center of the room. Okay. Wait, I have to, oh my god, I wish I, I, I wish I had it on hand to show you guys. I have a wall scroll of a bunch of dogs eating. Um, um, um. Oh, uh, yakiniku. I'll be back. Up. I have to show you guys. This actually, it's, it's actually like, it's actually like note for note the same thing. I'll be back. Look, once you see it, you're gonna be like, thank you. Thank you for going through all of this trouble to show us, okay? You, you're gonna see it. It's actually a perfect match. Sorry, I just have to send it to myself. Because I can't show it to you on webcam, because that that kind of <laughs> it's currently in the use by the V2 model. Let me just uh, pull it up really, really quick. And you do a roundabout way. Oh my God! It it literally it it fits so well. Arf arf. It's by a wonderful artist named uh, the Jed Henry. He makes, uh, honestly, a bunch of really nice wall, uh, wall scrolls. It is one of my favorite possessions that we have. It is a wonderful piece of art. Oh dear god. I'm sorry. I should have done that in studio mode. Again, still getting used to the streaming thing. Oh yeah. Look at that. You can't tell me this is not the exact same situation. Look at this. I'm, I was ready for this game. I was 100% ready for this game. Okay, Mr. Jed Henry, thank you for the wall, for the wall scroll. You go in the corner now. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. See, it looks so good. You'll take my finest stock? Well, it's not mine. <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll link the artist, actually, afterwards. Actually, right now, because I have them. I have a link to his stuff anyways. They, he, he runs a site called Yukio Heroes, where there are tons of different posters, wall scrolls, everything. The designs are amazing. He, they even do traditional woodblock prints. It's really, really nice. But I was ready for this moment. And look at him. He's just ready. He's ready to eat some yakiniku. The server gives us menus and leaves after a courteous bow. Take... Eh, take your time. I'm guessing you haven't had food like this since you left. Oh, yeah. Oof, I've forgotten all about these. Or there, there anything you like, my friend? My treat? <laughs> Sorry. There are a lot of options. I flip through the tea menu. I flip through the tea menu. This place serves them with ancient methods, with multi-part clay apparatus that I never remembered the names of. Apparatuses? Apparati? It invokes the image of my parents pouring boiling water, steam shrouding their concentrated faces. There are a lot of rules about how long to steep the tea, and the order of pouring water in and out. I never really paid attention when I was a puppy, and to my parents' generation it seemed like a lost art. If this place shows us the tea steeping process, I definitely won't let a second chance to learn about it pass by. Isn't it interesting that they still use these books as menus? I remember they were pretty much phased out along with... Humans. <laughs> 
we haven't had these since the humans were phased out of existence. Doorknobs? Yeah, yeah, that's one of the things. Well, this place is known online for the retro atmosphere, which is why they only take your phone res reservations. No usual order screen too. Yeah, it's really interesting how fast things have changed on the island. Though, maybe that's just my perception, because, first of all, I don't know what's supposed to be normal nowadays. Uh, was it like where you were living? They are kind of at a stage like when I left here, actually. You saw my phone. There's similar levels of uh, technology in K9 da, Canada. They've taken over Canada. Canada has fallen. The humans have fallen. We <laughs> are there any humans left in this world? Oh god. Canada has fallen to the dogs, please. This is our future. This is my future. Soon, I'm gonna be replaced by like a dog v a VTuber. A Shiba Inu VTuber as like a golden retriever or something. That is my future. That is my destiny and I can't stop it. It's coming. It's it, it's coming. It's barreling towards me. Though obviously, my Shiba Island phone doesn't work there, but I kept it in good condition. Just in case I come back, you know? <laughs> you have a lot to see here then. Next time, I'll take you out to a regular restaurant and you'll get to see how fast everything is. The server returns and we order some Awulong tea. You hear that sound? That's the sound of me clapping. That's a good one. That's a really, really good punny name. Awulong! <laughs> For the Oolong tea? <clears throat> and we order some Awulong tea to share. I ordered some egg crepe rolls with ham and corn, and Max gets the century egg and koi kanji. Oh my god. I'm so hungry. These are also foods that I grew up with. My, my family would very often go like eat these as well. As we wait, I ask, Max about, I ask Max about some technological changes. He shows me the set of custom gestures on my new wrist phone, but I still treat it with caution. Call it habit, but I am hesitant to be gesturing in the air on such a large holographic interface. It serves my purposes to use the old touchscreens on a small phone. The hologram just seems overkill. Not to mention, the companies that make these phones must be tracking so much information. They know what we read, who we call, where we are, what we buy. Somewhere, some team of data Shibas are making predictive models and segmentation analysis on this data. Oh, sorry, I spaced out. Uh, were you saying something? I was going through a whole, like, data analyst phase. Um, haha, getting confused by all this new tech? Ah, uh, maybe a little. Uh, don't, don't worry about it. It's a lot of information to take in. Here, try sending something to me, like this. Oh, what he's doing? What are you doing? App, Babortwark, to test, a Sid dog, Mad Maxi. That's, that's a good, that, that's a, that's a good reference. C come on, c who spells like that? Why would you spell it like that? Come on, you couldn't have texted something else, pretend it's an actual conversation. You're in the same room. <laughs> Sad face cry. <laughs> hey, let's take a selfie. No. As Max shows me how to install new software and customize my interface, we hear the service slowly slide open the screen door, giving us enough time to swipe away our hologram phone screens. Two servers in this, this time, carrying a tea making set. The second consists of a large hollow bottom panel with holes that allow steam from hot water. What? Hollow bottom panel with holes on the bottom? With, wait, wait. Hollow bottom panel with holes on the bottom? Doesn't that just, just mean it just, like, pours out? Maybe I'm, re uh, I'm reading around. They begin the process of lining up various tea cups on top of the panel stand. The dogs carefully place tea leaves in the pot. They're not using any measuring instruments, but the practice way they gather and sprinkle the leaves shows impressive muscle memory. With one fluid motion, they pour steamy water in each of the cups. As the tea is steeping, our food arrives. I take a moment to simply look fondly at the egg crepe rolls. The way steam rises from under the soft crepe skin, the smell of ham misting out towards me, it really has been so long. It's so weird I used to eat this almost every day and now it's been years. I feel like I've gone back in time. Egg crepes are a simple dish, usually made in only two minutes by the breakfast stalls I used to frequent on the island. First, an egg is cracked and dropped onto the surface of a sizzling metal plate. Oh my god, I'm getting hungry for this. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I wasn't ready for this. All, all I've had so far is like coffee. <laughs> wait, wait. The cook then uses a metal spatula to smooth out the egg so that it is a thin liquid layer. When the egg is cooked around halfway, oh, a thin crepe is laid on top of it and flips so that the egg layer is on top. And the crepe on the sizzling plate. 
Ooh, and then on top, the cook adds any other ingredients of choice. Oh, such as ham. Ooh, a corn. Once fully cooked, the entire crepe is quickly rolled up and cut into bite-sized portions with the spatula. Using the flat surface of the same spatula, the portions are then scooped up and swiftly placed into a takeout box. Hope you enjoy. You can try some of the kanji if you want. I was feeling something light. During this time, the tea is ready as well, and I blow on the surface of my cup, creating ripples. My first sip is hesitant as I try to adjust it to the temperature. After a few sips, I can feel the strong tea aftertaste on my tongue. Ah, oh, this is bliss. We chat more as we eat, and I ask him about the, how the culinary norms have changed around the island. Apparently, most of the dishes I remember are still around. The largest change in the cuisine is caused by the advancement in how food is produced. Yeah, wait a minute. Humans are dead, so who's farming your food? Are there dog farmers now? Max explains how nowadays, a lot of ingredients can be produced synthetically, which reduces scarcity and seasonality. Ooh. It is widely accepted that they're the same flavor and contain the same nutrients as naturally grown ingredients. I used to wonder why we have beef dishes on the island, but we've never seen an animal called a cow. What? What do you mean? What do you mean you've never seen an animal called a cow? What? 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 Oh my god. Wait, humans weren't the only thing that went extinct. What happened? You know what this is? This is a weird, this is a weird analogy to make. But Spongebob, the theory, okay, so the, the running theory in the Spongebob fandom. <laughs> is it a fandom? Is it, is it a fandom if every eight-year-old loves that show? I don't know. Whatever. In the, the theory in the Spongebob fandom is that Bikini Atoll, Bikini Bottom, is the site of a nuclear blast. And so they've mutated into, like, you know, living beings. What's the thing? Like, what's the background of this game? Like, what happened to humanity and cows? And why the cows specifically? <gasps> Maybe that's why. Maybe cats don't exist anymore. Maybe other animals don't exist. Maybe where are the animals now? Maybe. I got it. We mutated into dogs. Dogs is the final form. It's like, you know, the carcinization theory where every living being becomes like a crab. But in this case, you become a dog. The doganization theory. I guess these synthetic flavors already existed 10 years ago since beef has been around since before I was born. I just didn't, I just didn't know that they were synthetic. I learned from Max that lately, there's been a rise in restaurants that offer wider experiments of foods with completely new synthetic inventions. Max shows me some pictures on his phone, and we decide on the restaurant to try out next. He warns me that some flavors might really surprise me. Even dogs that try these things now and then have trouble getting used to some of the most outrageous invented flavors. I asked him to describe something he's tried before, but it was hard for him to convey it in terms of foods I know. For example, one tasted like cinnamon and cabbage flavor mix, but that doesn't really describe it fully. I can only understand when I have the chance to try it, I suppose. We finish our food and reminisce a little more. However, there's one thing in our shared history that we just don't bring up. I get an uneasy feeling I should wait a little longer for me to ease back into the culture of the island first. Max pays and we exit the restaurant. I'm quite full and nostalgic. Oh my god, I love these dogs. <sighs> we'll have a lot of time to do all these things, right? Back on the street is even busier than before we ate. It's the afternoon. Dogs probably don't have much to do but relax on the weekend. As before, the smell of all types of food wafted out onto the streets, and evening food stalls start being set up. Oh. Where I'm from, uh, but, like where I where I am now, we don't get often food stalls. There's a few, there's a, there's handfuls of them in like the pockets of our city where my where me, me and my wife live, but they're hard to find. They're very, very hard to find. Um, I miss, back when I visited the Meadowlands, all the food stalls everywhere. They all had, they, they was, there were all kinds of foods available at any time of day. You could eat anything you like wanted and they all tasted amazing. They were extremely affordable. They were extremely uh, convenient, portable. It was just a great time. I, I miss food stalls a lot, and I wish more places had more food stalls. Well, that's what I guess they are. They look much more modern, clean. From the cash course and tech that Max gave me, they probably have automated ordering and all that, but the street seating and rustic charm remain. You push past a particularly, a particularly crowded part of the street, and I feel a tap on my shoulder. I don't, really, I don't really think about it, as it was probably someone rushing past me with a backpack or by accident or something. Wait, they wear backpacks? Wait, how do they, they get dressed? Right? Can a dog dress itself? 
How hard must it be? Think about how hard it must be to go into a sweater with just like on your like, on your like paws. Well, actually, it's not that hard. No, but we have thumbs. I'm I'm gonna try it. I continue walking when I feel it again. Yeah, it could also be mistaking me for someone else. I turn around to check. Who is this? Wait, so what a cool looking dog. But why did the music get so freaky? Sid! Uh, uh, who are you? She's a smaller Shiba Inu, but something tells me that she compensates for it with her attitude. Her gaze on me is steely, way too steely for comfort. It's concerning that she seems to have approached me with purpose. Hopefully she really just recognized me by chance. You don't remember me? She scoffs, discontent clearly written in her expression. I'm not surprised, but I'm still disappointed. Now I have to waste time explaining things to you. What's going on? Some random dog just came up to me. You're Mochi. Mo mochi? You're Mochi, right? I remember you. Oh. Oh, what? You? Oh my god, what's going on? Why does he look so angry? Calm down! Calm down, Max! What? What are you here for? My business was Sid, of course, not with you. But it's very interesting to know that you two are in touch. Also, I'm sorry about the voices. I've completely lost track. Like, how do you how do you assign a voice to these dogs, right? I guess Max looks kind of scruffy. Sid looks kind of like, you know, cozy. Sid looks cozy. And random dog with the beret looks classy. She jerks her head to the side. Let's go somewhere more secluded, shall we? I don't move. Well, if it's something important, why don't you message me? I'll give you my contact info. I'll convince you quickly. In short, anyone can now challenge you to an arena. But I don't think many dogs know what you look like now. Only a pawful. If you don't come to me right now, I'll post your information online. I already filmed a video of you, so everyone will know what you look and sound like. That's possible! Ugh, Sid, ignore her. Let's go! How do I respond? Uh... Oh god, I am so- I'm so curious. I'm curious, but then Max won't be happy. Yeah, Max will definitely not be happy. But will Max be willing to hear her out, right? I feel like, why throw away the friendship with Max just for this random dog out of just pure curiosity? And what if I actually die? And like, what's an arena, right? That sounds- again, arenas is where, like, you know, gladiators fight. What's gonna happen to me? I think we need Max to back us up. Interesting. It took me 29.76 seconds. What? It counts? Wait, there's no way. There's no way, right? Slacker. Max, wait. I want to see what she has to say. Would you mind coming with me? Uh, he seems to be thinking over what the stranger just told me as well as his response. If you don't want to come, that's fine. I'll meet you when I'm done. Okay. I'll come with you. I dress the stranger. We'll go with you and hear you out. But convince me quickly. Oh, <gasps> What's happening? A tense walk later. We head to a nearby alleyway, Max looking quite reluctant and glaring at the Shiba Inu. They know each other. I wish I could ask him what he knows about her, but the best I can do is make sure nothing bad happens. I need information about this arena challenge she mentioned. Who are you? Uh, Sid, she's Hei, she's Hei Fen Hong. Huh? What? What? Who is Hei Fen Hong? I look the dog up and down. Oh my god. Up and down. Oh! Look, he's a, he's a little shy. He's a little shy dog. Look at that. He's a little shy dog. Look at that. It's okay, Sid. Sorry, Sid. Sid. Sorry. I'm sorry for patronizing you. You're so goddamn cute, Sid. Jesus Christ. Her face should be the most important part to recognize here, but I realize I haven't even looked her in the eyes yet. It's a task not made easier by knowing who she is. It's like my eyes are resisting as I force myself against my will to look at her closely. Her eyes are striking hazel, long lashes, her coat pale and fluffy. So, so fluffy. I just want to hold her. I just want to pet her. I just want to give her a little boop on the nose. I lower my gaze. Ah, yeah, now I remember. <laughs> it's just been a really long time and you've changed a lot. I'm rambling, yet trying to put on a calm front. As I was saying, now that you're back, it's a very interesting situation for all of us. You weren't supposed to just take the feather and leave. It's not like my leaving affected anyone. Instinctively, I scoff and protest, but I know it's futile. 
Easy for you to say. Anyway, now that that's out of the way, she reaches into her shirt and pulls out her pendant. I avert my gaze again out of habit. I don't like looking at other's pendants because it feels like I'm intruding on someone's privacy if I look closely at what's on them. Ooh! She moves closer, and all but flashes her pendant in front of my eyes. I flinch away, involuntarily. If you want to show it to me, it's not necessary. I don't need to see it. I start, as I feel my pendant stirring in my jacket. Or something is stirring where the pendant is. My pendant can't move by itself. That's impossible. Then my pendant flies out of its own will to meet hers. Then comes a glare of light, so brief that I barely comprehend what's happening. Oh my god. Oh my god, am I being sent to the Shadow Realm? Sid! Max's voice is the last thing I register, before everything goes dark. One week earlier, what? Oh. Uh, just one more snooze. Oh my god, this sound is traumatic to me. <laughs> Yo! Wait, that's crazy. How did I get a picture of my room? That's actually nuts. Huh. I fumble on the desk for my phone. I almost drop it, but finally managed to grab it and turn off the alarm. Uh, as usual, there's not much time left before my deadline waking up. Waking time. Which means after the four alarms that I am allowed to snooze. Even though it's my last day of work, I should be on time. Aww. That's all. It looks so sad. It's like a last day of work. No, you can sleep in. It's fine. Alright? You don't have to be on time for your last day of work. I uncur myself from the chair, stretching my sore limbs. Well, this is certainly the last time I'm going to fall asleep at my desk. The room is dark, with only a sliver of sunlight entering from the bottom of the blinds giving indication that it's daytime. This is a, okay, this is a ballway setup. This is a 100% ballway setup. I would love this setup. Maybe, maybe less shelves. I uh, shelves kind of scare me. I'm scared of like earthquakes and stuff. But, baller shelves. And also the back monitor, I really wish it wasn't obscured by the front monitor. <laughs> I really wish it was higher up. I slide off the chair, turn on the room lights, and gather items I need for work which are scattered around the room. Keys, card, cash, cell. How did they use a mouse? Why, they, why does he have a laptop on the side? Is that a razor mouse? Oh my god. I bet you it's like a paw... Like a, it is a paw mouse. It's a paw print. I always say I should pack up the night before so I'm not scrambling like this every morning. But I never end up actually doing it the night before. I shove my bulky laptop and the water bottle into my backpack. Then I fling open the closet and reach inside for the sweater I thankfully had the foresight to set aside. Uh, I can't find it. In the days after I had set aside the sweater, I had piled other things inside the closet over it. I shove away some other items, hats, papers, and whatnot. Aha! There it is! My favorite gray sweater. A special outfit for a special day. Everything collect- Oh, dude, that's so cute. It looks so cute. It looks Sid looks so goddamn adorable. Oh, Jesus Christ. But it's like, it's like a person. It's like walking up to someone, right? And being like, God, you're so cute. And like pinching their cheeks and stuff. And it, I'm like a fully grown adult. And they're like, what the hell are you doing to me? You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's messed up. But like, look, like this is so cute. Look the way it sits with those little paws. God, I love dogs. Everything collected, I sit down on the ledge of my bed and just take a moment. Now is the perfect time to check my emails. Oh, oh, wait, I'm already almost late. I'll just take a quick look. Vapor store. Confirmation of your vapor purchase. Oh my god, I vape? No, please, no. No, not you too, doggo. Not this world too, please. Dear at Sid Days, thank you for your purchase of Beagle. Beagle Nether 3. Be Beagle Nether 3. Oh my god, it's witch time. Attached is your digital receipt. Product ID number 46790. Transaction ID, I'm. Um, I'm not even gonna, gonna try. I'm, gonna, I'm going to study. Total $22.59. To access your downloads, please go to vapor.dog account slash down. Is that a real site? There's no way, right? Oh. Vapor.dog slash account slash downloads. Uh, no. Vapor.dog. Wait, is dog even an allowed domain name? Wait, let's see. Dog domain name. Why? Why did Google. Google gave me. A eukaryote. What? What? Wait, there is a dog domain. Oh, 
Oh my god, there's actually a dog do domain. About dog domains. What? Wait, it's $40 a year? That's actually so cheap. Well, that's not really cheap, but still, like, that's amazing. What? Oh my god. I really hope that they make this a real site. Eventually. Oh, right. Oops. It's the purchase receipt for the game I had fallen asleep playing. I need to complete the campaign. I waited six years for it. I glance at the top of my phone screen. There's still a couple of minutes before I absolutely have to head out. I close my emails and open the message app. Oh, I could send some last words. Oh, a little sad face. But I have the feeling it will only weaken my resolve. Um... Ooh, ah, uh, just one last text to the most important dog wouldn't hurt, or there's no need to say goodbye, it would just hurt her. I should go. No, that's, that's messed up, right? Like, just how do you know it would, it would, it would hurt them, right? Like, you, you can't possibly assume that it would hurt them, because at the same time, it's like, wouldn't they be hurt by, by just being like, oh, you just left, okay, bye, I, I guess, you know what I mean? Like, it's, I feel like one last text is, is the right thing to do. If they're so important to us that in this moment we think about them, I think it's worth it for us to, to message them so that they know, right? Keep those important to you close to your heart. Hey, Q. Q what? I love you. Q? Wait, Q. Wasn't the restaurant's name Q? <gasps> Please don't for forget me. Uh... Oh... I'll just check the spelling one more time. Oh, it's a nervous... It was it such a nervous little pupper? God, I'm just stalling so I have an excuse to wimp out and not send the message. I can't bring myself to directly say that I'm leaving now. But I hope she knows what I mean. With my paw poised on the screen for what seems like forever, and I press send. Doggles, there's so many doggles. Look at them. There's so many doggles all over the place. There's doggles on the right. Sid is uh Sid is Jesus dog. Wait, Sid, you're walking on water. What's the going what's what's going on, Sid? The familiar glass doors welcome me. I scan my fob key and step into the building. It doesn't feel like it was that long ago when I first entered these doors. I had been a fresh recruit, full of hopes and dreams, and making honest living for myself and, and contributing to society. I'm just here to pick up my stuff and do the paperwork. I repeat this to myself as I head down the familiar staircase. I'm just here to pick up my stuff and do, do my paperwork. That's it. Other dogs start to file into the building and some stop to wish me well on my move to the west coast of Kainanda. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. Wait, wait, So the timeline is, one week earlier, I was in Taipa. I then moved to Kainanda. Then one week later, I was like, forget this, I'm going back home to Kainanda, to Taipa. Last week, we had a small office celebration in honor of my work and departure from the job, which was heartwarming. It changed my heart to embarrassing goo, so I try not to admit how much I appreciate it. I enter my office, which is separated from the corridor by a metal door and glass wall. Wait, how high up is Sid? I, I never had my own separate office. I was in like an open office. What? I scan my fob again. This is one of the most secure rooms in the building, despite that there isn't much to protect. Inside my office, I take a look at the communal monitors and the well-used keyboard. None of this is personal property, of course, but I'm going to miss it. Ah, funny enough, my office desk basically just looks like my room at home. Uh, I feel guilty about leaving now that I'm here. I'm throwing away all that I've built. All of this. Surprising as it might be to the general populace, this research facility is responsible for a big portion of the, te te of the technological innovation in Kainanda. In fact, the foam that I'm using right now and the associated software was popularized by prototypes created in this very facility. I double checked the desk drawers again and filled the form to submit to the Labrador Resources Depart- Labrador? Oh my god. Yeah, in, in Canada. Oh my god. A Labrador dog? Don't we have a- Okay, again, for context, I'm really bad with geography. I just want you to know, I what's that place in Canada that sounds very close to Labrador? Is it actually Lab Labrador? And then there's also a, a Labrador... Wait, is there a Labrador? Oh, oh, wait, there is a Labrador dog. Oh my god. It's really good. Labrador Resources Department. With all the errands and formalities done, I take my leave for the last time. <laughs> I just got an achievement called Oak OK9 As I walk away, I can't help but look back at the building one last time. 
What? It's you. <gasps> oh, no, I'm not going to read it. It doesn't matter now. I must go. Don't, don't be shy, Sid. Come on. It's fine. Newfoundland. Wait, really? Labrador is Canada? Wait, actual? Like, like actual factual. I, again, I just want you to know, I'm bad at geography. I'm trusting you. Bad, back at home, I get a backpack with some living essentials, and of course, my other set of keys, card, cash, and cell that will allow me to get around during my travels. I reach into my shirt and take out my pendant. My pendant from Shibuya Island. There's ten orbs with smaller orbs surrounding them. I've been wearing it all these years. My last connection to Shiba Island. It's a remnant of a life long past. And while this pendant means nothing here, it's one of the essentials in a different land. It's time. I snap open a compartment in the back of the pendant. A once fluid movement. The clasp feels unfamiliar to me now. I have a good, stable life here that I earned. I brought myself here. Giving this up means moving backwards. But that also means letting go of the chance to see my brother again. What? As long as time moves forward, I will move forward too, no matter where I am. Inside the compendent, inside the pendant compartment is a small feather, already glowing now that I've removed his bindings. The feather of truth, whose holder can alter real Wait a gosh darn minute. Wait a dog wait a dog gone minute. Hold up. Did Sid? Wish for the world to become doggies? Did Sid wish for humanity to be extinct, wiped, and to become dogs? Oh my god, Sid altered reality to become a dog? I make a wish. I wish to go back. <laughs> what? Oh my god. Okay, maybe I'm not that far off. Maybe I'm not that far off. Maybe... Right? Somebody, maybe a human had it, and then they dropped it, and their dog picked it up. And it was like, you know what would be really cool? If every, if everyone was a dog like me. And then their owner was like, no, and then they like died, right? I'm not that far off. I think that's what happened, because now we're dealing with, with, like, magic here. It feels as if I just stepped into a sauna. Within seconds, my coat feels heavy with condensation, and as if someone just threw a wet blanket on me. So, I'm here. I have not moved one muscle since I made my wish to the feather. But these sounds, contrasted with the quietness of my room, give me no doubt that my wish was indeed granted. In addition, these yelps and commotion really alert me to my sis situation. To my situation. <laughs> it's pretty good, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she be eating scatter in front of me, yapping as if they saw a ghost. Was it that obvious I appeared up to there? I mean, yeah, you literally just came out of, of like nowhere onto a busy street. This is not good. Uh, I can't believe I'm drawing attention already. I'm in what seems to be an open air night market. I scan my surroundings trying to spot a gap or opportunity to make an escape. <coughs> These bikes are different, deep and booming. A stark contrast to the higher pitched yaps of the crowd. <coughs> I look behind me and it becomes evident why the dogs are scattering. Maybe it's just wishful thinking that I'm not the cause. Oh! oh my god, it's a Labrador. Oh my god. A Labrador Retriever is bounding around. The Shiba Inu is dwarfed by it in comparison. The crowd is herded towards the opposite direction. I slink around to the side and duck behind a food kiosk. Thanks to the Labrador, this area seems to be deserted. Now that I'm undercover, I sneak my way towards what I hope is an exit. After some trial and error through the web of kiosks to see the areas, I emerge onto the main road outside the market. What is going on? Wait, this is the this is the road where we were on with the Max. Hey, this way. The voice comes from behind me and I start, my fur rising on end against my will. What the fish fillet? This one followed me without me noticing. The Labrador Retriever from before emerges as a speaker, falling to step beside me. <laughs> That was supposed to be a snarl. It just didn't come come out right. Did you say something? Uh, <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> I hope that was menacing enough. What do you want? Oh, to help you, of course. I'll guide you somewhere safe. What? Who is this dog? I'll just feign ignorance for now. Somewhere safe? I think you've mistaken me for someone else. 
No, I don't... I don't want to be rude, but I know you've been away for a long time, so you probably don't even know where you are. The Labrador's voice is soft. Oops. Quite a contrast from her towering physique. Oops. Well, I'm quite used to this height difference in K9 data, but seeing her towering over the crowd of Shiba Inus earlier amplifies the difference. What to do? Wait, where's the third option, right? Because the first option is continue to feign ignorance and hope she leaves me alone. Second option is to yell at her. Where's the third option of like, yeah, can I come with you? Can I... Can I... Can I climb on you, you know? And you like carry me, me around? It's like a giant dog. Yeah. Maybe, okay, this is the closest one to, to, to being like, please stay with me. This is getting creepy. It's like she knows who I am. What does what, what she want? Well, I'll just pretend I don't know what she's talking about. I'm not gonna reveal any information I might regret. Like my magical wish feather. You're not wrong. I'm just trying to get my bearings here. So could you just point me to the closest massive rapid transport station? Massive, the MRT. That's a good pun. That's a good punny name. Of course. But before that, I want to ask you some questions. Okay, never mind. This is getting weird. I should just find the MRT station myself. <gasps> I just want to help you, Miss Feather. What did you just say? That's not my name. You've definitely mistaken me for someone else. Sorry, let me try that again. I didn't want to be so direct. Oh. But you didn't get the hit. Could you speak up? I mean, Sid, bearer of the feather, I want to help you. Ah, fish bones. She really does know who I am. Okay. You want to help me, you say, so I'll ask this again. Why don't you start by guiding me to a massive rapid transit station? Ah, don't worry, I will. But first, I want you to take this. She produces from her pockets a wristband of sorts. It's a wrist phone. I'll, ca I'll contact you with it and you can reach me in turn. Thank you, but why do you think we'll be in contact after this? There's no reason for me to get involved in whatever it is that, that you want. Well, for one, I guess it would be troublesome if the dogs knew you were back on the island, so I created a, di a diversion. That's not, re that's not reassuring at all. She knows way too much about me. Who the fish bones is she? I need to learn as much about her as possible. I know you could really use my help. You know you've gotten yourself into trouble too, right? You'll probably get arrested for disturbing the peace like you did. I have a story set up. Plus, I'm a laboratory living on Shiba Inu Island. I'm sure you already know I am constantly in the spotlight. Yo, wait, yeah, okay, again. This is what I said during the autumn with the Shiba Inu game. Is it weird to be like a, a different type of dog in like a Shiba Inu infested... Not infested. Well, I guess infested. Infested island. Because like... They, they they must stand out. Uh, Shiba Inus aren't that big, right? They're like kind of like... Are they a medium dog? I guess, okay, if you put a Labrador and a Retriever as like large, right? I think Shiba Inu is a medium and a Chihuahua is small, right? This Labrador is twice the size of every other dog there. I know all too well, but I'm not going to say that. She doesn't know I lived in the world of Labradors. I'm certainly not going to reveal that to her. <laughs> when you put it that way. But like you said, I'm trying to avoid attention. So shouldn't I avoid being associated with you altogether? Ah, uh, she sighs quietly. Whoa, Sid, you're hurting your feelings! Sid, come on, you're hurting your feelings! Stop it! Look at that face! Look at that face! Oh, I hope I hoped it wouldn't come to this. But you need to believe me when I say I want to help you. I can help you find... Your brother! <gasps> oh, shit. Wait, we have to save. Oh, God. It's it's getting real. What, what, what do you know about my brother, huh? <gasps> okay. I've heard enough. I'll take your dog darn phone. Okay, wait, what is going on? Why does everybody know my brother except for me? Am I the only person lost on who my brother is? Who is my brother? What happened to my brother? Why does this Labrador know what happened to my brother? Why, do, why does my character not know what's going on? But if I find out that you're any sort of threat to me, you better watch out. Of course, I understand. She offers a paw to me. Quay Lee, by the way. Wait, Quay Lee? Wait. Wait a minute, wasn't this the name of the dog in Autumn with the Shiba Inu? No, I'm tripping. I am tripping. I'm tripping balls. It's not the same name. I'm so well. You already knew my name. We shake paws. The Labrador just smiles mysteriously and gives me detailed directions to the nearest MIT station. DG station, huh? That means I appeared kind of far south. South. Good thing it's in Taipa though, where I need to be. I head into the station while the lab heads off her own way. 
so many thoughts are running through my head. The entire encounter still, still seems unreal, and something I could never have imagined happening. <sighs> Said Focus. First, you need to get to Max's. I find the MIT station according to the lab's directions. Thank dog the directions were accurate. Large hovering signs point out directions of various transit lines. Although I have been in the station in the past, it seems much larger than before, the layout having been expanded and rearranged. I slip my pen at the gates, scanning it to pay so it'll allow me through. I keep the pen at face down and hope that no one thinks it's strange. There's a large interactive display. I see that there are many more lines than before, basically crisscrossing the entirety of Taipa and the outer me metropolitan area. That's, that's, that's good. That's like, okay, you know, you know what this is? This is, this is like saying yeah for everything, you know? Imagine if this was a cat game, you would be saying yeah for everything. I place a paw on the destination and the route draws itself on the digital display from the current station to my paw. I follow the instructions to the correct platform and the transit arrives shortly. Sometime later, the ride is smooth and I emerge up north of the city without incident. It's a quieter residential area. My destination is sandwiched between other similar buildings that were built to be tall and narrow rather than take up the ground level. Approaching the well mesmerized address, I feel more and more apprehensive with each step. A promise is a promise. It's the only place I can go. There's an intercom panel on the ground floor. Scrolling through the names, I find the correct one. That's the one. Taking a deep breath, I tap on it. The door is slide open shortly after I tap on the panel, but there's no further response or communication from it. Does Max still live here? I can go in, but what if it isn't Max that just buzzed me in? I hesitate. Less than ideal scenario is running through my head. Now I take a deep breath. Stop it. There's only one way to find out. I step into the open door and onto a lift so small, it could only possibly fit one dog. So, maybe this fits my theory that chihuahuas are dead. There's no chihuahuas left in this universe because you could easily fit two chihuahuas for the size of one Shiba Inu, right? It's like, it's like a pyramid of size, right? One Labrador is equal to two Shiba Inus, and two Shiba Inus is equal to four chihuahuas, right? It's like a pyramid of size. So, because it would only fit one dog, therefore, the, the, the smallest dog left are Shiba Inus. Anything smaller than a Shiba Inu is extinct. Whatever got the humans got them too. Well, except for her in, in the background, the one surviving human. Well, one Labrador with Shiba, two Shiba Inus, what up? I'm so good. I'm so good at math. I'm so good at dogs. I'm like, the, I'm like the Caesar Milan of. Wait, we already have Caesar Milan. Whatever, I am Caesar Milan. Oops, I ah, still can't help but think about space in terms of canine dash space. Soundlessly, the lift rises, and I am a bundle of nerves. My stomach churns on nothing. I really do hope it's Max. The intercom might not have two-way communication. My old residence did, but I can't assume everyone has it, even after all these years. I do still have his number on my old phone, but I wonder if my old phone balance is still valid. Oh, okay, so you have to pay for minutes to talk to people. I see. Otherwise, you can't talk to, talk, talk to people, yeah. Before I can decide whether to attempt calling ahead, the lift comes to a halt. No other way but forward. I step out onto the narrow corridor. Doors line the corridor, and I take a look at the order of the numbers before heading into the direction of the number 13. Just as I raise my paw to knock, the door swings wide open. A coffee cup appears. I need to just give me a moment. I have to drink coffee. <laughs> Actually, okay, that that this is an awkward space to stop because there's no music. You just heard me swallow. Wait, hold on. I'm gonna step away from the mic so you guys don't don't hear me. Don't listen. Tim Hortons French Vanilla. Can't, can't go wrong. You! Max! Sid! He ushers me in and makes sure the door is closed so securely. Look who it is! You're finally back! And I've been waiting for this moment all these years! I, 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 I forgot his voice, sorry. It really is him. He's here. He's kept us worried. 
I'm so relieved. I'm so happy to see a familiar face. I reach out my paws to embrace him. He obliges, and I eagerly hug him close. He smells like honey and cream, and I notice that under my touch, his coat is as sleek and shiny as ever. I'm so happy to see you. Max just yaps happily, wagging his tail so vigorously that I can feel it moving him side to side in my embrace. Doggies hug each other. Max help me, helps me settle into the place. It's quite cozy. Despite the modern exterior of the building itself, he's decorated his rooms with vintage furniture and flourishes. It does look like a really nice room. This is actually like my dream room, right? Because like, I think rooms that are too big and too empty feel kind of like empty, right? You want a nice cozy space. You want all your like stuff around you. So that it feels like it's a part of you, an extension of you. And I, I like the two desks set up because you have two de desks for two different purposes. And I like how one desk is for like the messy work and the other one is for like... Is he... Is that coffee? I, okay, I was about to say alchemy, but that's coffee. Okay, he's not an alchemist. We're not gonna have to worry. Oh my god. Imagine if, if he was an, 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 an alchemist, then it would explain a lot, right? There would be a lot of those like half human, half, half like dog things. I get a feeling he's really into the vintage, vintage aesthetic. Maybe he's making a comeback on the island now. He shows me his collection of concert billets arranged on his wall. All of musicians that I know of, meaning they go back at least a decade. Re remember Jay Chow Chow? Oh, of course. I remember when we'd watch his music videos back then on our flip phones. Wait, how does a dog flip a phone open? That seems impossible, no? Yeah, the days of 360p, yeah. Oh, it's a really nice apartment compared to Max's old one. I suppose his final ranking allowed him an upgrade. What? His ranking? What is this? He gestures me over to his desk and as I peer on, he sweeps aside a pile of old records. Then he wiggles on under the desk to activate something. Oh my god. There's a hiss, and a panel slides open on the surface of the dead desk. It's a touchscreen panel, glowing faintly with a green tint. I can see my reflection in it, along with some menu icons that I cannot make sense out of. It's a security system. Pretty sophisticated, huh? No one would suspect there would be such a system in an apartment like this. The door is actually secured with hidden bars that can be controlled from here, and there is sensors programmed to detect living matter other than you and me. He goes on and on about the security measures and gadgets, but suddenly, I can't find I can't find it in me to focus. No, I'm really hoping he didn't do all all this for my return, but it's the most obvious explanation. I take a deep breath, holding a pop the signal I want to speak. Hold it, Max, calm down. It takes Max a brief moment to notice, but eventually he stops in the middle of his explanation. Max, I really appreciate your preparations. My throat feels closed up and I swallow and chew on the air. It's made it possible to continue speaking. It's just, I wanna... How do I put this? Say it. Just say it. Just say you love him. Say you love Max. I love Max. Oh. I just wanna reiterate that this could be really dangerous for you. I want you to reconsider it. Zed. And I think some dog is following me and I have no idea what she wants. Zed! <laughs> Sid, it's, it's okay. I've always wanted to be able to finally help you. I promised you, long ago, that I would stand by your side even if the world turns against you. And now, you need to let me do that. Please. His eyes are warm, and I compose myself. I can't be weak. I need to be calm, so I can make the best decisions for Max and myself. Alright, but I need to tell you about the Labrador I met today. She knows a lot about me. I'll start from the beginning. You know, I used the feather to get back to the island. I reappeared in some night market near DG Station. First thing I saw was a huge crowd of dogs all running away from me, so I thought it was because they all witnessed my grand appearance or something. I don't even know if I appeared with a light or a proof of smoke or something, but I'm pretty sure I appeared out of thin air. But you know, there was a Labrador just causing a ruckus, so I sneaked away. Then the lab just appeared behind me. She said she made a distraction on purpose because it would be inconvenient for me to be noticed. She even knows why I'm back on this island. Am I famous? Am I a famous dog? Oh no. It's very very unnerving to me. Even to me, sorry. Max nods his head solemnly. I might have made a mistake, but she gave me a wrist phone and, and I took it. Oh, <gasps> wait, you're right. Wait a minute. Sid, that has to be a mistake, right? It's a tracking device. Wasn't I just worried in like the, the, the intro in like the one week latest sequence that everything was like tracking me and stuff? I- I've messed up. I take it out of my pocket and show it to Max. I hadn't put it on yet. He takes it gingerly and examines it from every angle before waving a paw over the central watch face. I don't 
really looked at the wrist phone up close before and take the opportunity to do so. The circular face, rather than being a screen itself, holds a light source where a hologram is projected from. The hologram functions like a screen of any other electric device, but is much larger and can be put away at a simple touch. Kind of looks like a fan unfolding and fo folding back. I ain't gonna- wait, a fan folding and folding back? Wait a minute! Wait, hold- wait, hold- no, no, wait, hold- hold on. Hold on just a minute. Wait just a minute. Dude. Like, there's- there's no way, right? Like a fan. Going back and forth. Do you know what I'm thinking? I think you know what I'm thinking. I think you know what I'm thinking. We're thinking these same thoughts. We've thunk the same thoughts. We're thinking and thunking. Together. I think we're thinking the same thoughts here. Right? I think in one week that that the Bray Dog sends us to the, to the Shadow Realm. Or Dual Disc. I don't know who this kid is. I don't know who this kid is. Oh god, identify the space for this child. Come. You <laughs> Wait. I want to grab Max, please. Let me grab Sid. How do I grab Sid? Oh god. Oh god. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. Oh god. Oh god, I haven't streamed in so long. I forgot how to use everything. Oh god, bring the poster back back down. Oh no. This is a disaster. This is an unmitigated disaster. The dual disc bit it probably wasn't 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 worth it. Oh no. Dual disc. Bring over here. Sad pup. Okay, you're a sad pup. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's that's good. Yep, that's my wrist film. That's Sid's wrist film, right there. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. That's... <laughs> great. I angle my body away gradually until I cannot see the contents of the screen. There's some sort of view angle limit which works great for me. Uh, sometimes I might be typing or reading questionable material, but even if not, I don't want dogs seeing it. What am I... What? what? Why would you be viewing those things in public? She told me to contact her with this. Do you think I should? I'd probably do it anyway, but even if Max doesn't agree with me, I'm not sure how dangerous it might be, and I don't want to compromise the safe house. She did mention my brother, though. I just want to find out what she wants. Max is still holding the wrist phone, so I held it close to him to read and use the menu. I hesitantly touch a pause to the screen where it says messages, and it opens the corresponding app as Max looks on. It's empty, so maybe there's a contact list? I scan the interface, but there's no back button. I press the sides of the screen, face left and right, but it's futile. Where? Left. Right. How about tapping it? Okay, maybe sliding up and down. Nothing? Uh, Max, you've been grinning at me for too long. A little, a little help here? <laughs> you can set up any gesture you want to return to the previous screen, but the default, but the default is a face. He taps on the wristband face where the hologram is projected from. Oh. Alright, let's find this lab's contact info. Are you sure you want to get in touch with her? Uh. Do you, do you trust her? Not only as much as I, only as much as I trust a stranger, really. So no, I don't trust her that much. But there's a high enough possibility that she has information that could be useful to me. It's an uncertain situation, though, and I'm just guessing at the odds. It does seem oddly specific that she knows the main reason I'm back here. The risk may well outweigh the potential gains. Again, with the words potential, possibility, and certainty, Ugh, I'm getting deja vu. So cold, calculating. Just the arena training kicking back in? Okay, what? Okay, uh, again. What is the arena? I feel like it's like duels, right? I duel people, I send them to, to, to the Shadow Realm. It has to be. Information? Information! On the reason you decided to come back? I snap out of my thoughts as Max starts to speak again. I don't mean to pry, but I'm wondering. What was the reason? 
the amounts of drip right right now yeah these are these are dogs are all glammed up i like their shirts max's shirt really does remind me of like an elderly father wearing like like a polo though it's like the look once you're over the age of 50 you you, you notice what i said huh well the truth is one of the reasons i decided to come back now is to find out if my brother is alive your brother chunwen was it right he disappeared after the last arena yeah, I just had this regret that I didn't even, even bother finding out what happened before I just up and left. Ah, uh, I understand. Listen, I'll, I'll help you find out what happened, okay? Wait, so this lab, she said she knows something about him. She was so certain about it. So while I have no idea of her intentions, she could either be a powerful ally or enemy. Either way, I suppose it's best to contact her so she won't blindside us if she is an, an enemy. Of course, I leave this up to you. You've taken me in. And I don't want her to follow me back here and jeopardize the place. Like you said, I agree it's a good idea to contact her just in case she comes here looking for you. But first, let's find a contact info on, on this phone. We go through the apps, or only the essentials. Not in the contact book either, huh? Taps with recent calls, and there's a single call history. Alright! He, he holds up a paw for a high five. Thanks, Max. Now you do the honors. I tap on the call button, and while it rings, Max sets up the phone call to block her camera feed. Gotta play it safe and not let her get any hints on my surroundings and whereabouts, just in case. Waiting. What? Hey! Hey! Good to see that you made it somewhere safe! What? Uh, uh. Why did you want me to contact you? Look, like I said, I want to help you. And how, exactly? Well, as you said, you probably want to stay under the radar. An eye-catching lavender like myself would be perfect to distract anyone on your, on your trail, no? I roll my eyes, making sure she can see my skepticism. Well, I agree, you are definitely eye-catching. In the corner of my eye, I notice Max trying not to smirk widely. Look at that little face. Oh, uh, <clears throat> that's, that's not what I meant. But that will make it even more difficult to stay under the radar if anyone on the outside makes a connection between you and me. So based on that, how really could you help? Uh, that's what I was hoping you would tell me, Sid. What actions do you plan to execute? How can I help you achieve it? I still don't understand her real intentions, but she does seem sincere. I need to carefully consider what I say. Still, since she's offering her help, we'd have to have someone do the riskier tasks in my place. Um, uh, also, are you alone? Quay Lee breaks the silence before I can formulate a sentence. She might have taken my slow response to indicate silent correspondence with someone else. Oh no. This is the first moral choice. I need to drink water before I make this moral, this moral choice. Now. We know nothing about Sid, right? I have, we have no clue what the arena is, right? Realistically, I, the arena could have been a fight to the, to the death. Sid could have been a gladiator who has killed hundreds of dogs on her way, to, or, or their way to the top. I don't, I don't know. I guess Sid is a, a stand-in for like us. So I could... I could lie and play on the fact that I'm cold and calculating, like Sid was worrying about before, but at the same time, do I really want that? I'm trying to find my brother, and I'm, I'm not trying to start like a, a whole war here on this island. I'm trying to find someone, so I need as much help as I can. So it behooves me to be as honest as I could be. But I... Oh man. Quayley's gonna be very mad, I think. Whatever. I'm not alone. I'm not a liar, and I'm not alone. No. I am with a friend. An accomplice? Uh... I don't know why you have to put it that way, but I guess you could say that. He's a trustworthy companion helping me. Huh. I didn't expect you to have to compete. I didn't expect to have to compete for the position of top henchdog. Well, as you mentioned, I want to find my brother. Before I tell you my plans, I want to know how you know about my brother. Aha! Uh -huh. So you're saying you don't trust me because I have this piece of information. I revealed it, so you would have the sense to, to contact me. And I was right, wasn't I? She's so smug about having successfully manipulated my actions. Make a quip about her smugness or reluctantly praise her. 
Ooh, I kind of want to praise her because... Again, it's messed up, right? Because these are people, but I really want to pet her. So yeah, let's just praise her. I'm impressed you set me up and have predicted my actions so thoroughly. Quay Lee grins. I imagine that it would be no easy task to get hold of the feather bearer, much less keep her attention. I had to rack my brain and do lots of research off the beaten path. Ugh, well you've got my attention. But let's get to the point, shall we? How'd you figure out the reason I came back to the island? Quay Lee chuckles. A little patience, please, Sid. The truth is, anyone smart enough could figure out that you'd be interested in finding out the fate of your brother. The arena archives are open to anyone that has patience enough to go through the hoops to get approved for access. It wasn't difficult to find online that your brother disappeared after the final arena, but I also confirmed it from the official records. Your infamous disappearance happened shortly after that, so I guess that you would have regrets about it. Right. That is convincing, if not creepy. But like she said, the records of past arenas are available to public access. Any doctor tries hard enough to put the timeline together and figure it out. What worries me is her understanding of the way I think. That probably means she's researched a lot of other things about my past life. I'd really rather have her as an ally. So, here is my proposal. If you want more information, I have a lead on what you're seeking, but I'd rather not reveal any more over the call, because Max is there. God damn it, okay, wait, so maybe I shouldn't have said that Max is here, right? Maybe I should have just said, like, oh, like, no one's here, and then she would have told me. Then I wouldn't have to go to DG Station. Meet me at DG Station to solve why I found you tomorrow at noon. A lead? But with that, the call is terminated. That was sudden. Well, what matters is that she says she has a lead. Uh, I, I'll go meet her tomorrow. Be, 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 be careful. She does seem sincere, but I really don't know what's in it for her. Max. Would you like to come with me? I would like to, but only if you're sure it's the best for your plans. I don't want to burden you. Nonsense. You won't be a burden. I think, I think I'll trust her now and let her know about you. Of course, if she tries to threaten you in any way, that trust will be over. No, oh, Sid. After that, we quickly, plan, we quickly plan out the transportation and prepare to sleep. Max insists I take the bed while he sleeps in the living room, and after some protest, I accept. Oh, it's been a really long, really long day. Oh my god, it's the lazy leg. It's the lazy leg. I love when dogs do this. When they when when they sleep or they sit and they lie down and they don't do like like the like proper sit. It's when they're really relaxed and comfortable and, and have that one lazy leg like splayed out. They're like yeah. God, I love it. So strange that just, just this morning I was still in canine though. With my job having to work for a living. Yeah, imagine having to work for a living. <laughs> I just threw all of that away. Soon enough, I'll find out if all of that was. Wait a minute! Wait, wait, wait a god darn. Wait a god darn. So, okay, let me get this straight, okay? Sid, she has a feather that grants you any wish, right? Clearly, she still has the feather. Because she's the feather bearer. Like, it's not gone, right? Why didn't she just wish to have an infinite money? Isn't that the first step? Okay, it, like, I've, I've always thought about this, right? If I found a genie in a bottle, imagine I found a genie in, in a bottle. What are my three top, top wishes? One is for sure money, right? Because you need money to do, to do everything else. Unless you had to send a second wish. Okay, maybe, okay, wait. Can you wish for money that doesn't come with any strings attached? Because if you have a lot of money, they'll just try to find you. Never mind, Sid's the smart one. I'm the stupid one. I tucked the wristphone away into a bag. And Quay Lee had somehow hacked his camera mic. And we're not have a show more than what could be seen during a video call. Good night, Max. I hear his voice in the living room, which is the room next to mine. Sleep tight, Sid. And with that, I close my eyes, and sleep soon takes over me. One sleep after. In the morning, Max suggests that we go to lunch after the meeting with the lab, to which I agree. The lab. <laughs> uh, she does have a name. Quay Lee, well, wasn't it? Like we agreed on, Max joins me as I head to the meeting with Quay, Quay Lee. Again, when I enter the transit station, I scan my pendant face down. I don't want more unwanted attention on my movements if dogs see my full pendant face. Does the pendant face have the marking of her being a thing? I... I'm pretty sure they said that at the very start, and I just forgot. That is, in addition to Quay Lee's totally unwanted attention. Sorry, fixing, fixing the mic. 
It's uh, slightly off center. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. There we go. We emerged from underground at DG Station, which is in the central zone of Taipa. It's a really busy area full of businesses and restaurants. Oh, look at the dog at the right. Oh my god. Look at that dog at the right. He's serving the other dogs. I want to be in this world. The stall where Kray Lee accosted me yesterday wasn't far from the station. And we get there a bit earlier than noon, which is our agreed upon meeting time. I don't have much of an appetite, so Max orders IU jelly with lemonade for both of us. Oh, man. So it's interesting, right? Because now a lot of bubble tea places, they serve IU jelly inside of it as well. That's like a topping. People have finally realized that it tastes really good. Shortly after, Kuei Lee strolls down the lane. It's immediately noticeable, such a large dog living on this island, when nothing was made to the scale of his size. I fight the urge to chuckle at the thought. I can really forget that the same could be said about me and Kananda. Those well, stairs were always hell to climb. Not to mention that I could never reach anything on shelves and stores. She spots and joins me at the table, the same time that Max gets back. Hi hi! Who's this? This is Max, my friend. He's helping me out. Ah, you must be the accomplice that you must be the accomplice that was there during the phone call yesterday. Max gives her a distressful look and just grunts in response. <laughs> Quay Lee doesn't appear offended. Last night, I said that I have information. Well, for full soldier, it's not completely true. <laughs> I may have kind of lied to you. <laughs> I'm out on alert as the first thought that crosses my mind is that this is a trap. What she said on the phone was believable enough that I wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt. But could she have just played me again? I mean, I said I have a lead, but it really is just that. A lead. I can't make more sense of it, but I think you could, Sid. I want to prank say this Labrador. I try to calm down, but something still doesn't seem right about this whole situation. There's nothing glaringly wrong, but maybe it's my ancestral instinct speaking. I thought, okay. I don't know about you, I, I have this problem where I, I see a word and it transforms to a different word. I thought it said an ancestral spirits, and I was like, what? what? The wolves? Logically speaking, hearing Quayle yell is the best option I have right now. Okay, so this isn't a waste of time after all. Please, Sid, you can be slightly less rude. Uh, stand my ground or apologize? Wait, okay, wait, wait. Is that like, is that rude? Like, like, is that really, really rude? Like, I don't think so, right? I think it's worth it to be like, look, you came out of nowhere, okay? Because it's like, if I apologize to her, then it's like, you know, I'm being like, okay, fine, sorry for being rude. Like, sure, you did come up to help me, but at the same time, it's like, who are you? Like, why are you trying to help me? I stand my ground. Ha! <laughs> if you think this is bad, you should have met me ten, uh, ten years ago. In the arena. And I've tasted blood before. Courtesy was earned, not asked for in the arenas. <sighs> Funny though. Now I think about it, my behavior towards Kuei Li is more similar to how I acted during the arena years. Not my canine die years. Maybe simply being back in the island is bringing that part of me back out? I'll decide how much more to trust you after you show me what you have. I guess I can't earn your trust 100% just like that, eh? Just, just like that, eh? Always romantic, just like your arena performances. She's probably laughing internally at how uncomfortable I look. I guess that's evident from my facial expression, huh? But she obliges me and takes out a thick envelope from her bag. She slides it towards me. I gingerly take up the contents. On top of the stack is a blurred photo. It's printed on a thick, glossy material. From the blurriness and low resolution on the picture, I can tell the camera that this was taken with was quite old, even by the technological standards from before I left the island. <gasps> Evidence of my brother. The dog that is the focal point of the picture has a stocky stature and a dark blue shirt on. His coat color is the exact same as mine. <gasps> my brother. It's him, all right. Chun Wen. When was this taken? It's the last time he was ever seen. He was on the way. He was on his. He was on the way to the final arena. I also managed to get my paws on his tr transit history. I sift through the contents of the envelope. Under the printed picture is a thick stapled stock of what looks like a spreadsheet. The print is tiny, with rows and rows of dates so close to each other that I have to hold the paper up to my face to inspect it. Even with a cursory scan of the information, I can tell that two stations appear in turn frequently. KH Station and NJ Station, huh? With an even closer look, I notice that they appear at 9 in the morning and 5 in the afternoon, respectively. 9 to 5? 
Is this some joke? He's going to work every day. <laughs> At this point, Quay Lee interjects. It doesn't take any computer to see that there's a very clear pattern. Though I did feed the data through some uh, simple algorithms to double check if there are any anomalies I missed by K9 error. It's just NJ Station at 9 a.m. and K Station at 5 p.m. Every single day since the day after the last arena. What? Wait, but how does that work? Okay, because like subway stations, they're kind of like okay, you you will rarely, if ever, have two subway stations that are so close to each other that you can just like enter one and then like exit the other, right? Like by just walking, right? So if you if you enter NJ Station, you go out KH Station. You have to somehow make your way back to NJ Station at 9 a.m. to go back to that same route. So do they take a bus there? Like, why do they leave K Station? Why not just enter and leave from the same station? Because if Chun Wen was trying to go back home from a 9 to 5, right? Think about it. He would be going from NJ Station to NJ Station. He would leave NJ Station and then enter NJ Station at the same time every day. He's doing a roundabout move for some reason from KH Station. And it's like, why? Right, and the weirdest thing is that it's all exactly on the hour. The MIT hardware that captures the pendant scans, does it round up to the hour? No, it's supposed to capture the exact same millisecond. Or some fraction of a second, it's pretty precise. This is it. This is an amazing lead, given that it's to believe, to be believed. It's clearly a manipulated log, and I can't imagine for what other reason that's been noticed. And perhaps even to send a message, exactly, right? It, it's not logical. This is great, Quayley. Thanks. I sat the papers together tidily, and insert them back into the, en the, en the envelope. Can I take this? Yeah, certainly. Though for security reasons, I'm not giving you the digital copies. That's that, that's all you're getting. That's fair. Wouldn't want to le a leak or something. How'd you get this information? I tracked down the source in the massive Rapid Transit Corp. The source was able to download those files for me as they're not highly classified. Anyone who has basic customer service tier access could get those logs. However, the pattern might indicate that your brother is able to hack or manipulate the transaction logs, which could potentially draw attention of the massive ranch of the MIT Corp. <laughs> Sorry. Of course, I convinced the source to keep quiet about this discovery for now. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them to have hacked his pendants or a transit entry gates to, autom to automatically deduct the... Wait. Quick save. Oh my god. Big, big reveal. Wait. I take out the spreadsheet again and look at the balance column. Uh, silly me, now that I think about it, this might be a clue. Since the beginning of the log, the balance has only been going down linearly, as far as, as, far as I can tell. A quick graph could, could confirm that. And on the very first day, the balance was a hefty sum. More than enough to cover expenses for not only transit, but all aspects of a dog's life on the island. Oh my god, that's a rich dog. Wait, what? Where do you get these tags? Dog tags? Huh. Actually, the answer seems obvious. He probably was able to acquire all the currency he desires somehow. Ah, uh, yes, the balances. Quite the wealthy one. Quite the wealthy one, your brother. I did a quick visual visualization of the data, and it's a straight line going down. The fares are deducted each day, every single day. I didn't notice any anomalies other than the huge sum of tags he could afford to load his balance. That was the extent of what I could observe. Observe. You know your brother better than anyone, so I thought that you could make more sense out of this than I could. Sure. I'll examine it closer at home. Sorry, I just I didn't mean to mean to mean to back there. Don't feel comfortable doing that here, in the open. I gotta say, I'm pretty in quest and <laughs> What's wrong with my reading? <laughs> what is going on with my reading today? I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed, Quayley. Thank you for this. I pack up the files and rise to leave. Max follows suit and stands. Despite having said nothing during the whole exchange, he seems to be thinking hard. Wait a moment. You don't want to plan the next steps? Well, I was thinking I could tell you. Well, I was thinking I could tell you what I decide after I browse through these. 
Oh, come on. And here I was thinking, and and here I was thinking we'd be collaborating at, at, as equals. Look, I'm grateful for the information. I really appreciate her efforts and investment in this quest, but I don't want her doing any more than necessary in drawing attention. That is the highest priority. I prefer you don't do anything rash while investigating, and only gather information from me after I decide what would be helpful. No, oh. you're not hearing me. Oh my god, she's oh my god, she's she's snarling at me. Her teeth bared. She's ready for a fight. I've already planned my next step, and I'm not gonna ask for your permission to carry it out. Ah, oh, fish sticks, what a stubborn dog. Right, what's your next step then? I was thinking I could try to acquire some security footage from those two stations at 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Don't you think that'd be valuable? I guess I can hear her out. That would be valuable. I agree. Poor Max is just like there. Just chilling. Just just listening. Does Max even understand what's like going on? Does Max even know what they've gotten into? What if Max is just like, you know, like a childhood like dog friend or something, right? And now they're like wrapped up in some mystery conspiracy thing with, with like hackers? Poor, poor, poor Max. But how do you plan on doing that? I imagine that security footage requires high clearance, so I don't want you to do something that draws too much attention. You hear? Don't worry. If I get caught, I'll take all the blame. I'll say that I'm working in independently, and you won't be, and, and you won't be implicated. You're willing to take the risk all by yourself? For this? What's in it for you? I really do have your best interest at heart. I've given you all of this, and you still don't believe me, do you? Wait. This is okay. This is a five head theory, right? My five head theory, okay. The more I play this game, the more theories I have. What if my brother, because he was involved in the final arena, also got a feather or something, right? A feather to make a wish. He wished himself to disappear to become a Labrador. He's trying to secretly tell me through his new Labrador form what it really is. She sighs, but seems to compose herself quickly. It's alright. Never mind what I said. But I'll be as careful as I can. For you. No, I feel a bit guilty. I was just being too harsh. And what does she mean, for me? I don't even know her. Just let me know whatever steps you take, alright? Report all your progress to me. Will do. Will do. She rises and steps away from the table, signaling the end of the meeting. Catch you, catch you next time, shibs. Shibs. She nods at me, Max. That's like, like, that's a weird thing. Okay, look. <laughs> Quay Lee, that's a weird thing to say, right? That's literally, that's literally the weirdest thing to say. It's like, I, I can't even say it. <laughs> I can't even, I, I can't even say the human equivalent. Later. See ya, lab. Quay Lee nods. And without another word, sweeps past us and away into the depths of the market. Wait until she is out of sight. Max and I leave the stall as well. My bag feels heavy with the envelope I now have. Both literally and figuratively. With all the possibilities that it brings. Much as I want to start a closer investigation on the matter right this instant, I'll deal with it later tonight. Max and I are going to, to lunch. Oh, and then this is where it happens. Present day, Island Year 224. I never thought I'd see Hei... He I never thought I'd see Hei Fen Hong again. Maybe. Really. I just avoided her precisely so I wouldn't see her again, given the way things ended between us. The thought keeps echoing in my head. Though I struggle to stop it, it just won't go away. Me is making up for all those years I haven't, made, I haven't had to deal with this issue. Given the way things ended, nothing could have changed about it. There was absolutely nothing I could have said to change things. I have nothing to say now either. Island Year 208, Arena 9, Day 1. Oh my god, wait. Oh my god. Where's our dual desk? I need my, my dual desk. I shift my weight around, trying to get comfortable. Once I find a position that feels right, I hold myself still. My eyes are closed and I try to relax. It's not a surprise when I feel cold, gurgling moisture under my paws, but I flinch anyway. Thick, freezing gel rises around me and I take deep breaths. My mask is on properly and I'm breathing. We'll win this arena together. I'll do anything I can. I'll do anything so we can stay together forever. Hey Fen Ho Oh no. I left Hey Fen Ho. God damn it, Sid. Okay, Sid was about to leave her, her job without even messaging Q. It gave me the choice. 
Sid, stop running from your problems. At least say good, good, good goodbye to people. Come on. Island Year 208, Arena 9, Day 5. Why are we in a jungle? Why is the arena in a jungle? Oh my god. Is it? Oh my god. Oh my god. It's the Hunger Games. It's the goddamn, it's, it's the K9 Hunger Games. Jesus Christ. I climb up the narrow steps, teeth firmly gripping my loot, which is wrapped in a piece of cloth. My loot! Oh my god. I've killed. Sid has tasted the blood. She's actually tasted the blood. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Okay. Dude, this is like, it's like a battle royale. We get dumped on, on an island, in the arena or something. I've killed, Sid has killed multiple people. She's, she, she's got their loot. It has to be, right? I almost slip as one of the steps shift under me. And I scrabble with my claws, trying to get a foothold in the dirt. The steps are actually roughly cut rocks that some dog had shoved into the dirt on the mountainside. This isn't efficient use of the natural resources, but sadly not as safe as urban constructs. Though, since I'm not risking my real life, I shouldn't be too critical. Wait, what? Oh, it's a VR Hunger Games. You know what? That's not that bad, right? I would play. That seems fun. A VR Hunger Games where you fight to the, the death, but not really, you know, like, haha. It'd be good. Faster. I must get back to it faster. Facing the final steep step, I sling my precious cargo up before hoisting myself up to a clearing. A bit further in, hidden behind the, the overgrowth, is my secret hideout. I tread carefully so that it wouldn't disrupt the illusion that no dogs had been around here. I tisk three times, just so my fashion would know that I'm not an, out an, an intruder. There's no response, it's normal. I near a large thick tangle of branches and leaves. To the unsuspecting dog, there's nothing here. However, I move aside the section of the branches, revealing a small hole that I duck into. <gasps> Inside, a Shiba Inu comes and sniffs me, and I stand still, allowing him to tuck the package from my teeth. I watch him unravel the package and wait while he inspects, prods, and sniffs its contents. Finally, he's done, and gives a nod. Good news, Fanshu, those are the supplies I got. Wait, is this rust? They, they, dude, the arena is just a rust server that they set up, and this is our rust base in, in like a rust cave. Well, never mind Fanshu, hey, Fan isn't here, so I must hurry to her. I scoop up the entire bag, not waiting for Fan Chu's response. Hastening further inside a plant and shrouded compound, I approach a blanket-covered figure lying on a bed of carefully layered leaves. I move beside her, careful not, not to jostle her, and nudge her cheek with my nose. Hey, hey Fan. Oh, the pale sheep Inu looks up at, at me groggily. Oh, did, did you rest well? You still look... I'm much, I'm much better, really. But I'm glad you got back safe. I show her the supplies. One of them a bottle of wound treating solution. Here, show me your paw. It's much better now, like, like I said. She pulls her paw out from under the blanket and shows it to me. As she said, the wound has healed drastically. It doesn't mean you don't need the best care, hey fan. We can't have anything go wrong at the stage. I soak a clean cloth with the wound treating solution and take her paw gently. Sid, wait. She jerks her paw away and I'm left holding the cloth over thin air. What's wrong? I just can't just by using something like this right now. Fanshu didn't tell you, but he got a nasty scratch when trapped yesterday during his rounds. He really needs it more than me. And I try to take her paw again. It looked fine when I came in. It was more than, than enough to spare. No! I said I don't want it. I stared at her in stunned silence, her shouts ringing in my ears. Finally, I gather myself and stand up. Alright, I'll go help Fan Shu with his injury. But, can we talk after I'm back? Suit yourself. I march off my shoulders stiff to stop myself from shaking. I had just spent two days circling the enemy faction's perimeters, waiting to raid their medical supplies. What is the arena? What is going on? Of course, I'd also gathered a lot of intel on the strategies and movement patterns. After I talked things out with Hei Fen, she called faction me and discuss a plan of attack based on my new information. Hey, Fan Chu. Hey, Sid. How's Hei Fen? Her wounds healed quite well, and she insisted that I use this on you instead. What? Me? I don't need that. I'm not hurt. Uh-huh. Hei Fen says you got injured during your rounds. 
on the way in, I hadn't noticed him acting like he was injured, but now that I'm standing closer to him, I can see he's holding his body at an angle. Seems like he's trying to only show me the right side of his torso to me. Turn your other side around. Look, uh, really, uh, I'm fine. I smirk and dash around him, pulling back his shirt. As Heifen said, I can see a long gash on the left side of his body. Ooh. The shirt was slightly bloody as well on, on that side, an easy giveaway, which explains why he was angli angling it away from me. It's just good practice to not let weaknesses be easily accessed by another, another dog, even if we are teammates. I didn't thought Fanshu to be particularly smart or tactical. Maybe it was just his instinct. Alright, come on now. Don't want the solution drying out and going to waste. I'm fine, but I'm only this, but I'm only doing this since Hey Fan said so. Finally, Fan Shu stands still and allows me to treat his wound. <laughs> you look so prideful. Hey Fan gave this up so you can stay alive. I was gonna stay alive anyway. He mumbled before trailing off. It's what, that's what I think I heard. I wouldn't be so sure if I were you. Well, I'm not gonna say that out loud, of course. On top of not seeming too bright, I've always considered Fan Shu to be disposable when we joined this faction. Wow. Wait, Sid was an asshole. I, sh I should have chosen more of, more of the asshole options. Sid, Sid was an asshole. It's like, yeah, disposable. It's like, what, dude? Like, I mean, yeah, but like, you know, it's like still, it's, you know what? Yeah, you know, I agree, but maybe like, you know, it's messed up. Endure and survive, huh? But once we get rid of the last rival faction, he's going down. That is, if he isn't eliminated during the fight anyway. He was a pawn from the start. I never told Hei Fen these plans directly, but I thought she would have guessed. And she will know how I intend to get rid of Fan Chu after we have a talk. I'm bloodthirsty. In the end, I didn't have the chance to tell Hei Fen of my plan. I asked her if she'd like to join me on, her, on my patrol round so we could talk things over in private, away from Fan Chu. While Hei Fen's wound was mostly healed, as she showed me, she said she didn't feel well enough to be walking outside. Which is fair. I still can't believe she didn't even thank me after all those days I spent getting the medical supplies for her. I get it, she wants us all to survive. Then she wasn't happy with my decision to leave a base for so long on her account. It was a risky move. What, what if I had gotten caught, huh? It was selfish of me. Ah! Nah, stop it, Sid. You, you did the right thing to work towards your goal. No, it's for the promise between Hafe and me. We promised we'd both progress to higher arena brackets so we could stay t together. I climbed down a muddy slope, gripping a thick bramble to steady myself. As the last leg of my patrol, I'll head back soon. Sometime later. Scrutinizing the forest and foot of the hill like I do on any other patrol round, I spot some movement from the corner of my eye. Oh my god, PvP. <gasps> PvP! I quickly flattened myself, trying to get close to the sound while finding some taller plants for better cover. Thanks to being on higher ground, I now have a good vantage point. It's an evil Shiba Inu. <gasps> Three Shiba Inus are making their way up the hill that I had climbed earlier in, in the day. They approach the exact stone steps that lead towards my faction's base. Oh, now my faction's not in good shape, and if Hei Fen doesn't even feel well enough to walk, I didn't choose from my hiding spot until they are blocked by some trees. And then emerge, keep my distance so they don't detect me, while frantically trying to keep them in sight. Those two are all they have remaining since I eliminated one when I raided the camp. Jesus Christ! I'm an assassin! Gen Nai, G Pai, and Mochi. Wait, Mochi? Who is Mochi? Who is Mochi? Wait, that was Max. Wasn't Mochi Max? Gen 9 is the strongest of the bunch. She's really fast, and earlier in the arena, I saw she packs a mean bite. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish that upon any dog. Jipai is more like me, less brawn, more wit. I recall seeing him playing a lot while I was near that camp. Also, I heard he plowed the siege on one of the large factions, which eliminated most of them. Mochi. It's more of a mystery. Seems pretty quiet and does what he's told. It's probably the disposable fan shoe on their team. Come to think of it, he looks quite like IU but without that red tint in his fur. For some reason, I feel that if one for the circumstances, I'd like to know him better before having to eliminate him. See if he's really just a meek follower or a schemer like me. That's impossible now. I'm taking him down, along with Gen 9 and Jipai. 
I'm waiting for the group to get further away before I tell them once more. They've really forced my paw. We should have called a meeting with Hei Fan and Fan Shu before going up to troll, but I noticed any signs that the enemy team were planning to uh, a move. Uh, what I miss? I watched them so carefully. No time to think about that now. I need to make sure Hei Fan is safe. I press downhill towards their base as the other faction is almost there. They wouldn't know exactly where it is, right? Only the approximate location? Right? <gasps> My heart sinks, oh no, as they prod around the entrance, quickly finding the hollow covered by undergrowth. No! Fish sticks, how'd they find it so quickly? No, that's not right. They didn't find it. They must have known. There must have been old Len, a previous member of my faction. She was eliminated while on her patrol nearby. Since nothing happened after her elimination, I assume she didn't reveal anything. Perhaps they did press old Len for inf information. It's just that they waited till now to take action. If only I could sneak into one Heifa. Hey Fen. Unfortunately, there is only one entrance to our base. We made sure of that. It would take too much time for me to dig a tunnel now, given the circumstances, and it would make too much noise. The only course of action is to head in after them. I peek in and see the coast is clear. Sorry. I peek in, and seeing that the coast is clear, wiggle my way inside. The front area, where I was previously stopped by Fanshi One Century Duty, is deserted. What, what is going on? There's muffled talking coming from where Heifen was resting. Oh no, she's, she's dead. Hey Fen, please no. I hasten up to it, peeking through a hole in the, fo in the foliage. The enemy faction is tying up Hey Fen and Fan Shu. It takes a painful amount of willpower not to charge it right then. But I remind myself that brawn is not my advantage. I need to be patient and suss out the situation. There's a fine balance between doing being too cautious or risking a move to secure my faction's safety. If I succeed in freeing them, they'll be able to help me. If I fail, I'll be failing my promise to Hey Fen. It's strange that my faction was caught so quickly and easily, given I entered our base only shortly after them. Stupid Fan Shu, what was he doing? As a sentry, did, did he even put up resistance? Oh! <gasps> Suddenly, one of the enemy faction barks out loud. Oh no! Sid, you're out there, aren't you? I would have just turned tail and left if not for Hey Fen being tied up. Come on now. You'll show yourself in five seconds, I'm going to eliminate your whole team. I have them here, as you can clearly see. I grudgingly reveal myself. The second I do, Zhen Nai advances towards me, pushing the tied up Hei Fen and Fan Shu. The other enemies, Ji Pai and Mochi, follow suit, approaching me. Let them go. I surrender. You can eliminate me. That's not how it works, Sid. Zhen Nai sneers. I've heard a lot about how you make this kind of bluff, so that I'm eliminating a bunch of dogs. You're going to walk in front here and make no sudden movements. I tried to glance at Hei Fen without being too obvious. She didn't seem worse for wear, thank goodness. It's a bad choice I'm making, but I sit down in the middle of the cave, a little distance away from Zhen Nai and offer my friend pause. Tie me up and let the others go. Once they're safe, eliminate me as you wish. My hope is that they rally and come save me, which is a riskier plan than what I usually tolerate. I prefer to be in control and not leave outcomes variable to other dogs' actions. However, at this stage, I trust Hei Fen to get us out of here. Even though we had a bit of a rough spot, this seems to be the only strategy that doesn't completely suck. Zhen Nai interrupts my scheming. That'd be a really good deal had your faction not already offered it. What are you talking about? Your life for theirs. That's what they agreed to. What? No way. You're bluffing. Nope. You think you just waltz up here without that deal secured? Hei Fen, Fan Shu, they both agreed to it before we came. What? Yep. They went behind your back. And that's what you're having di- And that's- They went behind your back if that's what you're having difficulty grasping. No. This isn't true. We- We need to- We- We need to renegotiate. Let me and Hei Fen go. He's telling the truth. Fen Chu! I knew it. I knew you planned to off me at some point. What you said- What you just said only confirms it. I was planning on coming back for you, Fen Chu. Everything is unraveling, what should I do? I turn tail and dash towards the, the entrance. Even if they made this this deal, they ha they'd have to catch me first. But they anticipated my move to escape. <gasps> G-Pai, who was close to the door, runs towards me and knocks me flying. Wind winded, I see Fan Chu shake loose his binding, and so does Hei Fen. So it's true they just pretended to be caught. I'll fend for myself and ask questions later. I can't be eliminated. I leap back on my feet, just in time to see G-Pai lunging towards me. Get her! 
that filthy white dot. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm standing for a moment. I'm almost leaving me no time to react to my immediate threats. I sidestep G Pi and run towards Hey Fan. Okay, wait. This must be the most craziest thing ever, right? Because think about it. They were if they felt the pain, okay? Even the, it, this is a virtual life, okay? They're playing in the VR or something. Because because uh, uh, Sid was like, yeah, at least I'm not risking my uh, real life. Which means this is a virtual game, but they felt the pain. These dogs, they they probably tear at each other's throats and like rip it out and stuff and like leave them bleeding to like die. Then they wake up from the VR and it's like, okay, it's it's all cool now. Like Jesus Christ, like you taste the blood. I sidestep G, G Pi and run towards Hey Fen. What'd you just say? You heard what I said. You're a white dot, and the white dot must be eliminated. Ah! In the corner of my eye, I see the third enemy. Mochi, chi Mochi, charging in into Gen 9, sending her flying. Mochi, you're betraying us? I take the chance to barrel towards the cave exit. It's Max. However, G Pi guards the exit and menacingly advances on me. Gen 9 bounds up to Mochi, swiping at him. Oh, <gasps> that dog Mochi, he created a diversion for me. I owe him one. I'll ally, I'll ally with him, should their chance arise. I feign to swipe at G Pi. Cautiously, he dodges. Now's my chance. I dash out into the clearing and race downhill, my claws tearing into the stone steps. Now in the forest, I glance back and see all them fast on my tail. It's Fan Shu that gets me, biting hard on my tail and throwing me in into the ground. Oh! No, Fan Shu, please, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should have killed you earlier. You were disillusioned all along. It's Hei Fan and me that will proceed to the next arena together. You! A snarl escapes me, and I take a huge swipe at him. It rips through his eye. Oh my god, and I'm able to pin him down. Be so easy to, it would be so easy to eliminate him by crushing his pendant at the moment. But rage seems to be speaking, taking over my mind. Against all judgment, I swipe again on his fallen form. Crimson splatters all over me. Oh my god. Whatever. It's all a simulated reality anyway. I have no time left to spare and leave him there. Continue my frantic escape outside and down the hill. I mean, they still feel pain though, which Jesus Christ said. Sometime later. I finally lost them. Completely betrayed by my own fashion, I managed to find a hiding place. That's a miracle I wasn't hurt much, even though there were so many dogs against me. In our next encounter, I discovered they were aware of me. The reason is that while eliminated dogs usually disappear, Fanshu did not. He just lay there, as if dead. Which is a preposterous reason to fear him, because everyone knows that this is just, just an emulated version of reality. An emulated version created so the reality can be reallocated against the dolls of the island. Oh my god. This allocation is based on the ranking. I'm sorry, I just, like, I just, I just had, like, you know, like, have you ever seen a show called Jimmy Neutron or something? And you're like, he's like, think, think, and you go into his, his like brain to like the light bulb in the center. That was me. And therefore, how good a dog is. Oh my god. That's why the feather let me teleport to Tai Pa. That's why the feather let, let me teleport to, to Tai Pa. I think even the world that we live in outside is a simulated reality. We, this is layers of a, a of a VR like space, layers and layers of it. When you get to the top, you get to live a normal life again. But before then, you have to fight. You have to fight for it, for your life. It could be said that the ranking base of these arenas maintains the social order. And it's in my best interest to ensure that I have the highest ranking possible. I will fight tooth and claw for it, because only then can I gain freedom from my white spot status. I learned that Mochi has the same idea. The reason that he defended me was because he, too, is a white dot. What's a white dot? We ally together and eliminate the rest of them. He says I saved his life, which I don't really understand, but maybe I unknowingly eliminated someone that would have eliminated him. These arena fights get so messy it makes sense if I don't remember the, spe the specific instance, so I don't press the, the issue. He proposes that I eliminate him, to which I agree. Present day on year 224. Now, thinking back, the nights after that arena, was plagued with nightmares. Fan Shu's dead body in the real world being taken out on a stretcher. Oh my, what have I done? Holy hell. 
Of course, as for the rules of the arena, I gotta have the ranking raised as the winner. I was showered with attention and glory by the press, being one of the few dogs to be the winner of consecutive arenas. Sometimes, during my nightmares, I thought, if this is the reality that I am being allocated, do I really want it? My feelings for Heifen were the reason for all my actions in the arena, yet I lost it all. The rumors that I am a white dog were neither confirmed nor denied. Any qualms dog I've had about that aspect of me were overshadowed by fear of my new ranking. White dot. It's a simple term that refers to dogs born with abnormal dots on their fur. It's 101 Dalmatians? What? Okay, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, okay, wait, 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 wait. This story is getting insane. What is going on? Wait, so... If you're born as a, a, one, as a 101, as, as one of the 101 Dal Dalmatians, then you're a lower status. We killed someone in the arena. The arena wasn't a virtual reality then? Or maybe the shock killed them? And we, there's layers of fake reality being built? What the hell's going on? The reason I technically am one is that I actually have some white dots on my back where the fur isn't at fully the same color. However, I don't understand what the big deal is. Although I also carefully hide the fact to make sure my clothing covers the uh, dots. It's just one of those absurd ways Shiba Inus love to look down on one, on one another, apart from the arena rankings. Several months after that arena, I pushed aside the memories and barely thought or felt about it anymore. I hypnotized myself into thinking that it was for the best, and the self-hypnosis worked. There was a next arena to look forward to after all, and it was not going to break my, my winning streak. I vowed to stand at the end of the final arena and look down on all the islands as a new bearer of, as of the Feather of Truth. That was 16 years ago. I fight to not think about Arena 9, but the truth is, deep in my mind, every single detail I remember vividly. The cave where Hei Fen and I promised to come out of the arena together. The forest where I struck down so many dogs. I hunted down every single one of them. I was utterly manipulated by Hei Fen. That is what I came to believe. But whenever I tried to figure out how I just didn't see any winning signs, my mind comes up with the explanation that her promise to me really had been genuine. Be it circumstance or karma, I hated her, yet still loved her. And that was 16 years ago. So why am I back here? In this... Very same forest. Oh my god. Because she did the thingy ma bob. Our pendants went into woo and then he's like, Welcome to the Shadow Realm, mother motherfucker. Right, so now we're back to the Shadow Realm. Now we're fighting each other again. Oh my god. So she can take me back. We're gonna duel to the death. But if I kill her in the Shadow Realm, does she die in the real world, right? Also, fun fact, the Shadow Realm was a euphemism for a death. Originally, you were supposed to actually die when you lost a duel. That's why the Shadow Realm was like, oh, you're trapped in the Shadow Realm forever. Cause it steals your soul and you're dead. Also, another fun fact. I have to pee. I'll be back in like two seconds. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I also had a, a crazy pee, a crazy pee theory. Okay, what if we're not actually dogs, but we're people jacked into the simulation, and we all decided that dogs was the coolest thing to be? Because like, why wouldn't you be a dog, right? Hmm. Oh, dog. The sounds, the smells. I can't logically believe it, but my instincts are telling me that this is the one, the same forest where Arena Nine was set in. What do I do? Lacking any real alternative, I walk forward aimlessly. The foliage is soft against my pop pads. It makes sense that Heifen is somewhere in this arena as well, since she was the one that re-challenged me. But are any of the other contestants? <gasps> oh no, do we get to see? The dog that we killed, whose name I completely forgot, because he, he's there's too many characters <laughs> for, from, from my small P or brain to remember. I scanned my surroundings. I had made my way to higher ground so that I could figure out where I am in the arena. Uh, I see a stream flowing through the forest. I recall that Max's camp was downstream while my camp was upstream. If only I could see more of the stream. The trees are blocking where it flows beyond a certain point. It's hard to recognize specific parts of the forest. Everything is like a blur of green. Ah, but it's okay. It won't matter whether I reach my camp or Max's camp first. Whatever this arena wants of me, I'm sure I can deal with it. Plus, I'm much more experienced now. In Canada, I've tasted blood. Endlessly. I mean, can Canada, sorry. Giving myself pep talks, I carry on. My heart rate doesn't seem to be slowing down despite my efforts to cheer myself up. 
One sleep later. You slept here? That's insane. Year 224, Arena 9, Day 2. Russell. Oh! <gasps> I'm sorry to wake. Ears twitching in every direction to listen. It's quiet. Maybe just the wind. My nerves have not calmed despite my best efforts. I don't know how I was so good at the arenas. Clearly, I'm out of practice. The more nervous you are and the more you care, the worse you do. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's because you have a heart now, Sid, huh? Back then, you were cold, callous. You threw away Fan Hua's life. Something collides into me from the side. I'm thrown into the air, flying in an arc almost in slow motion. From the corner of my eye, I see... Olen? I said to myself, eyeing Olen wearily, afraid she'll attack me again. But Olen ignores me and scrambles away. Then from the trees burst two dogs, one after another. They go straight for Olen, who barks and races off. But the pursuers are faster and pounce clean on her. <gasps> Wait, because yeah, maybe we're replaying when Olen was initially caught in the first place, right? Because he mentioned Olen was on like a patrol at first. Or she, sorry, said. Okay, so now we're seeing what happened. Yeah. I try to slink away, but I can't help look at, but can't help looking at old Len dissolving. She's gone, and I need to get out of here. The attackers glance in my direction, and I flinch. Oh no, isn't that G Pai and Genai? G Pai stares at me for a split second more, as if wanting to say something. Then he dashes off. Genai follows suit. What is going on? So I'm straight in the direction of the stream near my faction's base camp. I took a detour. Since G-Pi had been heading in that direction as well, he could set up an ambush. It would take me longer to get to the base camp to do this detour, but I don't want to risk facing and fighting G-Pi right now. It's been nagging at me. It's been nagging away at me for a while now. How exactly does this arena work? As I can see, dogs are still to be eliminated as I saw G-Pi do to Olen. Was that a reenactment of the past, or what? In Arena 9, Old Len was in my faction, and was eliminated when she was tracking down Max's faction. That much I know. But I wasn't there to see it, so I don't know if that's exactly what happened. I didn't even know exactly which day she was eliminated, because we only became certain after several days had passed and she hadn't returned. I remember thinking she might have been the one that leads her hideout with location. Gee, probably she could, could have got that information. Regardless of what they did in the past, and if what I just saw now was the same as the past, the fact that those two dogs are here. Could that mean the real G Pi and Olen are in this re-challenge too? Present day, Island Year 2 to 4, Arena 9, Day 3. It's strange I haven't seen other dogs since then. If dogs like G Pi and Olen are participating in this arena re-challenge, then maybe it's the dogs that opt in that are here. That will explain why I haven't seen any other dogs. <sighs> maybe they are already eliminated. But since I haven't done any eliminating, who else could have eliminated so many dogs? Not Hei Fen, that's for sure. She was injured inside the cave, yeah. <laughs> uh, the landscape changed more familiar as I near the stream I had seen during the first day. I patrolled this area many times before. This was the outskirts of my faction's patrol route. Muscle memory guides me as I make my way uphill. I get more and more difficult to suppress the memories of what had happened in Arena 9. I want to turn tail and run. But self-preservation keeps me from doing anything rash. I want to get this arena over with. To think I believed I had left my arena days in the past for good. And that disaster with Hei Fen and Fan Shu backstabbing me, I found Zhen Nai and Ji Pai a couple days later. I eliminated them. Then it felt so good. No. No, 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 Sid, stop that. I might have enjoyed the thrill of the competition at the time, but I've changed. I left. I went to K9 Tower. I've become a kind of dog. I wonder how Fei, Fei, Fei Fen was eliminated back then. It was either Zhen Nai or Jin, or Jin Pai or, 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 or Ji Pai that did it. Before Max and I found them. And it couldn't have been Fan Shu because. Never mind. And I wonder if it had been me and Hei Fen left, could I have dealt with the final blow? How would I have reacted emotionally if I had to face her one on one? Wrong as the sounds, I'm simply grateful that Zhen Nai and Ji Pai saved me the trouble of dealing with Hei Fen again. I near the cave, slowing my pace to a crawl as I tried not to make any sound. There it is. 
the cave entrance. So familiar to me, yet so eerie to see again. I have a strange urge to go inside. As if it were a museum that stored my memories in a pristine state before everything went to pieces. But I shake my head, tearing my eyes away. I circle around to the side to find a hiding place, listening carefully in case anyone comes. I should be careful. I really don't think a re-challenge is supposed to make contestants friendlier towards me than the first time around. Several, several, several hours later. Three days later. I shift around to my hiding place. It's been quiet since I started camping out. I guess if there's no activity by tomorrow, I'll just go inside that cave. Day four. I jolt upright. What? I fell asleep. Spit it out, Fan Shu. Fan Shu? I hope I help as much as I can. He's dead. It is him. I swipe with him. Red erupts. It's all a simulation anyway. It's fake. A lifeless body taken away on a stretcher. Dogs muttering as we exit the ARI simulation center. She's a killer. She'll kill you in the arenas. Better not be in the same bracket as her. And did you hear? She's a white dot. One of the contestants in that arena 9 says she saw it. Shh. Don't want to be killed. It's Fan Shu. Moving. Talking. How is he here? What is this? Could he still be alive? Can the dead participate in, in arenas? Tell me now, you hear? I tried to get a closer look at who Fan Shu is talking to, but they're shut up with the foliage of the cave entrance. No. No, no! It's all I can do to stop myself from screaming. The larger dog swipes Fan Shu, and Fan Shu falls, yelping. Fan Shu shields his side from me, as I try to offer him the healing solution that Fan... Wait, Fan Shu shields his side from me, as I try to offer him the healing solution that Hei Fen rejected. Your faction has been nothing but trouble. Why should I believe you? I'm serious. Sid's not here. She eliminated Fen Yuan, I'm sure of it. No, you're wrong. Hei Fen and I did that. Oh. Wait, what? I did eliminate that dog, Fen Yuan, in the, in the past. But I didn't eliminate any dogs this time. Alright then. But I swear it was Sid. I know, I know, I, I know what you mean. I thought Sid was in a faction, but Hei Fen says it's just my mind playing tricks. And for some reason, I heard about her raiding your faction for medical supplies. But she's not working with us. Uh, we do have some supplies that are valuable, but I don't recall anyone trying to steal them. But since you know about the supplies, you're not convincing me that Sid's not working with you. The dog stomps and Fan Shu flinches. There's something weird about Sid. I keep thinking I've seen her when I haven't. What? What is going on? I'm telling the truth, she hasn't been here. Wait. Am I am I fake the whole? Am, am I even real? Because if if reality is, is constructed, has my reality been constructed so far to, to, to hide some guilt or something? Now that you mention it, I do recall seeing her some days ago, but it must have been imagining too. That means she was in two places at once. Doesn't make sense. You're right. Fine. And why did you make me come all this way to to tell me? I propose that we team up. <laughs> you kidding me? The dog that Fan Shu was talking to kicks him. Fan Shu whines and the other dog moves and then finally I can see it. That's Janai! Serious! We want to find Sid and eliminate her. Whether Fan Shu is alive or dead, I still need to make sure I survive this. Huh. And why do we need a team up for that? You've heard of how she's ranked in the past, no? Well, I know she's a threat. But so am I. I don't disagree, but Hei Fen said she knew Sid before this arena. Sid's gotten the top spot in every single arena she's ever been in. I didn't know that. Well, if Hei Fen is so worried about Sid, why doesn't she go find Sid herself? Like I said, Sid's too dangerous. But here's a proposal. Sid is a white dot, and Hei Fen will be the bait. <laughs> now that makes a lot of sense. I shrink instinctively. My face burning red with embarrassment, even though I, I don't think they can see me. Why won't they just let me live? Hey, Fen will be back soon. We'll, we'll discuss the de details if you stick around. I'd let myself be in a two versus one situation? No thanks. Fine. I'll tell you the plan, and you get your faction to follow it. You and your faction, come here tomorrow at noon. The entrance to our cave is here. Wait for Sid to show up, and then pretend to capture me and Hey, Fen. 
Alright, it's a deal. She rises and heads off downhill. Fan Xiu pushes aside the brambles hiding the cave and disappears within. What a load of trouble. Sometime later. I'm still camping in the same spot when I hear some steps approaching from the stone path. Okay. There's something weird, okay? Fan Xiu lied to them and said that I wasn't a part of their faction. Right? And yet, in that flashback that Sid had, Fan Xiu for some reason jumped at me. And then I swiped at him and basically killed Fan Xiu. I think... Fe I think Hei Fan is trying to sh show us like a truth here. The truth of what really happened. I think Fan Xiu was actually on our side. And I think us killing him was the wrong thing to do. I'm still camping in the same spot when I hear some steps approaching from the stone path. It's her. I watch as she disappears into the cave. Are they going to set up the ambush? It's an ambush that I, that I remember very clearly from the past Arena 9. I fell for it. Collar, leash, and clasp. I don't know what they're thinking though. I definitely wouldn't fall for it this time around. Feeling silly but having no better course of action, I continue to camp outside. Sometime later. Around midday, the two dogs emerge. Hey Fen, looking agitated, paces around the clearing. Fan Shu stands near the cave exit, eating something. Uh, everything's in place, but where on earth is Sid? Don't worry. Once we have the other factions help, we can find her. Alright. Hey Fen whips around and glares at Fan Shu. Fan Shu, forget that deal. When Jedi's faction comes here, we're going to eliminate them. Wait, but you just said yesterday. The plan's changed, Fan Shu. Her expression softens and she approaches him. I'm sorry. It's been so long since I've seen you. Why am I speaking like this to you? She shakes her head. When Zhen Nai and company arrive, we're going to catch and eliminate them. Why am I speaking like this? Oh, wait. This is the real Hei Fen. Like she's actually stuck playing herself, the simulation. It's her feelings, her real feelings are coming through. She misses Fan Xiu. When Zhen Nai and company arrive, we're going to catch and eliminate them. But it's three races too. Uh, are we gonna be okay? Hey, Fen touches Fan Shu's face with a paw. Look, Fan Shu, I'm no longer the same dog you know. I'll take care of it. Sometime later. Okay, what, what happened? I, I need to save. I need to save. I, I almost clicked skip. Skip is way too close to the word save, and my thing I flipped around the letters. Muffled voices catch my attention, and as they grow louder, I'm not surprised to recognize them as belonging to Zhen Nai, Ji Pai, and Mo Chi, Max. Instinctively, I tense and scan for places to run. Wait, relax, just wait. Sure, there are a safer places for me to be right now, but I need to stay put to see what happens. The trio approach the cave from the stone steps, like how I had witnessed in the past. They prod around the entrance and lift away the foliage hiding it. What do I do now? Follow Golding. If all goes according to Hei Fen's Keikaku, <laughs> then those three will be eliminated. And then what? Keikaku means plan. He, Hei Fen's trying to find me. That I heard from Fan Chu and Zhen Nai's conversation. So, should I bother sticking around to see what happens? Right now, all those five dogs are occupied. It's my opportunity to set up an ambush. Fittingly, a good location to do that would be the first would be the forest clearing where I first eliminated Fan Chu. Oh man, okay, I'm just gonna save here. Because I okay, I already know my choice, right? Think about it. Think about this, right? This is not just a new event. We are reliving the past, okay? We know what happens at the clearing where we killed Fan Chu. Fan Chu died. We know what happens there. We don't know what happened inside the cave. What happened before, what they talked about. When we showed up, they were already tied up. We have to, we, we have to follow them. I inch in, into the cave, all by keeping much quieter than the enemy trio had. I don't plan to alert the dogs of my presence, especially knowing that Hei Fen and Fan Shu are ambushing the, en the enemy faction. It's strangely quiet. The entry tunnel of the, of the cave reminds me of the times I was checked by Fan Shu on entry. I'm sorry, Fan Shu. Whoa! I nearly get knocked over by a dog that barrels outside. Uh. Hei Fen and Fan Chu dash out from another cavern, on the heels of the first dog. I start, preparing to flee outside as well. 
Hei Fen glances in my direction and we make eye contact. Max! Moshi. The dog doesn't respond. Oh, <gasps> that means he's an NPC. I knew it. It's a, it's a reenactment. I run. On the forest path, Hei Fen and Fan Shu corner me. Hey, hey, Fan Shu, aren't we on the same faction? You're not following the, the, the plan. Yes, we are in the same faction, but... How dare you! Hei Fen lunges at me. You're a monster! No, what are you talking about? He's not even real! Okay, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Gotcha! Max, or Mochi as he was called at, at the time, jumps on Hei Fen. I pounce on Fan Shu while Hei Fen is distracted. Since I already know that Fan Shu is a wound on the side, I immediately swipe at it, giving the swing all that I've got. He falls immediately, howling. Ha <laughs> ha! Hei Fen strikes Mochi. Max! <sighs> Sorry I couldn't save you this time around, old friend. But I don't think you're real here. Hei Fen churns, starting when she sees Fan Shu in pain. I don't make a move to eliminate Fe Fan Shu while he's down, instead standing still and facing Hei Fen. Look, I didn't mean to kill him in the past. Fancy pants? Oh yeah, fancy pants. What's the point of telling me this, all these years later? You can't change the fact that you killed him. I'm not denying that. Who did you kill? Hei Fen and I both ignore him. I'm not naive enough to think that if you don't kill him now, that he'd be alive again. Who knows? Maybe the feather can revive dead dogs. I haven't tried, but to be honest with myself, I doubt it. But I told you that if you lose this arena, the feather goes to me, remember? Why don't, why don't you eliminate him now? Shit. Do I? Okay, so there's a thing, right? What is she looking for? I think she's trying to see if I'm still... Like, a am I still this cold-blooded killer? Does it matter if I have every edge over Hei Fen? Does it matter if sparing him will, won't undo his, his like, death? I should be honest with my feelings. The guilt that I felt all these years. I'm afraid that I'll accidentally kill him again, to be honest. I won't. I'm afraid that I'll accidentally kill him again, to be honest. I stand still, making no move to back my statement. So you didn't just kill him in cold blood. I thought that was obvious. I suppose you held a grudge about it all for all these years. I take her silence as yes. <laughs> so very you. So very me. You would know. Heifen's voice lacks the bitterness I was expecting. She makes a sudden movement, and I instinctively flatten my body on the late. But to my surprise, she steps up to Fanshu's fallen form with a menacing stance. She puts a paw on his form ignoring his whimper, and steps down. Oh wow, I, I didn't expect that. I did not expect that at all. Tell me, how much more have you changed? Sid, I'm not in the mood for jokes. You can stop the jokes by eliminating me. Hey Fen doesn't respond, instead turning tail and dashing off. Without second thought, I give chase, my claws kicking up the dirt. I know I was being faster than her and catch up with her within 10 meters. Just tackle her. If we, if we bite her, that's the wrong thing, right? We don't want to kill her. Something's going on. Just tackle her to, like, get, get her down. I throw her down on the ground by her neck, ready to hold her down with my forelegs. She rolls to the side and I miss. Her movements aren't fast enough to put distance between us, and I fling myself on her again. This time I managed to pin her down properly. You've never had to fight in the real world, have you? It's not even about brute force like I'd always believed. Especially when you try to play wrestle with dogs twice his size. It's about being able to let go of rationality. Doing what the other wouldn't expect. You don't know how I've changed. And probably are basing your expectations off how I acted in the past. It's so damn easy to eliminate you. I'm just ranting at the moment I'm aware. I can't stop it. The misunderstandings festering over 15 years just overflowing, spilling out of me. Hey, Fen is struggling against me. And it's putting up a good effort too. Not enough time to waste. What to do? Oh god, this is, oh my god, there's so many, there's so many hard choices, right? Because, okay, now I'm, okay. 
Oh, there's so many hard choices. There's so many things going on, right? One is the guilt of sin, right? One is this misunderstanding. And then one is like, what really happens? Like, what what actually happened in the cave? Why did Fan Shu pretend like Sid wasn't a part of a faction? Like, what is going on? Ask her about her true opinion of me uh, through all these years. Attempt to sort out some misunderstandings before fighting, or just eliminate her now with guarantee. Don't waste time. I think the last option is the worst one. I need to know what happened. Why did Fan Shu try to pretend like I wasn't a part of their, their faction? What's your true opinion? Hey, Fen, can I ask you a question? Suit yourself. She struggles against me, but I push it down firmly. She shrugs, as just to show that she has no choice but to humor me. That's what I imagine, anyway. I've always tended to interpret her behavior in my own past selfish way. Well, my question is, did you really think I was a cold-blooded killer for all these years? Of all the things to ask, could it be something less obvious? It's so like you to obsess how other dogs view you. Look, that's how I used to be. I've lived much more. I've, I've grown. As I protest, I can see how, to her, I haven't changed. Well, I just thought you'd realize it was a misunderstanding. You know, just, you know, I accidentally played with him too much and he died. You know, it's just a misunderstanding. Just what dogs do. Just dogs being dogs out on the battlefield in the arenas, you know. Just took a life casually. Ha ha. My mistake. Ha ha. I guess I shouldn't be so optimistic I think you'll let go of your completely wrong opinion so easily. Like, dude, Sid, come on. I feel like Sid is being too callous, right? It's like, dude, like, you killed someone, right? Nobody could have known because you swiped at them and left their body there instead of eliminating them. You killed them. I lean over her. It's time to end this. She looks up to meet my eyes, but she doesn't resist. She can see in my face that my mind is made. She's designed to the reality that I will eliminate her right here and right now. Finding the pendant under her shirt, I press down on it. So, okay, this reality, right? Is she dead? I'm back in this body. So tired of this body, cumbersome and heavy. My body, so heavy and leaning on another dog. I can barely make out that it's Max. Thanks for keeping me safe, Mochi. Max rests me in his bed and I can only sink into the sheets, lacking the strength to pull them up higher to my chin. Sometime later. Wait, okay, wait, wait, wait. Remember, in this reality, right? Does that mean she's gone forever? I meet up with Kuei Lee. She says she's gathered more information about my brother. Last time we spoke, she said we should try to dig up some security camera footage. I wonder if I tip us about that. I've also tried investigating on my own, but to no avail. I went to check out the two stations that Chun Wen had rigged his MIT transaction records to show day after day. NJ Station and KH Station. Kingdom Hearts Station and New, and New Jersey, what? I wonder if instead of having rigged the records, he really did live in one of those areas after I left the island. But the transaction timestamps are caninely impossible. No dog physically scanned its pendant at the MIT gates consistently down to the millisecond. Regardless, after visiting NJ Station and KH Station, my trail had run cold. I have no idea about Chun Wen's fate. Sorry, I had to drink some water because my throat is like dry. Yes, I mean, so far the story is. There's so many little details that I'm so curious about now, right? Like, what is going on? It's like. The, the best part is, because the setting of the game is effectively just a bunch of dogs. It feels, it doesn't feel too much of a stretch. It doesn't feel too unreal. It, fe it actually feels the right amount of unreal for what the setting is and what all the characters are eff effectively. Everything fits and it fits so well together in such a way that it, it makes you want to learn more about what's happening. And I have no idea what he could be doing in these two locations. I'm so ashamed that I ran away, but that's what I'm trying to fix now. I want to know where he is. I want to know how he's doing. And it's just a feeling that something is wrong. Why set the transaction times to 9 and 5? There's a hint pointing to a work facility. That's a 5 head. That's a 5 head deduction. I didn't even think of that. A dog of his ranking wouldn't have that sort of activity pattern anyhow. Day to day, he wouldn't even need to use public transit if he wished. Though I wouldn't put it past him to take transit just to try it. 
All right, we're doing the IU Jelly Lemonade, my favorite drink. Well, second like the bubble milk tea, of course. Just after I get my order and return to my seat, I spot Quay Lee coming in. For fun, I don't wave to her, just gives to see how long it takes her to find me. But she spots me very quickly. <gasps> hey, there you are. Hi, Quay Lee. She plops down across from me. How you doing? I'm good. I'm all right. I hope you have something helpful for me today. I do, in fact. Though, you're not going to ask me how I'm doing. Cold and straight to business as usual. Ha! How you doing? Quay Lee grins cheekily, smug that I listen to her. The truth is, she has grown on me, despite my efforts not to get close. After the initial distance I put between us, she's yet to demonstrate any ulterior move. Motive, sorry. Hopefully she, this won't be a mistake. I made so many mistakes in the past, trusting dogs that offered me a deal too good to be true. These speakers, one time that I got... Man, these really did seem like a great deal, but... Well, well, I've been good, I've been, I've been great. Just waltzing my way around town as only a Labrador can. There, you happy now? The response wasn't anything of substance. I didn't even need to know that. It doesn't en enhance our relationship with trust? Why would you care if I asked how you're doing? At this point, I'm just messing with her. A part of me is just curious as to how she would respond. Well, the answer was also just... I'm good, I'm alright, which is typically just a canned response. But the way you said I'm alright makes you feel like it's not alright. So there was some information to be gleaned, and therefore it wasn't a useless question. From that, I think I deserve to be judged based on even ground here. Okay, okay, fine. You're right. I'm not that alright. I'm feeling a bit down, in fact. I tried poking around the two locations from the travel logs. I didn't get, I, I didn't get any results. The area was just too broad, and I know nothing about how my brother is related to those two areas. You know, I'm, I'm a bit surprised you'd even admit that you're feeling down. The Sid I research would never say that. Yeah, I would never say something like that. It's a busy body stranger like you. I stick up my tongue, trying to make it clear I'm just joking. Bleh. Though to be honest, I have mellowed down considerably since those arena years, if I do say so myself. Ah, uh, but you know, some habits remain. In the re-challenged arena 9 with Heifen yesterday, I was afraid of the sides of me it, it reawakened. I was afraid of how quickly my mind relapsed to scheme ruthlessly against others. Yeah, that explains why you're still so rude and cold. Even though I'm the one that gave you the best, the last solid lead you have about your brother. Maybe this one will make you really warm up to me. She playfully makes a, plur a flourish with her paws. I take a sip of, of my lemonade. Ayu jelly is so juicy and refreshing. Good. Okay, now I'm craving bubble tea and Ayu jelly and and lemonade and other sweet drinks. Like I'm craving too much. Okay, this thing is making me hungry and it's making me thirsty. I I get the double. <laughs> I'm listening. Well, I was able to get some security footage. Uh, the unfortunate part is that there's still no real sign of him on the dates after uh, after the final arena. Right. Wait, 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 I just had, I just had a thought, right? If this is all about different realities and being able to like be in a, in your own reality, what if, what if he's in a parallel reality? What if he wished himself to be in a different reality where fa like, you know, Fan Shu was alive or something? For some reason, I don't know, right? Or like he wanted to have like a peaceful re reality, so he's like in an alternate dimension, right? I suppose that's it then? The lead is that. The lead is that there's no trace of him. Say, Quayley? Say, Quay Lee, I'm sorry. Yes, Sid? I'm gonna be frank with you. Her ears perk up and she looks at me attentively, but also in a way that seems like she's bracing for a rude comment or joke. Not because I fully trust you, but you know, it might help the investigation. <gasps> you know what? I'll take that. Though my instinct tells me it's a mixture of both. You're just saying it's for the investigation, so you don't have to admit that you're starting to trust me. I grin at her sheepishly. That's not how this works. But anyway, back on topic. I'm really concerned about whether my brother is even... <laughs> if he's even alive. Oh my god, wait, yeah, true, right? Wait, think about it. Fanshu, I mean, we killed Fanshu. Somebody could have killed my brother. As revenge. Somebody could have killed my brother as revenge. Right? What if it goes down this line? Does, does Fanshu have, ha have siblings? Where is Fanshu? If he's even, even, if he's even alive. Quay Lee lets out a heavy sigh. Right. 
I, I get it. You haven't seen him in ages. I nod. You have no idea where he might be. I nod. The island is a dangerous place. I nod. For dogs that don't rank high like your brother. I... My point is, there's no reason for him to be in danger. It's more likely that he's gone into hiding. Right. I want to object. The previous day's in arena encounter coming to mind. I have the highest ranking for dog's sake, and I still get threatened and targeted. Maybe Chin Wen is being targeted as well, despite not being the bearer of the feather. I think I'll tell Quer Lee about the re-challenge arena when I have the chance. I think I trust her enough to. So, say he's alive. Is there anything in the footage to support that? Well, in the footage of the days before your last arena, he physically showed up at the stations around 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. But the time spans when the cameras captured them scanning his pendants aren't the exact same as what's on their transaction logs. For example, the logs show 9 daily, but on the cameras it's more of a caninely possible situation, such as 90153. He would arrive on time, but since there are other dogs in front of him, he couldn't control exactly when he scans his pendants on the gate. Ah. Huh. Another interesting thing that for the shows is that he was wearing some sort of uniform. With that, she plus the photo out of her bag. It's that same uniform for a few days in a row before the final day of the before the day of the final arena. I think this could be a hint. I squint and peer closer at the picture. It's very blurry and hard to make out the lettering on the uniform. It's likely a logo, and just being able to have this image captured is a great lead. Do you recognize this uniform at at, at all? I wish, but no. Do you? I have some ideas, but I didn't have time to double check. I'm saying you listen to anything remotely similar to it, and maybe something will, will ring a bell? I guess I'm a bit surprised. The reason I didn't do more in-depth research is that I thought you'd recognize something that your brother wore so often. Not to make you feel bad about it or anything, I'll just do a more thorough check of businesses and work facilities in the area. Well, you're right to be surprised. We're our siblings after all. It's a safe assumption that I might know something. But the truth is, we weren't living together at the time anymore. Sure, we messaged and met up every now and then, but I was focused on my high tier arenas and so was he. At the time, it seemed like everything was coming to an end so soon, so I just tapped it out, barely in contact with anybody. I knew he was doing well in his arenas, but who would have known that our brackets would meet just like that? Wait, I, did I kill my uh, brother? <gasps> what if I killed my Maya brother? Holy shit. <laughs> it was a bracket that made the news for sure. But it wasn't half as scandalous as the news when the, runner, when the winner just ran away with a very prized feather that kept the dogs motivated to win the arenas. I mean, I knew it was unavoidable to be talked about. But I wasn't around to know what was said about me. I've still been too ashamed to ask Max about what happened after I left. I also look up news articles, but same thing too. I'm too embarrassed. I don't worry about it. It's mostly gonna found the speculation. Only you knew know what the truth of what happened. It's your life. I guess so. Anyway. I'll hold on to this photo and you should send me a list of places you think it might be from. Yep. There's a list I quickly generated from image recognition search. I just haven't gone through the manual yet to see what might make sense. That could, that could be a next step. Thanks a lot for the help. You're welcome. You know what? Want to go to the two stations and walk around? Maybe we'll happen upon something. We can get some, you know, some little snacks on the way. Hey, that's a good idea. I finished my beverage and washed the sweet apple taste down with a sip of water. Put the photo of my brother securely inside my sweater and we set off. At the MIT, I used my usual method to enter stations, hiding my pendant face. First, we travel to NJ Station. It's near the central zone, two stops down the green line from a current location. We decide to comb the area street by street. Quay Lee pulls up a map on her wrist phone, and we stroll down one street, then walk around one block covering all sides. We then move on to the next block. By the way, Quay Lee, I need to tell you something. Quay Lee looks over and nods, signaling her attention. Mm -hmm. So I was shouting some sort of arena rematch yesterday. Quay Lee stops in the tracks, her expression concerned. Go on. It was one of the runner-ups from my ninth arena. Somehow, she found me after my lunch with Max. I didn't believe her at first, but then she took my, her pendant. But when she took out her pendant, mine reacted to it. We entered an arena generated, generated for just the two of us. But this re-challenge arena was some sort of replay of the actual arena that happened between the two of us. It was weird. I had the consciousness of the me in the past arena. I don't know, I don't know if that makes sense. It was a new arena from scratch, but like I said, a re-challenge. That's the term the challenger used. Both of us were free to act as we wished, but the other participants in the arena all acted the same as they did in the past, or only changed mindly in reaction to me or the challenger's new actions. It was like we were given the chance to change what we would have liked to change. 
and the arena would run its course with the decisions of our present selves. But I already knew what happened in the past arena, that's the thing. So that knowledge helped me deal with the other participants, even if I was clueless as to how the, the re-challenge arena worked at first. I was able to outwit the challenge herself as well, so I won this time. And that's why I'm worried that if I'm being targeted and not to be rechallenged one on one, the same could have happened to my brother as well. Quay Lee is silent, processing the information. Did this challenger tell you what she'd be getting out of this? She said that if any rechallenger wins, they will get their feather of truth. <gasps> Just like that? I shrugged. She wasn't very clear about it, but my pen reacted to hers. So I imagine something was programmed in place. Remember how in official ARI regulated arenas, we go to those rooms and they're then are connected to the emulated reality with our pendants? Our pendants still connected us, but this time out in the open, not the ARI buildings and just one-on-one. -on -one. Interesting and strange, but I believe it. Though it's so unfair that they could just take the feather if they win. Decades of your hard work down the drain just like that? Okay, you seem way too uh, interested in the feather over me, huh? What happened to our new budding friendship, Quaylee, huh? 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 Well, what about Sid's feelings, huh? Think about me, Quaylee. For forget about the feather. Guys, you're more than your accomplishments, okay? No matter what you do in life, no matter how you live your, your life, the important thing is that you are you. You are more than the things that you do. I, I, a lot of people are gonna feel like, hey, what I do in my career, what I do, whatever I do, and the things that I do, it's like that defines who I am. It's like your, your actions, sure, but still, you, you're gonna have to do a lot of things that are sort of like, not really you. Like, you have to earn the money to pay the bills and stuff. Just remember, you're still you. In the end. Perhaps this is unfair, but maybe it's just writing the wrong that the feather went to someone like me. Sounds like someone's feeling awfully guilty about this whole feather bearer thing. Guilty. I guess I've never kept it a secret from Max. Ah, oh, you'd be surprised how offended dogs get when you have second thoughts about the prize dangled in front of their noses year after year while they were forced to participate in the arenas. With forced? Oh my god, I, I, I thought it was an optional thing. I, I thought it was like, you know, literally like like the Hunger Games. Well, no, I guess it, that's literally like in, in the Hunger Games. It's like, I volunteer as tribute, and you go to like volunteer as, as a tribute. It's not like every dog cares about the feather. Most just want the high ranking so they pretty much can do what they please on this island. You can live a life just fine without Feather itself, which is not the sole purpose of the arenas. I just feel hypocritical speaking ill of holding such power, when I'm the one who holds it. As we continue walking, I spot a sign that has similar red lettering to Chun Wen's <gasps> uniform in the photo and take it out- Oh my god, yes! And take it out to compare. Hmm, do you think that could be the logo? Mama X- Mama X- Mama and Mama and Mama Enterprises. Mama? Mama Enterprises. I'm gonna call it Mama. See? Red font, slightly slanted. It's missing that oval around it, though. Yeah, you're, you're right. Features. Font size. Font? Features font. Font size color. Perhaps one hot encoding of flourishes around the words. What are you talking about? Ah, uh, sorry. Just, uh, tap it. Have it. Let's keep looking. We head down to the next block. Quayley pulls up her hologram map and marks the route we've walked so far. I'm just wondering. What were you expecting when you were gunning for the feather? Like, what did you plan to do with it after you won it? Do you have any specific plans for it at all? Well, it's funny because in the very beginning as a puppy, I wasn't interested in the feather in the slightest. The challenger from yesterday was actually one of the dogs that spurred me to aim higher than I would have. Oh my god. Her name is... Hey Fen. Hey Fen, that name rings a bell. Didn't you two have a really big fallout? I remember reading about it on some news articles. I, I guess that happened. Wanna talk about it? I'm not sure about that. Oh, come on, just a bit. You seem to have something to, to say about it. Sorry, give me one moment. I need to double check something really quick. Apologies, forgot to do something really quick. Okay, now. Should I tell her what she thinks about... Should I tell her about the fallout? Like, I still don't trust... Uh, 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 Quayley, right? As helpful as Quayley is, you still don't really know, right? Because again, someone can help you for ulterior motives. So I'm still not really convinced that Quayley is necessarily on a side. I still think Quayley does have an ulterior motive, she's, she's just hiding it, right? Because like, out of nowhere, it's just weird. I'd rather figure out more about Hey Fen instead of telling her about the fallout. Actually, maybe I should tell her about the fallout. Because it'd be good for the later drama, right? It'd be good for later drama if she knows. Uh, 
It's just a bit difficult to talk about. I've tried so hard to bury it. But I might as well tell you a bit. It was Arena 9. I guess by that time, I already had a reputation for winning my past arenas. All of them. Dogs were intimidated, and dealt with that in various ways. For example, you know the superstition that dogs with white dots on their front legs or have white paws are... Unnatural? Clearly not. From my research, I found that Heifenna say that you are a white dot in many interviews. I mean, you're a descendant of a family with a very violent history in the arenas. Oh my god! Wait, is that why? So like, if you're a white dot Shiba Inu, then you're like an ancient Shiba Inu who's like killed other Shiba Inus? Is that true? Are Shiba Inus violent? All I know about Shiba Inus is that they're very protective of their of their owners. Not that they're violent dogs. Pretty little, pretty little, pretty little Sid, pretty little city Sid. She uses to support her claims that you killed Fan Shu on purpose. You already know so much, huh? I'm impressed. Why'd you ask me about the fallout then? Well, things ha happened. Well, things that happened can be looked up in archives. Only you can tell me your real thoughts and feelings. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, she wasn't wrong. I do have a white dog, but I have no idea why it even matters. Some distant, ancient, ancestral tie to dogs I have no dear I I dear about? True. See, this is- okay, now this is... This is getting, like... In general, just the topic of like a Hunger game is already like fairly, fairly reticent of reality in many different ways, right? It's sort of, it's just an abstract concept to represent the the rat race of any kind, right? Now the idea of like your your ancestors being uh, being held for their mistakes, not being able to move forward, reminds me of like uh, the caste discrimination, you know, systems all around the like world, right? You know. Even here in the West, you're like the peasant and the, the, the top 1%. It's so like just because you're born in it doesn't mean that they should discriminate against you, but that's how the world is. It's awful. Plus, assuming everyone with the way white thought is evil is just putting nature 100% over nurture. Okay, this is weird. I, this is, it feels like this game is reading my mind. Just this morning, I was just reading a, a discussion about something. About the idea of like nature versus nurture. And the idea of, like, th there's no such thing as a good or a bad person. People just do good or bad things. That you have to really learn to separate the person from the actions that they do. And look at their actions as they are. And realize that the, the reasons are more complex than just, you know, nature. Since you said justify how I won over her, in my honest opinion. But, yeah, the real issue was, was that I, I really liked Heifen. And I actually want us to win together. Are you even allowed to win together? Now that I look back, I have no idea why I was attracted to her. I would have even thrown the match so that she could win. Before the trail happened. You see, after that arena, I learned to not trust any dogs. Don't make any real alliances. If I did, I was mentally prepared for them to betray me at any point. I was ready to do the same. Hey, Fen's betrayal taught me that what I need is freedom. Freedom from other dogs' wants and desires. Without that freedom, I, was, I will always be at the mercy of another. It seemed reasonable that in order to be free of the whims of dogs, I would need to hold all the power for myself. I glanced at Kuei Li, who's been silent. Hopefully this isn't boring her, but she asked. Sorry, we're not, we're not a bit of a rant there. Am I losing you here? Nah, go on. So, yeah, that's what happened. And there you have it, my honest opinion. My reaction to betrayal was, was overly dramatic. Burned by a romantic attraction that was spreading rumors that I'm a white dot murderer. Time to take over the island. But I was young. And choosing to make the most of it took me far in the end. I do regret how I was. You'd have called me ruthless in the arenas, but I'd say it was more pragmatic. Seems like you're just trying to justify your guilt, just like Heifen was. Ugh, right back. Right to the Kokoro. Right to the Kok- the Kokoro? Oh, the heart. Right? The heart. Oh, or, or to the gut. No, no. We cover another two two blocks, scanning the signs for the logo on my brother's uniform with some false alarms. I took some photos of those we confirmed to be not a match, just in case. Of course, I also photographed the ones that are still ambiguous. I wonder if I can figure out which dogs are going to re-challenge me. I suppose it's only the dogs that participated in an arena with you, hence the re-challenge? Yeah. The fact that the re-challenge arena held the state or the memories of what had happened in the past points to them being against the dogs I have competed against. Say, Quayley, have you competed in the arenas? I... have. But it's strange. It's more like I have memories of them. 
<gasps> Wait. Oh my god. What if? Again, it's my, it's my, it's my idea, right? If if it's different realities built on top of each other, what if Kui Lee is an NPC built with those memories? But what do you mean? You know the whole waking up feeling, like your consciousness is a bit woozy, like the memories created in the arenas are trying to fuse into your physical body. I kind of get what you're saying. The way I think it works is that the memories are being downloaded back to our physical body. That might be what you're describing. Yeah, I do have memories, but not that feeling you get when you know a memory isn't 100% correct. But the corresponding muscle memory isn't there. Hmm, I don't think I know it's a lack of muscle memory. To me, it felt like I did physically carry out the actions in the arenas. Though that could have been just a trick of the mind to, re to reconcile my memories with, with my physical body. I wonder if your laboratory physique or something genetic isn't fully compatible with the RI hardware. As if the, if the muscle memory is something that is completely absent. Yeah, maybe. We walk along in comfortable silence. We're almost at the end of the last route we plan to scan manually. Again, this is why this is why I wanted to play this game, right? Because all I'm from the Shiba Inu, which is just a demo right now and a Kickstarter, please for the love of God. For the love of God. If you have if you're rich and you have extra money, just like toss you know, just just like toss four thousand to it so it can finish its like funding goals, please. Like all with the Shiba Inu, the the second part of this. It immediately piques your interest. There's there's a much deeper story than just dogs and like a society of dogs, right? Like, there's a much deeper story going on going on here. It seems to span the 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 whole gamut of like genres of like fantasy and fiction, and also, you know, it tries to tackle some serious issues in the form of this game. Like, I'm 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 genuinely curious. I I need to know how this ends up. It's funny how this feels like a regular afternoon in Kananda. Strolling down the street with a lab chit-chatting. I'm so curious how she ended up here. Maybe she's also a type of feather, a feather holder. What if she's a descendant of the fabled species of dogs that once lived on the island? <laughs> My imagination is pretty wild sometimes. Not the way I think her actions so far would make her just trustworthy enough. Although, there's still the deeply rooted thorn in my heart. The fear of another betrayal. But I wonder... Will Quay Lee be different? Say, Quay Lee. I don't normally ask this. I really don't, but what's your rank? <laughs> I only talk to rank fives and above. What? Rank six, you scrub, and get out of my face, Quay Lee. No worries. I figured you'd want to know. Wouldn't want to trust wouldn't want to entrust your perseverance and information to some random dog. I'm rank twenty one. Did that far? She takes out her pendant and flips it face up to show me. Nine large orbs are filled with seven of the smaller ones. What? Wait, what? Oh yeah, because mine had like a bunch of orbs and like the smaller ones. You're in 97, huh? Wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. Huh? Hmm? Wait. Is 100 the highest rank? Is 97 like a weak rank? Not bad. Oh, Wait. In Audible to Shibino, we faked being a 94, which is also high. Thanks for showing me. Quayley puts her pendant back in her jacket. No problem. We look down the la at the last few buildings in the area. Doesn't seem like there's anything matching. Your brother's hints might be pointing to areas even further from the MIT station. Like I said, I'll run a geographical analysis first thing I will when I get back. Alright then. Thanks. I should go, but let me know what you find, okay? All right, Commander Sid. See you back on the Norman. There's so many references in this game. Later, Commander Shepard. What I feel like you're just being a joke. I'm not getting. Oh wait, do they have Mass Effect in this world? Sometime later, I'm lounging on the chair in Max's apartment, waiting for him to get home. Last night, I woke up back on the bed in the apartment. I vaguely remember Max hearing me up to the apartment, so I guess I wasn't fully passed out. I wasn't fully conscious, either. The dog's body uses up nutrients while the mind is in the comatose arena state, which is why the ARI hooks us up to all those life support things. An official arena, is, that is. Good thing that after a good sleep and meal, I felt well enough to meet with Quay Lee. Just then, I hear the lock slicking, and in steps Max. <gasps> hey, Max! You're up! He sets down his bag by the desk. When you wake up. I think around noon. Thanks for the food, by the way. 
In the morning, I had woken to take out egg crepes and a note on the dining table. It was from Max, and said to eat as much as I want and I text him if I feel unwell. You know exactly how much I love egg crepes. How could I forget, after watching you eat them every single day for three years? And that's what you ordered at Q Restaurant. So I knew right then that you hadn't changed at all. Gah, I know. Sometimes I, I, I'm an open book. Definitely a creature habit. Max makes a face at me. How was your day? What, what, what were you up to? Well, I, um... I went to meet with Kuei Lee. She said she had a new lead. Sorry, just fixing the volume. I didn't realize it was so low. Because the music is actually good. I actually like the music a lot. It lends itself to the, to the, to the feeling very, very well. Very, very well. I pull out the photo of my brother and show it to him. He takes it wordlessly and scrutinizes it. Oh wow, she managed to get all the security footage? That's an amazing clue! She must have had really good sources. Yeah, I'm starting to think there's something fishy about that actually. I notice that Max has a strange expression on his face. He doesn't seem to have heard me, so I look at him to see if he'll say anything. He doesn't respond immediately. You didn't... You... You, you didn't tell me you were going to meet with, with the lab. Oh god, what what's happening? Max, I just, you know, I'm just going to meet with the lab. I mean, not that you had to. It makes me worry that you go without messaging, without me messaging me, just in case. He seems upset. I'm sure he's just looking out for me. Plus, now that we know dogs tend to be challenged me not to mention me fainting yesterday, it is reasonable that he'd worry that something dangerous could happen again. However, I wouldn't have gone if I didn't think I could take care of myself. Still... I should speak carefully. I know Max. He wouldn't bring this up unless he really cares about it. What should I say? Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What do, what do we know about Max? Absolutely nothing. We know absolutely nothing, right? Is he the type to just be feel good with an apology? And then is he, is he finally changing the like, topic? Like, does an apology mean that we agree? No, right? It just means that we're sorry, right? Do, do we instead explain our like reasoning so that he can maybe feel a lot cl cleaner? Oh, man. Because uh, I would say number two, but because I, I like, num I, I, I like num number two for myself. But M Max could be a number one. Ah, oh, crap. This is a hard choice. My dual disc isn't going to help me here. Um, um, well, and again... I'm trying to do this in one shot, okay? Because I think visual novels and stories, it's good to experience them as one single playthrough. You live and die by the consequences of your, of your actions. I think that makes for a much more satisfying story in the end for you to play through as a player. Instead of having to redo your choices, trying to get the right one, it feels a lot better to go Iron Man on, on this. In which case... You know what? It's, it's a very Sid thing to explain my reasoning, right? Sid, is a very Sid seems to be a very anal analytical mind. They make notes of things, different categories and stuff. I think Sid, the dog itself, not me, the player, but Sid would explain her reasoning. Wonderful. Took me 99.43 seconds. Like, well, come on. I'm sorry. It's a hard choice, okay? It's not my fault. Look, Max, I can tell you're upset. No, I'm not. He pouts and glares away at the door, suddenly very interested in it. Hmm. He totally is. I really thought I'd be safe going to meet with Kuei Lee. If I got ambushed, I would have Kuei Lee to take care of me. But, what if... Yeah, I know what you're thinking. What if she betrayed me or didn't look out for me? Look, Max, I know you're worried. But trust me when I say that I felt the risk was worth the information to be gained. Worst comes to worst. I was prepared to use the feather. That's all. Uh, you're right. You can take care of yourself better than I could, in a pinch. I'm sorry that I was so difficult, but give me a quick update next time you go running out, okay? Alright, it's a deal. So, back to, before I back to before I distracted you, you were saying there might be something strange about Quay Lee? Hard agree. Yeah, after being Quay Lee today, something has been on my mind. Like you said, she has really good contacts. She seems to know dogs' ranks really well. Even I don't know where to start looking for that, so I can't imagine how difficult it might be for the general public. 
However, she does have a really high rank. So I wonder. She could be using her rank to get the information. In which case, I'm not too happy about that. Or, she works at the ARI. Yeah, I was just thinking about that, right? Because it's like, you get all this information, you're really high rank. We know from Autumn with the, from Autumn with the Shibinu that they like to hire dogs with like high high rankings. Otherwise, you're not allowed to, to, to get in, right? In a way, playing that demo kind of gave me some more interesting context on the on the society that, that these characters live in, right? And so I'm curious now. Like, I also had the same thought of, like, she must be working for them or is a part of the inside, but then why is she trying to help us, right? Like, why is she giving us so much information? And more importantly, how important is Chun Wen, my, uh, my, my, my brother, right? Why does everybody want him? It's weird, like, I want him, of course, because he's my brother. But why does Kuei Lee care? So you're saying the information might be classified, so she either used her right ranks, her her rank rights, or simply has direct access to it herself. Yes, either or. I still have me to not know much about the associate about the blah, blah, blah. It still have me to not know about m much about the allocated reality in suit itself. I should have learned more about their officials before I left the island. Did they really allow such loopholes for information leaks like rank rights? Max's tone turned serious. Sid is perfectly within the lab's right to use her rank rights. I doubt that any ARI member would be an exception. Any dog has to obey the dog whose rank is above. Oh my god, wait. Okay, that's a lot worse than I thought. I, I, I thought rank was like, you know, like. You get to have more, like, privileges and stuff. Like, oh! You're a high rank dog, I guess you get to eat the, today, you know what I mean? Or like. Imagine being like a rank zero dog. It's like, uh oh, you can't eat today. You get to eat. here's your daily rations of milk or something, you know. But this is like this is like a feudal this is like a feudal caste system. That's really messed up. It is the purpose of the AI to determine who on the island is deserving to separate the good dogs from the bad? Well, so wait, that's weird, right? Because then I would think the arenas is the worst choice, right? Because. Again, this is sort of like related to the idea of like what is good and what is bad. Those are such vague terms, right? They using good and bad in the context of a vicious fighting arena, and so good is whoever fights the 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 best, whoever schemes the best, whoever is the most cunning, whoever is the most strong-willed, whoever is the most violent, the most dangerous, and bad is whoever is too nice for their own good, which is the kind of person that you'd want in life. My grimace. The rights to alter reality are allocated accordingly. My voice just broke. You know, so many years I still remember. The dogma of the RI. <laughs> now imagine having to hear it again and again, day after day. I fell for the allocated reality institution's promise of a dream. We all fell for it. Max eyes. It's the way things work. Even if you don't use rank rights, everyone else is still doing it. If Quay Lee did, would you hate her? I mean, it wouldn't be fair to hate her. I think I would, I would be disappointed, yeah, but it would it'd be unfair to judge her for her using her rank rights. I try to use my rank rights as little as possible, but I have used it before. I can't enforce my values on someone else. Either way, I will try to get the information out of Kuei Li on what her sources are. Does anyone know the typical ranks of dogs that work at the ARI itself? Anywhere? What? Sorry, that was weird. Does anyone know what the typical ranks of dogs that work at the air are itself anywhere? I have no idea. I think the members are kept secret. But I've heard that the dogs that are keyed on the air position aim for very high ranks. I see. Be careful, Sid. I mean it. I really hope the air itself isn't out to get you. Wait, yeah, wait. I have a feather that lets me bend reality to my will and basically grants me wishes. Wouldn't they, they would want to get this back, no? I'm almost certain they would want to get this back. Especially now that random dogs on the street can just kidnap you and force you into into an arena. Uh, I certainly hope the ARI is not to me. I'd like to see them try, though. I'm worried, but it was actually kind of fun. I thanked you for getting breakfast for me, but totally forgot. Thanks for bringing me back last night. <laughs> no problem. You're kind of awake, but definitely not awake enough to come back to yourself. I was prepared to say un until the arena was done, no matter how long it took in real world hours. Yeah, no time passes much quicker in the arenas. There's no telling how much time it might last, huh? How was Hey Fan after we woke from the arena, by, by the way? Eh, I called the cafe as well. Woke her up enough to ask her to pay with her own pendants. Speaking of which, how much was it? I'll transfer you some tags. Ah, don't worry about it. 
I mean, I, I already see where this is going. You don't insist because you feel bad. My face goes red, even though I know he's just joking. Buy me a drink next time? Okay, deal. <gasps> also, sorry, beer, beer. I need to do something really quick. Back right to it. Just then, I get an email n notification. Oh my god, look. Oh, <gasps> Bobortar, Qua Qua Lab. I've attached a sheet of, of company names and their logos generated from image recognition. I've included the raw list as well as burnt down ones I have to delete after checking manually, but I've left them in case you spot something. Got it. Thanks. Got it. Got it. Thanks. Thanks, Quilly. A Sid dog. A side dog? I'm a side dog. Oh my god. That's what my username is? My, my username on the thing is a side dog? I'm... I'm a... I'm a side bitch? I, I, my username is a side bitch? Is that what the username is? Say, Max, you wanna help me go through these? Sure thing. We spend some time going through the sheet. In the end, we still have quite a long list of logos that could be a match. Hmm, I have an idea. Hey, QL. Hey, Quay Lee, could you do a search of where those companies are located physically? Sure thing. Well, sh sure thing. One sec. Moments later, I get a message notification. Down files. Perfect. New columns have been added to the dataset with the addresses as well as geohashes. Oh, geohashes. Oh, so reliable. I plot the locations onto a map, leaving only the ones that are within a certain radius to NJ Station and KH Station. I tinker around with how large the radius should be, eventually setting on encompassing just up to the stations proceeding and following them on the MIT lines. If you had really left some hint related to the location, it wouldn't make sense if it were somewhere too far from the two stations. It's amazing this can all work in restaurants. Yeah, I know, right? I remember when you had to do even light work, light, even lightweight work on computers. In K9, I worked for technology research. We were using the equivalents of desktop computers here for most things. Processing phones or powers isn't as advanced there. Things in general aren't as convenient, but at my work, basically, we we're responsible for developing and improving technologies, hardware, software. I took a lot of inspiration from what existed on the island. Nice. I very much relate with this dog too. The dog in Autumn with the Shiba Inu was a programmer, and I'm a programmer, and I really relate with that. This dog is a, something in the technology field. I also relate, relate, relate with that. I feel... Am, am I? Am I? Am I a dog? Am I a furry? I bet you had some, quite some suggestions for them. I did. When I left, technology on the island was still more advanced than K9 does. So I was able to repurpose some of the software for use in K9. The, the dogs I worked with were brilliant. They came up with most of the implementation based on their current hardware capabilities. As we chat, I send Max a copy of the data. Upon receiving the mail notification, he pulls up the data. Alright, let's go through these dead data points first. You do station KH and I'll do NJ. Max nods in agreement and we pour over the map with a renewed focus. One by one, we examine the details of each company on the shortlist because there's something of significance based on its exterior appearance or the types of goods or services it provides. Huh. Hey, Sid, take a look at this. He points to a name on his holographic map. <gasps> Obsidian Rock Industries, Ori. Ari? A-R-I, Ori, Ori. Office location, ninth floor. Yo! Chun Wen is a genius, holy shit. Well, what a code. Boys, viewers, ladies and gentlemen. Chat, we've cracked the code. Ninth floor. So what does the five mean? We haven't cracked the code. This... This could be it. No, this must be it. I'll go through the rest of them just to be sure there's nothing else. Yeah, I think I could catch this one. Because I know enough about you. But if there's an even more obvious hint on the upsetting your rock, you'd be the best dog to catch it. Yeah, you're right. Either way, there might be something else to look for. This obsidian rock is near carriage station. There might be a clue near the NJ station too. Yeah. Continue looking down around my map. I around halfway through and nothing really rings a bell. There's a bunch of coffee shops that all of them had opened after I left. Even if Chutwin had wanted to hint at somewhere we went together, I couldn't reliably say if I could recognize it by name or pictures. It's been over a decade, my memory isn't that good, and the establishments might have gone through renovations. Hey, Sid, I looked up the company. Their website is really bare bones. Just list their address and that's a picture of the exterior of the building. Nothing about what they do... Interesting. I'll pay a visit tomorrow. I pull up my messages and debate what whether to tell Kuei Lee. I'm still not 100% sure if she might be an agent for the area or something. Right now, my instincts are telling me that... Oh, crap. Oh, 
god. Another major choice. No. Okay. The thing is, right, is like, I had the same suspicion too. Because it's like, why are we trusting her with so much, right? With trusting, I, I think trusting people that you don't even... I think trusting your enemies with your emotions isn't that bad. Because emotions aren't necessarily too important unless it's like... Yeah, no, no. Definitely emotions are not that important to keep a secret, right? It's relationships. It's like, it's like, it's like details. It's like, it's like plans. It's like those details that really, really, really matter. Um, it's not necessarily that you feel love. It's that you have a relationship with someone that you really like someone. They can use that to, to blackmail you. They can use that to hold them hostage. But if you, if you never tell them who and you just say that you're in love, that's as good as useless, right? So, I think this is too much to tell. Like, they're just feeding us hints, Quay Lee. They're just feeding us hints. But then, what if Max is working for the AR? Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, Because there's still something, right? Why did Max help us out in that arena? Why did Max help us in, in the arena? Why did Max help us in, in the arena, right? And why is he here? How how is he now again? Why did why did he promise us? Are we in unrequited love? In which case, I I, I shouldn't be trusting. Okay, if I can't trust either of them, I should trust the both of them. Because then they can find it out. Nah, she she, she couldn't be working for the era. I don't think I have enough proof to be sure though. Let's not tell her either way. After all, it's not like my brother would just be living at the Obsidian Rock Industries office address. Among him, it's probably just one step and several more to actually find them. So even if Quay Lee does work for the AI, this wouldn't be the last step to finding him. I might still need her help. You push them to shove, I could still double cross her later. Oh my god, your arena instincts are coming back. And since Obsidian Rock is one of his hints, maybe it's only myself and Dawes have known for long enough to pl plausibly decipher this. Though, given Quay Lee's track record, I can't rule out the possibility that she already knows the significance of Obsidian Rock or could find out. In the case that she hasn't figured it out yet, I suppose there's no harm in just telling you the name of Obsidian Rock but not, not the meaning of it. When the investigation reaches a point where she cannot proceed on her own, I will no longer be dependent on her for new leads. Basically, I'll use her help as much as possible, with a new complication that she might be a double agent. Maybe I shouldn't worry so much. Chun Wen must have put some safeguards to prevent a random third party from finding him. Let's hope that my trust in him won't, won't jeopardize him. Hey, Quay Lee, could you look for information on Obsidian Rock Industries? It's near K Station. K? That's it, just K? Jeez. No, okay. It's pretty funny though. Chun Wen and I used to play scavenger hunt games like this. Before the arenas, before everything. We were just puppies living on the plains. Oh, <gasps> wait, that's right. They would just be dogs like living in the wild, right? Like they would just be like, dude, it's like wild horses. You know, like the horses are in the back. But like instead of that, it's like, it's like dogs. So you're just like just dogs are roaming around. And what if, wait, if dogs survive, what, what about coyotes, right? Wait! Dude, the possibilities are endless. Oh my god. Just imagine them living in the wilds. They're like the wild horses of like the a dog world. And they may not even have clothing, okay? Realistically, actually, why? I just realized, why are they just wearing shirts but no pants? Right? Isn't that weird? Wait, that's so weird. So you cover your. So you covered the boobas, right? But then your butthole is always there available. I guess, you know what? I take that back. They need to display the butthole because they need to sniff the butthole as a greeting. Genius. I know, dog. Living your... Li living your married life with the proud dogs? Ha ha ha. It's been so many years, but you can't come up with new jokes? Old habits die hard. Jeez, I guess it's still kind of funny. Makes my stomach hurt kind of funny. It's hurting in a bad way. Uh, damn, I thought I'd, I'd lived a decade in peace away from these jokes from the island. I deserve this, seeing as you used to make fun of the prods with even more gusto. With real venom, too. What, is it, what are prods? I didn't get the joke, I'm sorry. I am... I am... I uh, am Timmy of the, ta of the TAP clan. My superior, Monokai, has summoned you on behalf of Master Ayu. I knew I shouldn't have wanted down a deserted alley. I knew I shouldn't have wanted down a deserted alley even, even if it was a shortcut to the MRT station I'm so fed up with all this mediocrity around me it's poisoning me dragging me down what well, I have the luck of ending up here I deserve better no matter the cost I will escape from here 
I only get 204. 29 years ago. Day 5. Arena 5. Day 4. Yo, that's a nice arena. You sure you don't need help? You sure you don't need any help in carrying that boss? Actually, could you help me with half of it? I grinned sheepishly and hoist parts of the sticks I was carrying on my back to her. Thanks so much, Ayu. No problem. Continue on in comfortable silence. Back to what we had dubbed the beach house. It's pretty quiet here, situated in the sparse forest over overlooking the ocean. Short palm trees dot the island, which is actually quite vast. We picked this location because it's relatively secluded from both sides by a half basin. Strangely, it doesn't seem like other dogs come to our side of the island often, but when we go further north along the coast, we can usually find them. And of course, eliminate them. We've had pretty good luck with that so far. Back at the beach house, we set down the fruits and sticks that we had foraged. Sticks go on the pile next to the door, while fruits go on the plates, which are really just wooden planks. Going through the motions of foraging and eating, it doesn't seem like we're hunting each other to a, in, a, in a race to the top. After all, a dog doesn't need to be in the first place. Making it to the top five would be good enough to proceed in, in a competitive bracket. However, I doubt these prod dogs are really thinking that far. <laughs> uh, why do my parents have to move here? I, you, and I eat fruits in silence. My ears are alert in case any intruders decide to pay a visit. This is some insane ASMR. Do you hear this? Let me maximize ASMR. Wait. Mmm, yeah. Ooh, yeah, delicious ASMR. Yeah, real delicious ASMR. What do dogs like to eat? B besides everything. Uh, doggy snack. Oh, that's a good photo. That's a great photo. That is a... Wait, I need to get one photo that is not copyright. Doggy snack. This is... I'm just... I know this is a weird bit to do, but like, I can't help myself. But also, I kind of regret it because the licking is getting intense. This does sound like a real dog, though. This is exactly what our dog sounds like when she's like drinking water as well. It's pretty cute. Sorry, I'm just trying to find a picture of a, of a, of a dog snack. Dog treat. Oh, the ASMR stopped. Oh man, the bit's ruined. All right. Well, I was too. I was too slow. <clears throat> I, you, and I eat the fruits of science. My ears are on alert in case any intruders decide to pay a visit. The next part of our routine is to take a walk east around the coast. Tying things up and putting away our plates, we close up the beach house and trot towards the beach. The sand flows and shifts pleasantly under my paws, making a soothing, trickling sound. With deliberate steps, I allow the sand to cover my paws, enjoying the sensation of the particles running between my claws. In a shallow area of the water, there sit rocks covered with sea, sea lichen, with interesting cavities from erosion by the waves. Ayu hops around on them, and I follow, the waves la lapping at my feet. She leaps off one of the rocks, submerging herself fully in the water, fear bobbing up and yanking me down with her. I yap in surprise, but quickly shut my mouth as I am plunged into the water. Bubbles burst all around me, and I flow my limbs to float upwards. The light shimmers under the water, and I see seaweed and coral painting a colorful black backdrop in the ocean before I emerge with a gas of air. <laughs> it's deeper here than, than, than it looks. I splash Ayu with water, she sticks a tongue out playfully at me before she treads away, paddling with her front limbs. I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you back for this. We proceed to have a lengthy water fight before we head back on shore. Uh, it's almost like I'm not gonna kill you. Alright, time to get serious. I reach up to my face and pretend to adjust imaginary sunglasses, a gesture which she returns. It's a ritual of, of sorts, which just can naturally come into place. Wait, they have glasses? A sign of teamwork and camaraderie, mutually acknowledging the good work we've done over the last two, two days. Two days ago. Day five, I mean day two in Arena 5. I pin the yapping dog down in the sand. I don't fear the attacker though, simply holding her in place. Call the respite before the real pain begins. Ayu, who had been hiding just in the line of palm trees, comes bounding out. 
She joins me about the pin victim, taking a huge swipe at her neck. Oh my god. Oh, she broke the appendant. Nice. The body that had been pinning down slowly dissolves into ashes, its particles floating into the air. Ayu and I watch it disappear. It's as if a living being wasn't here just seconds ago. I hold out a paw towards Ayu and she meets it with a, with a high five. Sweet. That's an another one down. Hell yeah. I put the paw up to my face, pretending to adjust an imaginary pair of sunglasses. Ha, <laughs> we're so good at this. She mimics my movement, a smile as smug as mine on, on her face. Where to now, boss? <laughs> Don't call me that. Well, uh, let's keep going clockwise down the coast. I'm gonna find an area that looks good to set up camp. We walk what seems like a couple hours until the evening, not encountering any of the dogs. Kind of strange. Let me feel a dog since we started heading southwest. Well, it does seem that all we all spawned in the same area. Sorry, I'm just adjusting volume. Well, it does seem that we all spawned on the island in the same area, around the northeast shore of the island. Weirdly, I keep having a dream that instead of spawning, we would drop into the arena from a flying bus. Yeah, this is this is okay. Yeah, this is definitely a battle royale, dude. Imagine, imagine if Fortnite got this real, right? I would kind of be down for it. Not okay, just. To, to clarify, I'm not down for a caste system that discriminates against those who are lower rank. I am down to crank 90s on some people, floating down from a bus in like AR, you know? I'm, I'm actually down. Anyhow, it seems that there aren't many dogs that bother exploring the island further. Or teaming up for that matter. What if they expect to do well or even plan to? Like you said, we're proud dogs. I don't think it's something we really think about. I'm glad you're special in that regard though. It's strange being the only non-prod dog here. I take her paws in mine. But I know you want this as badly as I do. We'll rank top tier in this arena to see to a good bracket, which we deserve. Ayu nods vigorously and gives me a determined smile. Continue our way and decide to head deeper into the forge where it gets too dark to see. And stuck with have it, we stumble across a small hut. We double check the, uh, the perimeter, checking for signs of inhabitants. With me at the rear as backup, Ayu then charges inside. Turns out there's no one inside, and so we make it a temporary base. Next day, we forage further down the island, but don't find any more dogs. We could haul supplies and bring them back to the hut. Two more days pass. We continue using the hut. We decided it would be a waste to not use it as a long-term base, and name it the Beach House. So back to day four, which was before day five. I'm in the Beach House, drafting up a rough map of the island if we explored it, and locations where we had spotted dogs. Of course, I also have my markers where we eliminate dogs, to the best of my memory. It really seems that they don't care that much, and they treat this like some sort of resort or playground brawl at most. I didn't want to believe it, but it seems prod dogs only have brawn on their side. As any good dog will know, this has n that has never been enough to go far in historical arenas. I take a final look at the map, proud of my work. My thoughts are interrupted by knocking on the door. So knocking panel and I agreed on with Ayu to verify our identity. You know, whenever we enter the beach house. I should be more vigilant of my surroundings. I mean outside the beach house to check for activity since she went on patrol. Even if I didn't hear anything suspicious, I should be more proactive and not treat this like some urban office. I expected Ayu enters and first thing I notice is her flustered expression. Immediately I am concerned. Does she have an encounter? Was she followed back here? Boss, boss, I saw something bad. She pauses, catching her breath. Tell me everything. I straighten up, waiting for her to calm down and gather her thoughts. I saw two dogs that would team up and eliminate another. They were actively on the hunt and seemed very strong. I'm worried. Huh, got it. Thank dog, I thought it might have been something worse. Did, did they notice you? I don't think so, but I think they could track me down if they want to. They had a pretty elaborate system set up, just like us. Alright then. As long as I didn't spot you, there's nothing to worry about. But like I said, they're definitely a threat. It's the first time I've seen any other coordinated teamwork on this island. Look, I know it's surprising to see some intelligent behavior for once, but don't sweat it. We're all anthropo anthrop anthropomorphic dogs with the intelligence of sapient humans. It's fine. If we run into them, just deal with it like we planned. The same way we eliminated those in individual dogs? Yes, that's right. But I tell you, it's different. Like you said, I'm the boss, am I not? Do as you're told, then. Yes, boss. She trots off, ears drooping. That's messed up. Sid, come on. You'll, you don't know if it's like easy or not. Come on. 
Ah, maybe I was too harsh. I see where she's coming from. Cloud Dogs are usually born in families that never had higher rankings, so of course they don't know much about arenas or even know about the benefits of winning. Of course, they don't have much cause to study the past arenas to come up with the strategies before par. Such a waste because the key to becoming a good dog lies just under the noses. If only they make an effort. Maybe a blessing that my parents came to the plains. That's why I ended up competing with the Proud Dogs. So the fact that some Proud Dogs have to team up, it's nothing to worry about. Day 5, back to the present. The day after, we go on a daily sailing trip. I was quite unusual, and the air hangs silent without a usual playful banter. She's still worried about what she saw yesterday. A little worry, I guess. And something there's much more I can say to persuade her otherwise. I have to make the best of what I have, and currently that is Ayu. Plus, there are fewer dogs left now. It makes sense that the remaining opponents will be more of a threat. Can't afford to mess around like before. No more playing in the water. No more holding our paws together in the sand. No more staying deeply into each other's eyes. Ayu, I don't have time for you, Ayu. Maybe there will be. F Maybe there will finally be an actual challenge. Never mind. We're back on the beach. Forget everything I said. We're going back to the beach. We're gonna play in the sand again. We round the bend of the shoreline to a usual relaxing spot on the ocean rocks, and I try to cheer Ayu, Ayu up. Ayu, look, water! Ah, I'm drowning. I hop on the rocks, reaching out to her with a paw. Hey, you want to take a break? Sure. You say so, boss. Gee, I feel that. Gee, I feel. I, I feel bad that you call me boss when you say it with such a low spirit. Because she seems to have lightened up a little. And hop around splashing the wallet just like any other day. Say, boss. Yeah, are you? I know you said not to worry about the other dogs, but I'm kind of scared. Oh, I guess you had that on your mind. But what is it exactly that you're afraid of? What makes them a threat? Look, can you list all your reasons to me? I try to be patient and understanding. I remember the slow professional cadence that my mom uses when she speaks on the phone. Sounds pretty so soothing to me. I don't know, they're, they're just so scary. And like, why do we have to do this? She plops down on a rock, not mind that I slightly submerged in water. That's pretty cute, actually. Just imagine, right? Like a dog with just its butt inside the water. Like a tiny bit. And, it, and like dogs, they like do this like wiggle when they sit, sit down. They, they like wiggle their like butt at the right they get really comfortable, right? So imagine her like wiggling into to her rock seat in, in the water. God, these dogs are so cute. I need to stop calling them cute. They're living beings. They have emotions and opinions. Do dogs... Do real life dogs have opinions? Oh my god. Wait, do real life dogs have opinions? Oh my god. I guess they do, right? Because some dogs like different things. Oh my god. Wait, what an epiphany. I, 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 I believe what you said about this being the key to having the life that a good dog deserves. I know there's more for you to experience beyond what I currently have. But is this really for me? I'm just a prod dog. With that, she covers her face in a pause. I hear her sniffling. My patience is being tested, by the way, for her crying to subside a little before adjusting her concerns. My patience is being tested? That's messed up. Where's her, where's her empathy? That seems so cruel, and I feel like a decision is um, coming up. Also, BRB. This is a big BRB. I may, I'll be back in like 20 minutes. Sorry, I have, to, I have to go and use the washroom really quick for like a while. I'll be back in 20 minutes. Back to the game. 11 out of 10 would rate that poop higher. Agreed. My patience is being tested, but I wait for her to cry. Oh, yeah. Sid was being an asshole. It's like, dude, like, why are you waiting? For, like, why is your patience being tested? Like, you shouldn't, like, your patience shouldn't be tested. You should be like, hey, like, you know, empathetic, sympathetic to her plight, her feelings. Look, all I know is that I want to go back from, to, from where I came from. When I was just born, I lived in a city full of lights. Life there is so much better, and the arena is designed so any dog can live that life. No matter your litter, the arena is a completely fair environment for everyone to get the life they deserve. It's a perfect equalizing mechanism, IU. So, okay, it's weird that she says that, right? She says that every dog deserves, and yet there are winners. If every dog deserves such a good life, every dog would be given it. Similar vein, similar idea to something like you, like a, a UBI, a universal basic in income, right? And if everybody deserves it, why wouldn't they just give it to everybody? The, the, the truth is, that's just a lie that they tell you, right? They're facilitating a competition. It's so easy. All you need to do is kill some dogs in the arena. Well, technically, you don't even kill them. Just destroy their pendants in a virtual world. As long as dogs do this, they can come on the top in the equalizing mechanism. 
That's what I want, Ayu. And now is not the time to be showing weakness if you want it too. I pat her shoulder. This looks like- Okay, this does not look like I'm, I'm, I'm patting her shoulder. This looks like I'm, I'm going up to like whisper in her ears like, Don't fuck this up for me, Ayu. I swear to God, Ayu, don't fuck this up for me. I will get the life I deserve, whether you're there or not. You know what I mean? Like she's like, she's like threatening her. Look, I know that you still want this. And in return, I want you to trust that I can get us through the arena no matter what. We're a team. Ayu doesn't respond, so I grip her shoulder and shake her. It is really bad timing for my arena partner to be in such a low of spirits. Say it with me. We'll get through this together. We'll get through this together. That's the spirit. Alright. Let's get back to the beach. We can, we can chill some more. Take your time. I'll go in the water. Come join me. I don't really feel like it. It's fine. You don't have to. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be back in a bit. Yeah. Leaving her to mope, I dive into the water. The water is clear, shimmering in the light. I dive deeper, following the rock outward and away from the shore. Left paw, right paw, both paws, underwater doggy paddle. What should I do next? Underwater doggy paddle. That circle is perfect. Both paws. What should I do next? Underwater doggy paddle. That felt great. Left paw. I'm feeling boundless. Right paw. What the? A voice slams into me from above. Wait. Oh. <gasps> the air is knocked out of me, and I reel under the pain in my side, throbbing. Throbbing. I feel paws scuffling and grabbing me. Grinching around my neck. My mind barely pieces together the fact that this is the same dog that dived on top of me. I struggle and kick the water, twisting my torso. The dog, who I can now see is larger than me, scrabbles around my neck and pours it with his paws. I know exactly what he's trying to find. I draw up my hind legs and kick into him, propelling myself away. However, there's a splash, and another dog dives into the, into the water from, from above. This one misses by some distance though, since it failed to knock into me with the dive, like the first dog did. Where on earth did they come from? I didn't see any dogs on the rocks when Ayu and I were still there, she betrayed- Wait! Oh my god, I'm trolling. Oh my god. Ayu was one of the dogs with them too. I forgot, the other dog that was with us that died in the forest earlier was like- Oh, was Olen. Oh my god. I misunderstood and misremembered entirely. This is not a story of Ayu's death and who she was. This is the story of how she betrayed me. I took the chance to propel myself up to the surface, breaking it with a small splash. Ayu! 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 Sorry, my voice is clipping. I had to lower the volume. I waste no time barking for Ayu. The smaller dog bursts out the water as well, just a few paws reach away. We both make a beeline for each other, and I take a huge swipe at the chest. She twists away, but that's a small move that I wanted to see, lured out with, with my feints. Her paw reaching up to shield an area of her clothes. <laughs> big mistake. She swipes at me as well, but like my first swipe has no real target to, to pinpoint. Of course, I had hidden my pen as well within my clothes. I know not to shield it and reveal its location unless it's at real risk of being hit. I response, I lunge in for the kill. Sorry, fixing the sound. I realize now just how loud this uh, game is. It's clipping. Definitely clipping. Oh god, quick save. Oh god, save. Oh god, preferences. Oh yes, here we go. Sorry. I know it's a bit of a break and an like, exciting moment, but... You have to understand. The sound is loud. There we go. There we go. Good. In response, I lunge in for the kill. I have you. My paws connect with something hard under her shirt. Oh! <gasps> Bingo. Boss! Boss! Just in time, I see Ayu up on the ledge looking down at us. Not to find the smallest Shiba Inu, the larger dog that I initially escaped from seems to have retreated. I see no sign of him. 
probably a good choice as he obviously saw that his companion had been eliminated. I wave up to Ayu. Hey, how's it going? Are you alright? Yeah, I'm good. Just had a little water fight with some new friends. I'll be right up. Ayu, watch out! <gasps> Figure knocks into Ayu and I can see that it's the first larger dog that ambushed me. How did he even get back up there? The rocks are so steep. Ayu is scuffling with the dog. He's trying to pin her down but she's putting up a good fight. Ayu, jump into the water now! Ayu uses her hind legs to push the enemy off before rolling and twisting straight off the cliff. She lands with a splash. However, the opponent, who heard my command as well, follows suit. Oh god, sorry. The volume is still peaking. Very peaking. Here we go. Great, he's taking the bait. Above water, I would probably be in a sticky situation. Although I have seen him fight off larger dogs. However, now that it's 2 versus 1, he stands no chance. I'm certain of that. Ayu, stay under the water for as long as you can. Ayu obeys, and with that, we both dive down. <laughs> Must be quite confusing for a mystery attacker here. But he won't be around for long enough to figure this out. Following us, he dives down and lunges for Ayu. I paddle closer, but leave Ayu to her own devices as she battles one-on-one -on -one with the attacker. After quick observation, I figure out where his pendant is located. It's not like it's a creative hiding spot. I can clearly see that it's in his jacket pocket. I still don't offer Ayu any help, so I'm being at a good vantage point behind the opponent's back. But I use this positioning for another reason, gesturing for her to come back up to the surface. The opponent can't see, but I know Ayu did. The reason to break surface again is that in the water, I think Ayu has enough strength to break the enemy's pendant. Our fur combined with the skinny she our fur combined with skinny Shiba Inu limbs make it too difficult to get a good hit on the water. But as Ayu and he break for the air, I make my move. Killed him! Holy shit, nice. Good execution. Good good job, Sid. Perfect timing. Ayu is as cheerful as ever. The source of her previous anxiety over the arena proved completely wrong. At least that's what I hope. It was the first time we defeated two dogs and once, boss. Pa, just like that, and they were eliminated. Yeah, well, I have to admit their strategy was pretty sound. I can't believe they, well, they found that little cave in the rocks that was slight, just slightly above water. Also, they must be tracking us for a while and waiting for us. Yeah, they totally figured out our routine. It was amazing that you held them off for so long. <laughs> Thanks to you that we managed to get them both. We would have lost in a fair fight. You just somehow knew exactly what to do. And Moan, I had no idea why you told me to dive in the water. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Music volume. Just need to get it just right. There we go. Perfect. But I'm glad it worked out, boss. Yeah, if you took time to question anything, nothing would have gone well this entire arena. <laughs> Uh, and with that, we head back to the beach house. We silently agreed to stop patrolling the shore for the day. Yeah, I, why are they even patrolling, actually? Why don't they just, like, do the patrolling but while, like, hiding, right? Otherwise, you just reveal yourself all the time. As the days pass, Ayu and I explore other parts, other parts of the arena. We eliminate some dogs on the way, but eventually we encounter no more. After another couple days, it seems like there are only two more dogs left on the island. We spotted the two from afar, but we guess it's their base of operations. It's further north in the arena. Closer to the original spawn points than the beach house. While they don't seem to have a structure like the beach house, we've observed them circle often circling a set area. It's like the domain. Ayu and I decide not to venture closer until we have a sounder strategy. We refer to them as a second duo, as they are the second organized pair in the entire arena we've seen. That is, apart from Ayu and myself. Wait, what? That's not right, is it? We just we just fought a duo. So they're the third organized hero. I don't explain why the arena's emulated reality hasn't been terminated yet. But this dog darn island is too vast to force us into an encounter. Well, they, they need a circle. They need a closing circle, right? Like a storm. That would mean that either those two or the first duo had been picking off dogs. I, you and I had eliminated a fair amount, but judging by the numbers, we can only take credit for eliminating around a third of the actual... Okay, look, if everybody's... You know what it is? When you drop into a Fortnite lobby, right? Or an Apex Legends lobby, like any Battle Royale lobby, and you have every player, every single team, and you have the three squads at the top that, are, that, that consist of like the most popular streamers and ex-pros and like current pros, and you get shit on by them, right? You may get lucky to get one el elimination, then you see them at the very end, and they, and, and they get like 20, and it's like, how? That's that. 
I even nice up some traps and sound makers near my base. After all, the first duo had their high, shore side hideout figured out, so it's fair that anyone could have found the beach house as well. I mean, it's literally a building in the middle of nowhere. It's pretty obvious, no? Of course, it's not like me to plan to only plan a defense. I, you, and I set up making an offensive plan too. We don't want to be caught off guard like last time. But it's good that Ayu is in higher spirits, and as loyal as ever, at, as ever, doing anything I say with, without question. It's often the pair that is determined to make it till the end together that do well in the early arenas. It's only arena 5 for me, so the ranks are in batches. That means since, I'm all, since I am already one of the last 5 remaining dogs, we all get the same score. But of course, I still, survive, I still aim to survive till the end in this arena, and I'm very, very excited for the upcoming arenas. From my understanding, starting from Arena 6, it's individual rankings that matter, meaning each dog you outlive counts. Okay, Day 8. So day after we last confirmed the second duel's base, and Ayu and I are getting ready to shepherd them into a trap. I'm really excited to execute the plan, and finally test out my mind in this arena. What? Test out your mind? What does that mean? It's too risky to set up a trap right by the, by the camp as we could be discovered at any time. So we set it up somewhere further, which is the direction we'll herd them to. Sorry, you may hear me fixing the mic really quick. Oh god, I moved it by accident. Once preparations are done, I, you and I split up. She is the decoy, and I will wait for a signal to proceed on my part of the strategy. I, I hope everything works out as planned. Not that I don't have some contingency plans up my collar, but... A number of situations could happen. Like, what if they just gave birth to... to... Sid? You're supposed to be a genius. Sid, how did you ever win? How did my, our, our character ever get to the very end and like win? Wait, how long does it take to make it like a like a puppy? It's like it's like months, right? Sid, come on. It would, be, it would be two against four. Anything could happen. Anything. They could have given birth to like six, a whole litter. It'd be eight versus one. Eight versus two. I wouldn't have accounted for that in a million other scenarios. So my thoughts kept racing. Without rhyme or reason. It seems like the stress of the last few days is getting to me. Really? I just want to get this over with. Though if I don't have the discipline to be patient until the end, do I really deserve to survive? I'm surprised you survived in the first place. I'm lying behind some shrubs, waiting, waiting. Finally, I hear some commotion. About time. I know something delayed the window of opportunity for Ayu to act, but no big deal. I trust that she waited for the best timing. It sounds like the, the dogs are heading my way. Time for action. Ayu comes bounding bounding into view. Faster than the heels are. Wait a second. These are some of the largest Shiba Inu teams I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh my god, it's oh my god, it's the school bullies, isn't it? The six foot nine monsters. When Ayu and I have observed them from afar, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. But now, as they run side by side with Ayu, I can see that they're huge. Could it be they're Akita Inus? Oh no. The forbidden Akita Inus on Shiba Island? What are Akita Inus doing here? There's a small population of Akita Inus on the island. Though often mistaken for Shiba Inus in terms of appearance, Akita Inus are much larger in terms of size. They also have their own arena bracket due to the physical difference, the top performers of which then compete with the middle tier of Shiba Inus. Oh my god. Holy crap. So their top tier competes with, with the middle of us? Wait, so they're so the, so, so trash? Oh, because there are more of us. Never mind, sorry. The Akira's historically don't make it much further, the highest being around the 70th percentile in the final rankings. I never thought I'd have to face an Akita. This completely throws off my plan. I mean, you have barbed wire, I guess, they're everywhere, so those dogs are gonna get, like, cut up really bad. Jesus Christ, they were right to that trap. In this area of the forest, we had laid a web of tripwires to capture the enemy, while I could come in and join Ayu. Being the fastest dog out of the two of us, of course Ayu was the bait. Of course Ayu had the trap memorized so she could bypass them with these. Ayu and I set traps at a height that would trip most Shiba Inus. As it was, Ayu has to jump over some of them. The Akita Inus were only slightly hindered by the tripwires. Now that Ayu knows that things are not going according to plan, she must be waiting for my instructions. So why am I so indecisive? It's as if time is frozen. 
actually come up with solutions to win, but my train of thought keeps hitting a wall. I try and gather my thoughts, but the wall resists me. It looms up over me while I stand small underneath it. My only idea is stall. K.I.U. So this works. For the sake of you and me both. To the clearing! Terrified as I you seem, she makes a small nod. When we watch helplessly, she dashes around the two dogs, brought back into the trap zone that we now know won't work against the Akita opponents. The enemies must have heard me, and I'm still hiding in the shrubs, they don't see the ball stopping and to find me. I hope for them to split up. My heart sinks. This would be a true 2 on 2. I dash out from my hiding place and give chase. Of course, I'm not getting much distance on the two Akitas as well as the physically fit Ayu. Ayu buys me time, taking more of a zigzag route, allowing me to close the distance in a straight line. Holy hell, look at the size of this thing, dude. Its chest is like twice the size of Sid's chest. It's huge. Even its neck is a, a way chonkier. Oh my god, it's a chonker. <gasps> One of them was behind the shoulder, swallowing me. Oh no. Ah, there's another runt. Ignore it. You said the first one. She's running towards that clearing. It'll be an easy pick. No, no, they're gonna crank 90s on her. They're gonna crank 90s on IU. It's my fault for them cranking 90s on IU. Oh, no, they're cranking 90s on her. She'll be fine, alright? I believe she'll be, she'll be great, you know? Just don't, don't get cranked on. <sighs> How could things turn all alright this time? Despite the fleeting but compelling thought to turn tail and run, I press on towards the clearing where IU must be already. Thank goodness that the, the trap zone at least slowed them down. My mind is working better now after the bout of anxiety. Ayu and I are smaller, but we are more nimble. The clearing Ayu slays down the two dogs with advance on her. With no time left to waste, I run up and try to bite down on one dog's tail. I need to figure out, sorry, a, a good volume. One more final messing around with the volume. Then I'll stop messing around because this is a very pivotal moment. And I really don't want to miss it, but the volume has to be like just perfect. There we go. Done. With no time left to waste, I run up and try to bite down on one dog's tail. Oi, you! You were around to face me and I showed you the attack first. The surprise factor buys us a few seconds. I make eye contact with Ayu and start barking pointedly at the Akita Inu on the left. Hopefully Ayu understands. I want to focus on the brown coated one first. Who's the one I'm barking at? When we whittle down the numbers, there may be hope. Got a real temper, you. Got a real temper, you. Oh! The brown coated one pounces on me and the larger one on Ayu. I flatten my body and dash to the side. The dog misses. From the way they wordlessly divided their work, they have a good report. Take that, you! She takes another swipe at me, which I dodge again. This goes on for several times. Occasionally glancing at Ayu, I see she is dodging the attacks, but the size of the enemy makes it difficult for her to find an opening to join me. How are they so bad at this? Maybe they're trying to tire, to tire us out. Or maybe it's because... You do seem like brawn types after all. Let's test this. So how come Akita's like you are in our arena? Not answering that. <laughs> What's the harm? They just show up to our arenas. Forget it wouldn't matter. Was able to skip some of them, but one day dogs from the ARI showed up at the door. So a few Akita brackets had already progressed pretty far. They had to put us with the Shivas. They still got around us. My legs are starting to feel sore. I know I can't keep, keep this up for, for much longer. I have an idea. I yap at Ayu, dashing back towards the trap area. I'm tying one end of a tripwire, I duck and hide. Ayu rounds the trees, the two in pursuit. The white one lags slightly behind. I take the chance. What do I do? I run out quickly circling the dog and pulling the wire around her. Oh my god. I'm going to I'm going to like do the hitman mono wire around her throat thing, aren't I? Jesus Christ. Dude, this is this is this, this is what Hitman does when he's trying to get rid of like, this is like Agent Forty Seven getting rid of like a high prior, high value target, right? This is this is insane. Like the the head's gonna fly off. She yaps, but falls to her side, all limbs all tangled up. Oh, sorry. Yeah, never mind. It's just her limbs, not her neck. I jump on her and attack her torso. I claw and scrape her body as if I'm digging for a hole on the ground. I just grate something solid. I hope it's a pendant. What could have been a clean hit only missed because she twisted her body in the other direction. <laughs> you missed! Well, now I know I had been aiming at, at the correct spot. She didn't have to announce that I would have hit her pendant. However, she starts wiggling in the bindings and, and I don't have time to spare. 
Ah! I'm trying to strain the holder. She kicks off the wires. You're not gonna catch me. She gleefully leaps upright but tumbles to the ground again. I you to circle back and is biting the enemy's tail with all her might, holding her briefly in various place. Now's my chance! Oh! Yes! Only one left to go. Where is he though? Did Ayo give him the slip? Now it's two for various versus one. I have just a plan to, to, uh, to, to take him down. Ayu, hold this end of the wire. If we run fast enough, his head will slice clean off. Ayu, behind you! Oh, I wince as he pounces straight for Ayu. Thankfully, Ayu dodges him. No time to waste. I yank at another tripwire, but the tide is not. Sid, help! I glance over. Ayu's tail is pinned by the other dog. She struggles in vain, but only succeeds in yanking on her own tail. Not enough time. I stay put, ignoring Ayu's yelps. I just need this tripwire to come free. Have more moments, I untie the knot. I run towards the dog just as he takes a fatal swipe at Ayu. No, Ayu! She locks eyes with me as she dissolves. Bo! There's so much pain in her expression. It is the face of realizing that I didn't come back for her on purpose. It's too late for her. And it's too late for me to have any regrets. And with that, I trip up the other dog and wrap up and wrap the wire around his legs. Now. Damn. He okay, what is with Sid? She sacrifices everybody that she knows that she cares about just to win. Is winning worth it? Is it worth it? Huh? Island Year 224, Arena 5, Day 1. Wait, 224. This is the year when we did the arena with um. Wait, no, this, this is the current year. Oh my god, I got, oh my god, I got sent into an arena in a deserted alley. I, I forgot. I know I shouldn't have wandered down the deserted alley, even if it was a shortcut to the MIT station. The island denizens are so unkind to me. One of their own. Will I be able to survive this arena again? Oh, I feel ashamed to face Ayu. I don't go by the beach house. With the re-challenge of Arena 9, I bide my time. But I observe from Hey Fen's re-challenges that the dogs, that me and her, only act like how they would in the past unless told otherwise. I know the head of Ayu, I'm... I know that the head of Ayu, but I'm sure she could also figure that out. Hey Fen figured it out quickly since it was obvious that the fan she in the re-challenge couldn't be the real one. My strategy this time is wait for Ayu to appear since she should be the only actor I should care about. So I've been mostly following the coastline avoiding the mainland. It's passive for me, but hey, not bothering with the NPCs having to work out in Hey Fen's re-challenge. Thing is, what to do once Ayu and I find each other? I'll slay her with my light and fast reflexes. That's just wishful thinking. The best bet is to find her before she finds me and keep her from noticing me until I eliminate her somehow. Ah, she's always been the one with the sharp re -re reflexes. But I'm also more mature and wiser now. I've seen enemies much smarter and more agile as, I, as, I, as I've experienced more arenas. If I go head to head against Hoshiba Inos and win, I can go against Ayu. Ah, dog, but it's all out of practice. I argue on and on with myself. The strange sensibility of mind that came with being a regular arena contestant had all but left me. And had to be coaxed into a calm state. Day 5. Several days pass without progress. What if Ayu is also waiting for me to come to her? I wonder if there's a time limit for the re-challenges. We both agreed not to end the arena and spend the eternity doing different things. Theoretically, I could write several books in here if given enough time. Sorry, just a bit lower. Like here, there we go. But I'd rather speed up the process. There are other things to be done, and I need to return to Max and Quayley. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. If time in here is like a hyperbolic time chamber, and it goes slower than in reality, why don't they just do this for like everything, right? Like, Im imagine, you put all your smartest scientists into a hyperbolic time chamber, and in, in like two days, they've they've solved the mysteries of the universe. Why don't they just do that? I guess I should make- why don't they use it for like a battle royale? Dogs. Given sapience- uh, uh, given sapience. Given sentience. Given the ability to think and build a society of their own, they make the same mistakes that, that we did. The only improvement is that they've moved on from doorknobs. I guess I should make more effort, time to venture further inland. But that decided, I head into the palm forest.
The bright summer sun bakes on my fur. Spice, the spice palms not offering much in terms of shade. It's much hotter. I mean, now I realize that the water by the beach has kept the area cool. I think about the beach house. It's one of my favorite safe houses out of all the arenas I've been through. Perhaps it was also the fact that I freely trusted another dog at the time that made the beach house a good memory. Oh, no. Each one that we face, every single one, we deal with a, with a, with a portion of our past. This past, we left Ayu, the guilt of leaving her behind. The first one, the, the, the guilt of, of killing Fan Hei. Fan He. Fan, what was his name? Fan something. Oh no. I got more jaded with each subsequent arena. There are times when I think back and ask myself, what would I change if I get the chance to? I never answer myself the same way. One day, I would think, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Another day, another mindset, I would think that my actions were perfectly justified. There was no resounding consensus. What I do know is I still feel shame and guilt about my past in the arenas. But because of the results I got from my behavior covered by others, it was easy to trick myself in that everything was but a necessary sacrifice. From the corner of my eye, I glimpsed a blur of movement. It's Ayu! This can't be good. I wasn't prepared. <gasps> I need to buy some time! I run back onto the beach. You know, this was a bad idea with the rocks and sand. To so slow down, Ayu was catching up to me. I throw myself sideways to avoid her lunch. I quickly turn the face her so I'm not caught off guard again from the side. Her eyes meet, and it pains me to hold her gaze. Ayu doesn't make another move, nor does she speak. Not wasting the moment of peace, I'm back with several steps, all the while beatily watching her. I'm tempted to say something snarky, but considering the circumstances, I don't think she would appreciate that. If anything, she deserves to say the first snarky comment to me. Wow, Sita's character development. So, hello? That sounded so bad. Look, look, I'm not gonna fight you. Ayu sits down, her posture open and relaxed. There must be a catch though, right? I just want to talk. Well, what do you want to talk about? I just want to say, you're a horrible dog! You re challenge me just to say that? But you're right, it's true. Can't you even pretend to understand? For one moment? Dogs don't always do something with some high and mighty reason, Sid. I'll bet that y even you can't name a reason for every single thing that you do. Actually, I consider a main scheme of things. I don't think that's what she wants to hear, though. No, you're right about that. <laughs> At least you can admit to that. Listen, I know we were really, really young when this whole thing happened. But when I got the IM that we'd be able to challenge you one-on-one, -on -one, I immediately wanted in. You wanna know why? Her tone is gruff. And I- Wait, 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 hold on. Wait, 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 She got an instant message saying she can challenge us? Wait, where's the instant message coming from? Is it? Oh my god. I wonder if it come- if it came from the ARI. Maybe it's retribution for like, why did you take the feather? Oh! <gasps> Maybe. Oh my god. Her tone is gruff and I get the feeling she's not quite getting to the point yet. You want to prove how you changed since then? Well, yes, son. No. I still haven't forgotten about what happened during that arena. Yeah, that much I can tell. So is, re is revenge what you want? Ha! <laughs> when you put it like that. But I wouldn't say that. I just want to understand. Even though I'm not sure if that's possible. What is it that you want to understand? I still haven't made peace with the arenas. It's not about you in particular. I was hoping that coming into, coming into an arena once again, after my ranking had been finalized, could... I guess shed some light, looking at it retroactively. I realized that even though I went through the motions of the arenas, and even didn't end up doing too badly, I still felt so lost. I don't know what any of this means to me. This arena was the last time I remember feeling something for myself. Oh. Because she felt something for us. Oh, thank god, okay. It's not because of you. It's mostly that I was still young, and my understanding of the world was so certain, so optimistic. When they mentioned the re-challenge, I wondered if somehow I could find that feeling again. 
I have no idea how to spawn here, but I've got to be smooth. Not to mention, it's pretty jarring. I haven't spoken in years that she's pouring her heart out all of a sudden. What have you found so far being back in the arena? So far? Nothing. See, my plan was to come to terms with what happened between us. But that couldn't happen until you and I met, met again, no? Oh. Yeah, th that makes sense. This is so awkward. Like, did you want to talk more about it? Are you suggesting that we talk more about it? Yeah, if you want to. To be honest, I hadn't thought about that. My plan was... A force slams into me from behind, winding. Aw, oh, man, it's the playthrough again. It's, it, you know, because they're NPCs, so they're acting out again. <gasps> the attacker and I fall into the water. I reel under the pain, my side throbbing. I feel paws scuffling and grabbing me, inching around my neck. My mind barely pieces together the fact that this is the same dog that dived on top of me. I struggle and kick the water, twisting my torso. There's a splash, and then another dog dives into the water from above. This one misses me by some distance, though, since it failed to knock into me with the dive, like the first dog did. It was a pair of dogs that had ambushed me in the arena in the past. Ayu! Did she... Oh my god, wait, I know his pendant location, but I can't take two, right? But what happened in the original? Oh god, I forget what happened in the original. She came in to save us, right? I'm pretty sure she came in... No, she was up on the cliff. She was up on the cliff. So, I know his pendant location, and I can eliminate him. What if we change things? What if we change things? What if I run away immediately? Let's save. I, I, I just need to know what this happens. Or, or what this causes. Even though I know where the pendants of both dogs are, so my memory is correct, it's safer to escape. And I'm outnumbered, and don't want to risk IU getting the upper paw. Exact same timing as the past arena. They do act like NPCs. I kick out behind me at the enemy. Repelled by my kick, I knock into the accomplice head on, four legs stretched. Then wrapping my four legs around her to hold it still, I twist my body and throw it towards the first opponent, who has also pro propelled himself after me. They collide, and I fiercely paddle away. With that distraction, I'm able to put some distance between me and the, and the competing dogs. Kicking and pawing my way to the surface, I paddle as quickly as I can towards the shore. We've got to make it there alive! Once on shore, I don't even bother shaking myself dry. My claws tear into the sand, and I push my legs to the limit as I dash towards what I know to be the base of the remaining arena co com competitors. The second duel, Ayu and I had called them. The second duel, I and I had, had, had called them, the Akita Inus. Entering the sparse palm forest, I can't afford to slow down. Twisting and churning my way around the palm trunks, I almost slipped several times with my velocity. I must be close now. I slow down to a trot to try to conceal myself, so I won't be caught off guard if the two Akitas catch me first. Da! Oh, oh no no, they're here already. There they are. So, either I, you, or the other, or both should be on my tracks. The difficult part comes with not knowing where Ayu is now. I need to time this precisely, or I will be the one in trouble. I scoop up a rock from the ground and weigh it in my paw. I throw it to the right of me. Like clockwork, they are guaranteed to hear it and think it is a dog. They know exactly where the rock hits and thus go patrolling. Almost as if programmed to behave that way. Throwing rocks will be the distraction. I snap out of my day daydream. I really play too much of the Tomb Digger games? The Tomb Digger? The Tomb Raider. Sadly, it's not how things work in real life. Though, since arenas are emulated rowdy, does not mean they're a video game in, in a sense? True! Wait, stop the sit pods, focus! I got to distract him, but no, with, with a rock. That very loud distraction, with a few brief moments to see that the two Akitas have sprung up, and are looking around in my general d d direction. I quickly move towards the beach before they get close enough to spot me. Hopefully, I'll run into Ayu or the other dog at any time now. I listen carefully as I walk. I am definitely being tailed, though I'm not sure if they have a visual on me. The ground that covers so quickly while spinning seems so vast. At a walk. I would have run, but being quiet is a priority. If the two Akitas are provoked, I could not outrun them. Hurry, Ayu. Take my mate. There! Oh, there's Ayu. Ayu is in the distance, looking at the ground. Following my foot footprints, perhaps. I remember telling her a story of our, ancest of our ancestors having a keen sense of smell. I'd be told if technology hadn't come and caused a evolution. What? They devolved because of technology? That's crazy. 
Um, anyhow, time to cause an another distraction. By this time, the Akita doesn't see me, but they're tailing me dis discreetly. Perhaps it's time to observe him first. But maybe I just don't look fun to them. Right? Man, I dear, this should get them going. I stop and look up and down slowly, as if looking for something. Then I look back at them and make eye contact for the first time. I yelp and flatten my body. The switch is instant, like a ball being tossed. Which is a funny idiom from our ancestors' instincts. Like a ball being tossed, the two immediately enter hunting mode, growling and taking on towards me. I dash forward. Do you, do you hit the up with the up bars? Yapping and faint hysteria. I'm in clear view of Ayu now and I throw myself at her. The two Akitas have closed in on us in no time as I wrestle as I wrestle and pin Ayu on her back. He squirms and twists, but I have the upper paw. Oh god. Instead of figuring out her pendant location, I run off, leaving her to the two opponents. Oh just like last time. Oh my god. I, I just got an achievement with Ayu's face when she died called Ayu Jelly. I've turned her into Ayu Jelly. Light shines onto my closed eyelids. It's like the brightness. I don't feel like opening my eyes. You just feel too heavy. I don't have the strength to open them. I left Ayu to the dogs again. Prod. Leave me alone. Physical sensation slowly returns as if my brain is lazily connecting my limbs back to my nervous system. Poke, poke. The pokes, which increase in intensity, speed up the process, so I bite unpleasantly. Uh. I'm lying on my right side. I almost wish I hadn't woken up because I am drenched in chilling sweat. Sid. Sid, I know you're awake. Uh. I feel a frame shake on my shoulder. Okay, okay. Um, I'm waking up. What? Huh? Ayu looms over me. The first thing I notice is her ragged and exhausted appearance. I want to make a quip, but I probably look the same, if not worse. Hey. My voice is a croak, but I'm unable to muster anything louder. Ah, <sighs> just checking that you're alive. It must have called hard to leave you in the streets. You know what? You deserve the win. I should have known you'd pull that bait and switch strategy again with those Ak Akitas. She thinks, she said again, she thinks we did it on purpose the first time. We, but we did, we did do it on purpose. Oh, man. I don't have the energy to respond, but she looks at me intently. She knows I'm listening. I was watching from the rocks. You've changed somewhat. Well, I wasn't expecting you to just run. They said I knew it was ruthless to the core and would never have done that. So there might be hope for you after all. She gives me one more poke on the shoulder. More like a kick than anything, though. By the way, she turns away and raises a paw in farewell. <gasps> oh, I forgive you. See, Sid? See, Sid? You don't have to be the ruthless, cold, murderous, violent demon you are. You can just be, you know, normal, happy. You're, 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 at the, you're at the top of your game. You can be free now. This is a journey of self-reflection, of atonement. This is a journey of righting the wrongs of Sid's past. Except for, uh, Fan, except for Fan Hui, who's uh, dead. He's just, he's just dead. Well, but, you know, we don't talk about him. With that, she makes her exit. I knew we shouldn't have wanted off looking for a shortcut. Uh, well, whatever the, the, the tap clan is, I hope they don't cause me any more trouble. If I use one of the bosses and she has no more quarrel with me, they should leave me alone. I watch her head out the alleyway, her footsteps heavy, her shadows stretched with the light, and she's gone. I lie there, my eyes not really focusing on anything. I feel left for dead. I whisper, but there's no one to respond. It's a while before I'm finally able to gather the strength to stagger upright. The world teeters. Alright, Sid, time to go home. Some time ago. I was raised to believe that dogs on the plains were only that. Prod dogs. Production dogs. Wait. Does that mean they use them? 
prod dogs of the lowest rank ship Inus forced to relocate to, to the plains. They were in charge of producing raw materials for the island. These were chores that weren't automated yet, or couldn't be. Day after day, completing the same task that any other dog would find meaningless. They are literally trading their lives to produce what sustains the island. Can you blame someone for not knowing something? They have never seen or heard of it? To the dogs inside the closed system, the equilibrium states of the world can be completely different, in the macro sense. But before lifting away that veil, is it not just and righteous to act within the bounds of the local reality? Yes, but this is the fact that once in the arena, you had been exposed to more than your previous local reality. In that moment, the veil is lifted, and the equilibria slowly merge. Since you have now witnessed the possibility of there being more to the existence of a prod dog, what is the just and righteous thing to do? There was a way to speed of the convergence, would you? Or if one perceives the collapse of the local equilibrium, equilibrium to be a threat, try to stop the convergence between the local and macro reality altogether? If we don't crack the shell of reality, we will die without truly ever being born. Can we revolutionize the world? The plains of Shiva Island might seem like a graveyard to us young dogs. Empty houses and buildings of the decades past. All the dogs that truly wish for a piece of reality eventually drawn out to the capital. What remains are those that live in the past. I consider myself fortunate that I knew that a larger reality existed outside. It wasn't that I sought it out. It wasn't that I worked harder than any other dog to acquire that knowledge. It was a piece of information that was passed on to me, that I used to make decisions with. If other dogs in the local reality also had that information, in such a complete form as I did, wouldn't they have done the same? My brother. Is he the one who gave us the info? Whoa, nice, nice building. I gingerly opened the gate that leads to the building. Obsidian Rock Industries is what we're looking for. Kui Lee and I cut through the huge grounds. Seems lovely maintained, but I get the feeling that not many dogs use the space for enjoyment. There was no one checking for visitors at the gate, nor was there security on the grounds. The building looms over us as we approach. It's an older style building, much like the retro tea shop and the restaurant that Max took me to. Red brick gives the building a distinct look, with arches lining the balcony. We pass under the entrance arch. <laughs> wow, if your brother owns a space here, he must really have pulled some strings, eh? <laughs> yeah, probably. Although we don't know. The, the clue could be in someone else's office. Tall wooden doors block our way, which I pull on. They swing open. <laughs> I guess the grounds are technically open to the public, but I doubt any dog would be a step inside. The atmosphere is intimidating, to say the least. Uh, hello. Sorry. <laughs> Dude, working my thrusty for four hours? Holy cannoli. My thrusty? Is on fire. I need a. Let me just, you know. Let me just drink some water and then. Uh... <clears throat> Hello, esteemed dogs. Oh, uh, hi. There's a wooden booth with only a window opening that we can see through. Reminds me of a box office stand. A dog peers out. My apologies for the interruption, but it is my duty to check the authorization of dogs that come through here. Uh, right. Don't worry, I got this. Quay Lee trots up to the window, pulling out her pendant. So, is this fine? Wait, you're challenging me? No! I believe you will find this sufficient. She shows us the dog and he nods. Thank you, and welcome. The elevator is her head and to the left. Please enjoy your stay. This is thanks. We head to the elevator. I don't know if I should bother asking Quay Lee if she uses her rank rights often. There's no point being upset about it. Like I told Max yesterday, I shouldn't be imposing my belief on others. What to say? Ooh. Hmm. See, okay, I was curious about like her feelings on rank rights, right? Because Quay Lee, we need to know more about her in order to form a consensus on do we trust? Or do we kill? I mean, not kill, sorry. We're not in the business of killing dogs. Or are we? We are in the business of finding my brother, but we need to know whether to trust her or not. With finding my brother or not. So, but 
asking okay the thing is with the first answer right do you ever feel bad when you use a rank phrase like, like this if you ask it like this it's biased it's pointed towards a specific answer that you're looking for you're asking in a specific scenario it's not open-ended at at all they might say no but at the same time they might be like you know i accept it as a as an unfortunate reality right the second one at least lets them expand and expound upon what they actually think about the concept i like open-ended questions because it gives them a chance to prove to me what they have to, to offer. What do you think about right rank, uh, rank rights, Quayley? Strange. It took me 72.73 seconds, slacker. I'm try. I do, I, I'm thinking these thoughts, I'm thinking these thoughts. You're jealous that I think thunk thought, that I thunk a good thought and you didn't. Hey, Q, why is every dog named Q? Yeah? What do you, what do you think about rank rights? Let me guess. You have some opinion on what I did just now, right? Uh, yeah. You've read me like an open book. S sometimes I wonder what using rank rights means to me. I usually end up feeling re regretful, even if the results are what I wanted. Well, sometimes you just have to use it. I do take into account what outcome I am aiming for. What if we could have entered the building another way? You didn't even try anything else. If what you're trying to get at is that I went straight to using my rank rights, you're wrong. I went to the website, I tried to buy a ticket. Sold out. My consideration is that, say we manage to sneak in, the possibility of getting caught later is still high. In that case, one of us might still have to resort to using rank rights to escape. So, if there's a high chance of having to use rank rights down the line, it saves a lot of time to use it at the beginning. In other words, going from a 90% probability we'd have to use rank rights to 100%, this is a large jump. So we might as well use it, save all the additional inconvenience of getting caught in the first place. Alright, that makes sense. Uh, you don't seem fully convinced. Look, I don't prefer using rank rights before anything else. But I do think carefully uh, about it, and it's not for every situation. Not for every situation. Many dogs say that, and it's being a slippery slope. All of a sudden, getting some lower ranked dog to run your errands could be a justifiable situation. I see your point, but you're thinking too much. It sounds like you're really trying to demonstrate some more high ground here. But you're trying to make me feel guilty. I... I know it seems hypocritical that I'm against using rank, right? Seeing as I worked so hard to get my own rank. But I really just want to not answer to any dog. Not to actively bend any other dogs to my will. True. Right? All Sid wanted was freedom. Freedom from a system that, by birth, put her in the plains as a prod dog. So of course she understands the, uh, the uh, plight of being controlled. She doesn't want to enforce that control on others. She never wanted power to have power. She wanted power to be free. Freedom was her goal. It was never to be strong. And that is your own choice to make, which I respect. Why do I feel like you had this conversation with many dogs? So you talk about this to Max too, eh? Yeah, I guess it's that obvious. Sorry, I don't mean to sound accusatory or anything. I'll stop now. That would be nice. Why does she still look so angry? Her voice is curt the first I've, time I've heard it like that. I gulp. I'd have to contain myself. It's been a decade's worth of pent-up thoughts, but it's not fair to, to make Quayley just listen to me rant on and on. See, she's still, she's still kind of a scary character, you know? Still gotta be careful. Obsidian rock. What will I find, I wonder? It's a simple door and a nondescript sign that says obsidian rock. I wiggle the doorknob. Oh, <gasps> wait, aren't doorknobs antique things? So this building has been here for a while, right? It's locked. Well, did he leave you any secret key? Some last parting gift? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I guess it won't be that, that easy. But if it's his space, I could get away with breaking in. Now, now, Miss Featherbear, are you sure we don't have any, any other options? Like, maybe I can use my rank right to the dog downstairs and get the keys. Gee, she's being passive aggressive. No, no, we don't have to have to do that. I'll claim that my brother shares his property with me. If there's any trouble and we do involve the dog downstairs, he'll be blamed because of his lower rank. I think with either method, you'd be the one in trouble. Giving another dog to take the blame could give you a way out of it. No, I'm not doing that. That sounds awful. What? 
Why am I, why are we dragging this random dog who's doing the job? They they're doing a fine job, you know. But I just Look, I just really try not to use other dogs now. Be able to rank right or any other methods. Yeah, I can tell. Sorry. That came out harsh. Well, to me, your brother is just another dog. You seem perfectly happy to be illegally trespassing on his property. He's the one that led us here. He must have wanted me to get him by any means necessary. I mean, without getting other dogs involved. Kui Lee doesn't argue any further, just shrugs. Look, I know you suggested getting the keys from the dog downstairs only to keep me out of trouble. So thank you. Best to let her comment about using rank rights as a uh, slide. I mean, I hit a, a nerve earlier. She was just trying to help and I kept accosting her. You know what, just smash the door in. I'll do it. I'm larger. This will be no issue. No, it's okay. I'll use the feather. You don't need to risk it on my account. Wait, what does the feather do? The bearer of the feather has the right to alter reality. And if the reality is that the door is unlocked, so it would be. I twist the doorknob and it changed smoothly. That's actually insane. This is the funniest stock looking image of all time. It just looks perfect. It's literally like just a weird empty like building. I push the door open, holding it for Koi Lee to enter. Wow. That makes things that makes things much more convenient. Could you do anything like can you do anything? Like anything with the feather? Well I'm not sure. But simple things I'm sure could change all sorts of reality. But say for huge events, I need to plant all the components. For example, if I want the world to end, I'd have to plan out exactly how. By food shortage, a fire, how the fire not be put out. Maybe something happened to the fire department's pipe in infrastructure. I I'd have to break everything down to the smallest components. But I could make it work. Wow. You see why I don't like using it though. It's way too much responsibility. If you choose to use it over simple solutions such as me shouldering the door, it would have given it, it would have given way immediately. I just didn't want you to get your paws dirty. Using the feather for something small is the least I could do. Yeah, I agree with Sid here, right? The feather has the power to just unlock doors. It's like the skeleton key in like Skyrim. She's literally, she literally has the gecko or like the like gek in the Skyrim. She's literally, uh, you know what I mean? Like why, why even bother trying to break your shoulder? The dogs have shoulders. What constitutes a shoulder? Oh my god, dogs do have shoulders. Wait, okay. Do dogs have four shoulders or four thighs? Or do they have two shoulders and, and two hips? I have an image. Wait. Dog pants. Yes. 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 Important question. <laughs> Listen, this is an important question. Important question. Right? Because think about it. Depending on how they orient, right? They, they either break their shoulders or their hips. Oh god, would I save it? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, would I save it? Oh no. Oh. Aww. Aww. Aw, man. Sorry. PNG. There we go. PNG. There we go. It all depends on, on the pants. It all depends on the pants. There's a hallway further along with doors lining it. We check them one by one, but they're all empty. We proceed along the hallway. It leads to a large open room. Ah! Oh, flashbang! Oh! My eye! It's so bright! 
Okay, for context, I'm literally in a basement. It's so dark. This is like blinding me. Oh. Dude, why couldn't they paint the walls like black? In the center of the room sits a single desk. This must be it. I hope so. You, th you think your brother would just leave something like this? It does look suspiciously easy. My arena senses are tingling. But we did get this far. It's not gonna stop me. Now march up to the desk and forcefully start opening the drawers. Naha! There's a thick leather bound book tied close, tied close with a piece of twine. I took the twine to unravel it and the book bursts open. Here, take a look. I flip to the last page. It's a journal. Oh, <gasps> but what's it a journal of? I imagine. Oh my god, it's Chun Wen. I imagine there are many worlds. In theory, I might like to visit them. However, my biggest desire is to merely to avoid complicated things. Drama, maintenance of status. It's so troublesome to me. Chun Wen. Is it really okay to be leaving your thoughts sitting out here in the open? Well, to be fair, a random dog would be very hard pressed to even try to break in into this place. The building itself reeks of high ranking. I didn't really mean it as a serious question. <laughs> oh, oops. Uh, maybe you're rubbing off on me, Sid. So, any of the clues we have here? Ah. Uh, I quickly check the other drawers in the, in the desk. Empty. I check underneath just to be sure if there's some hidden compartment. Doesn't seem to be. I knock on the desk in the sides, trying to listen to the hollow signs. This doesn't seem to be any anything odd. Short while later. I guess the journal was the only thing to find in Obsidian Rock Industries. I'll take a look at it when I get home and see if we can figure out what clues Chun Wen left. Sounds good. Keep me posted? I will. Thanks for the help, Quayley. As we leave the building, I tie the book shut and clutch it tightly. I never thought that my brother would be the type th to keep a journal, actually. I guess there are parts of each other we don't know. Were you too close? Yeah. I consider them to be the dog most like me. That turned out to be eerily true when I learned I would face him in the final arena bracket. We had a great time in the plains as puppies. I think that was the time I saw him the most. After that, we had to live apart from each other. We didn't speak regularly, but I see him during the break between an arena bracket or two. You know how after you leave a dog, it's like your life goes on separate branches? It always felt that no matter how far away our branches grew, they would eventually come back and meet. You'll see if your branches meet again after you figure out that bad journal. But I'm wondering, would you say that this is the furthest your branches have ever been apart? Wow, that is a great sentence. I don't know, that, that's such a... That's such an evocative sentence. Very evocative sentence. I actually like that. I'm gonna save just because of that sentence. So I can come back and then read it. Over and over again. You literally left the island. It's been so many years. Yeah. I've long known that we would go our separate ways. But I never expected that we would be such separate ways. There were some days when I doubted my decisions. And I wondered if my departure from the island divided the branches irredeemably. But I still have the hope that we'll come together again. Like I said. Anyway, I'll go and read through this. <gasps> oh my god. Is this the first time we actually get to, like, you know, build a report? No, but then, okay, is this risky, right? Think about it. We still don't know Kuei Li, and she has this, like, this sharp side to her, right? She has this angry sharp side to her. The problem is that if she comes with us, right, we'd have to bring her into Max's home. Into Mochi's home. But if we're to build a relationship, one that we can foster some sort of, 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 of trust in, I have to ask, say, Kui Li, do you want to join me? Like, not to read the journal. I feel my brother would want me to do it alone. But just to keep me company? <laughs> sure. Why not? Let's roll then. This, envir this environment isn't very comfortable. Yeah, too posh for us, you know? I stayed up late reading the, the journal. I've read roughly one third of it, but so far nothing stands out as a clue. Max left breakfast for me once again. 
after devouring the egg crepes. How many? Like, how many egg crepes can I eat? Right? Sid's diet is egg crepes and bubble tea. She's going to die of a heart attack <laughs> before we ever find the br a brother. After devouring the egg crepes, I sit in the armchair and pick up the journal again. Sometime later. I'm hungry. Oh, it's still a while till Max gets home from work. I can, I can probably go get something. Huh. What's nearby? I remember seeing a fried sweet potato stall near here. Or should I get IU jelly? Uh, it's never not where that IU happens to be the name of the dog. And also the name of my favorite drink. Humming a tune, I check for my pendant and turn on Max's alarm system before stepping out the door. I double check that the door is locked and take the elevator down. I should walk later. In the end, I got both the IU drink and sweet potato fries. On the way back, I can't help but reach into the paper bag for a sweet potato fry. Oh, uh, right, I should use a stick. My paws aren't clean. Ew, wait, yeah, that, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So they don't walk on their, on their back legs. So they're walking on all fours at all times and then they shake hands and there's like dust. What if they step in like other dogs' poop and stuff, right? Wait. Do they use toilets? Or do they just poop and stuff on the floor and pee on the floor? Right? I'm just saying, if I became a dog, I would drop a big fat steaming load anywhere I could. Just mark my territory. One there, one there. Pop, 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 pop. And go. Pop, 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 pop. Toilets. They clog. You gotta clean toilets, you know? They waste water. You just drop a load on the grass, bro. Bro, just <laughs> squat in the grass and you just drop a hot steaming load. <laughs> bro, come on. You wanna drop, drop a load with us? I take the thin bamboo skewer and stick it into the fry. Delicious hot steam comes to the hole. I just poked in a thick, freshly fried potato. Wait. These dogs act like the Monster Hunter dogs from Monster Hunter World, the cats, where they have paws but they somehow grip things with no thumbs. Delicately, I bring the stick up to my mouth. Ah! Oh, no. Ugh, where am I? Where is this? Hello, hello? Shuela? Why are you? The dog takes out her pendant, and I feel mine yanking at my jacket as it is drawn like a magnet to the other pendant. She is much more deserving of the title than me. What confidence I have built up over the years has been shattered by this encounter. No matter what I do, I will never be as good as her. Is this what other dogs feel like? Is this, is this what other dogs felt like when they went against me in the arenas? By pure luck, I prevailed against her. To have to rely on luck. I used to feel like I was in, in control of my fate. Now I understand it's all just a dice roll. What's the use of trying? Even though the end result was good, I feel like there are many dogs that are much more deserving. They were so skilled. What did they do wrong? I grin as I strap myself down. Arena by arena, I'm closer to fulfilling my destiny. I'm going to hold the power of all reality. And dogs will bow down before me. No one will dare stand in the way of my freedom. I've worked so hard since the last arena. And I've, have, and, and I've come out on top. And so are the dogs in this bracket. Finally, dogs worthy of going head to head with me. The familiar sensation of consciousness fading is still being aware and sentient. Like emerging from sleep, waking into a world that is real yet completely parallel to real life. The emulated reality in which arenas are set, and buzzing with anticipation. I am so ready to kill these dogs! In this arena, it doesn't matter that all of us were the top dog in the past brackets. Here, only one of us can be the winner, and the rest, losers. These are going to be the most challenging opponents I've ever met. What if they outwit me? No, stop. Take a deep breath, Sid. You're a little nervous, and that's natural. I'm sure everyone is wired up. Two, uh, two, eleven. So, uh, roughly eleven years ago. Eleven, eleven to twelve. Day one, arena twelve. Wait, arena twelve. <gasps> Wait, the one where we, where we, the one where we abandoned Hey Fen, and w where we killed um. Sh Shu, I forgot his name already. The guy we like killed. The, the the dog that died was in arena nine. This is the finals. We're almost the finals. 
The world comes into focus again and I can feel it. The exhilaration when an arena begins. All alone in the world, so... Quiet. But no time to enjoy it. Time to get my bearings. This one is set in a modern building. I actually recognize it as a building from real life. It's a bit different, of course. Usually bustling with dogs in the shopping center downstairs, it's now deserted. Crisscross escalators connect the floors still operating. The trouble is that it's visible from several floors above if you take them. I'd have to be desperate to use these. I'll still hop on the escalators if I, if I have to escape from a tight situation, but let's hope it doesn't come to that. There are 20 of us, so I wonder how we spawned. From what I can tell, I'm on, on, I'm on one of the lower floors. Or at least, if this is true to the real world building layout. Assuming we're evenly distributed, that would mean there's only one dog for every five floors so. Well, that's a very little f dogs, huh? These five floors could be each dog's de facto territory. Uh, since five floors is pretty vast for one dog to guard, wouldn't be difficult. It wouldn't be difficult for an opponent to slip inside the territory. On the, on the other part, it'd also be risky to attack someone else's territory early on because that would leave one's own territory vulnerable. Such are the inconveniences of going solo. Contrary to, prop, to earlier arenas, it isn't, it isn't common to group up immediately. To gotten this far, these dogs can take care of themselves. But I prefer this. Never rely on anybody if you want to be able to alter reality. That's what I tell myself. No need to trust anyone, but it's great if dogs trust me. That strategy has worked for me thus far. I take a walk around my floor. Storefronts are lined up along the sides with mannequins and glass showcases. Their interiors seem true to real life. The storefronts I see so far have clothes racks set up neatly. This is an important observation, as some arenas seem more like set pieces, vaster and emptier. I enter a store and will stalk through the aisles, knowing that there would be a good, knowing that there would be good hiding places or like trees in the wild, good for breaking up line of sight. Can I continue to explore, feeling more familiar with the floor layout, and also getting impatient to scout what others are doing? It is risky, so I can't defend my own base while I'm gone. But being aggressive has often worked out for me. I might as well go for it. <laughs> there is one ruler of reality, and I'm going to be it. Wait a minute. Shwela? What if- wait, if this is the final one, right? One ruler? If I'm assuming Arena 12 is the final one, then wouldn't my brother be here as well? Wouldn't be wise to use the escalators like I had known earlier. That's begging for attention. If I remember correctly, there's an escape. There's there's a fire escape somewhere here. Locating the closest staircase, I begin my ascension. It's a greatness. I take a cursory look at the two floors above me, but they're deserted. On the third floor, I tread more carefully, taking a look around every corner before venturing out. If I refer to the floor I landed on as a ground floor, and my theory is correct that each dog has five floors, I should run into someone soon. Of course. I'm still assuming that the arena does things symmetrically, which according to my experience is reasonable. I had one more flight of stairs, bringing this to the fourth floor from my spawn point. At this point, the storefronts give way to office space. I know that some floors are rented out to companies that as office space, and that there are luxury stores and restaurants on the highest floors. You know what? We have a mall very similar to this where, where we live, actually. The lower floor is all the stories, like literally all the stories, whether they're fancy or not. The upper floors is it, you actually get a, a ton of office space. I always found that insane. Imagine, okay? Sorry, drinking the water because it's been four. It's been five hours since I've been reading nonstop, but I can't stop. Like I'm so interested. But we, we have a mall like this as well. It's crazy to me that people would want offices on top of a mall. Because by the time you get to work, you're like, like there's no parking. It's completely filled with like people. It's super busy. The only upside is you get to do your shopping very easily. But most mall stuff is usually overpriced. And or it's not things that you would need on a daily basis. Like, you know, groceries. There's no groceries inside a mall for the most part. But in the real world, I've only been to shopping floors. So I don't know what to expect on these upper floors. I wonder if there's food in the luxury restaurant floors. Hmm. What time you have to clean climb on that that many floors? If that happens, I'll need to conserve energy so I don't have a disadvantage. Surely there are regular elevators past this point. 
there seem to be only freight elevators on the shopping floors. I prefer to avoid them since they move too slowly. However, there may be no choice but to take either type of elevator to access the higher floors if I don't want to be tired out climbing the stairs. Since elevators are in an enclosed space, I'll need to be extra careful since they could easily be rigged with traps. Now that I think about it, I should rig the ele elevators before anyone else gets to it. <gasps> I spot some movement in the corner of my eye, in, a, in another section on the floor. I don't think I'll go on the offensive yet, but I might as well get a good visual on this dog. I head in the direction that I saw the movement. I pass a floor to I pass a floor to ceiling glass divider, which opens into an office cafeteria. Wait, what? Why would a mall? Okay, a mall, a mall office has their own cafeteria, even though the mall has a food a food court. That's interesting. Huh? Where'd it go? There's no sign of anyone else in the cafeteria area, so I move along. There's another open area that forms a ring corridor. Ah, <sighs> there it is again. Now I can clearly see the dog. She's gray. Not a very common color, but that makes her all the more memorable. Spotting me, she moves quickly down the ringed corridor and vanishes through a door. Should I go for it? I weigh my options. It's quite early on in the arena, so chances are she hasn't had much preparation. She probably isn't 100% familiar with the surroundings. Unless she happened to have worked her prior, which is unlikely. Work, if applicable, only starts after a dog has completed all their arenas. This is so each dog can be allocated to work that suits their value. That's messed up. I suppose it's safe not to take the initiative right now. Because, like, imagine. If your value is low, right? They're going to put you in, like, pretty dangerous jobs, you know? If your value is high, you, 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 you get to effectively reap all the benefits from all the people who are on the lower end working for you. It's like, that's actually crazy. I suppose it's safe not to take the initiative right now. I'm confident with my ability to react on the fly. I head for the door she escaped into. It's another cafeteria area. The mirror image of the area I had just left. Huh. She must have gone into the offices. I walk through the seating area, but suddenly, a vending machine topples down, blocking the way behind me. Oh, I've been trapped. Tao. I could climb over it. But the dog must know exactly where I am now. Try not to think too much about it, I proceed into the offices. It's quiet. It's seemingly empty. I flatten my body, below the heights of the desk. I love- okay. I love when dogs like flatten their like body to go like low. They look so cute and it's like, come here, you little fluffer. Where could she be? All of a sudden, a cabinet to topples down towards me. How is this happening? I make a beeline for a gap between two tables. Good thing I wasn't squashed, but I want to stay hidden and leave the area. The sound from the finisher traps is surely is how she avoids being caught off guard. The further than I go, the more apparent it is that the desk had been rearranged. Have I been funneled in this direction without even noticing? I gulp involuntarily, feeling the lump go down my throat. It's only the beginning of the arena. How did she manage to set this up so quickly? One wrong move and I'll... I'll be eliminated. Another bang. And I jump. Uh, forget finding that dog. I'm getting out of here. There should be a fire escape nearby, assuming it's connected to the one on the shopping floors. I scan the walls and thankfully I spy the door in question. No. That's a trap. Hanging straight forward, I press the button that opens it. It doesn't budge. No, 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 no. I press again and again, desperately. Empty clicks are ringing in my ears like my heartbeat. Oh, my, my, my. A really reckless one, aren't you? The dog appears from behind one of the office desks. Such a shame to be eliminated so quickly. I don't answer, backing away and putting some distance between us. Honestly, I'm surprised that someone would fall for this so quickly. She slowly looks me up and down. I don't have the luxury to observe in the same detail, so trying to scan the room for openings, while only watching her for slight movements in my peripheral vision. Ah, I get it. You're a prod dog, aren't you? I turn my full attention to on her. She's smiling smugly. Well, what'd you say about me? Huh? I try to keep my expression neutral, but she seems to have caught the brief flash of irritation. That explains your abysmal performance thus far. Now, I've been performing perfectly well. She's just trying to distract me. But I could just run away, you know. I'm bluffing. We both know it. The way she couldn't me by blocking the fire escape. 
She had exactly predicted my actions. She probably already set up something behind me to, to further trap me. I'm almost like larger than her, but at this stage in the arena, physical strength barely gives me a competitive edge. But in this de deficit situation, maybe. I run forward, ramming into her. She sidesteps so I don't impact her head on, but it's enough to throw her off balance. However, she uses a split second of impact to fill up my torso. I know exactly what she's looking for. Yeah, I even, uh, even at a moment like that, she's gathering information. Huh. You don't have it hidden there. Like a wild dash towards another door that probably leads back to the side of the office complex I came from. Thankfully, it opens. I frantically look up behind me as I run out. The other dog hasn't moved to pursue me. Goodbye, my little puppy. She waits cheerfully, but along with her sweet smile, she's watching me beatily. God, that's so creepy. She's letting me go on purpose. All my bravado stamped out of me. I skate back to my floors, tail tucked between my legs the entire time. Island year 211. Day 3. This is day 3. Oh my god. Next couple days, I just snoop around, getting a catalog of the other dogs. I take the freight elevator several times with incidents, and leave some items around the access points on my floor so I can observe if anyone has trespassed. For example, I dragged up a fluffy rug and set it in front of the elevator door so I'd notice if there were paw, any, paw, paw, any paw indent on that. In front of the fire escape doors, four in total, I spread a thin layer of powder. This I procured by sneaking into the office floors and grabbing some food replacement powder from the kitchen. I also arranged some simple traps and funnels into the storefronts like the dog above me had. However, since most of my props are clothes racks, instead of something steady and heavy like office decks, there are obvious vulnerabilities in my funnels. Despite the preparations, my floor remains relatively quiet. I wonder if it's, if it's, if, if it's because I'm on the lowest floors. To get here, dogs where to get past that absolutely brutal trapper above me. If anyone is the best position to eliminate me, it would be her. Thankfully, she seems to prefer to lure dogs in, which is terrifying. Which reminds me. Some time ago, I step out of the I step out of the freight elevator to a floor that's above the trapper's levels. Trapper is a code name I'm taking to call on the dog above me. All right, coast clear. I scan all around me, including the ceiling, before venturing out. Suddenly, I hear yapping from a distance, and I cautiously move along towards the sound. As I near the circular corridor overlooking the escalators, I can tell that the sound is coming from a floor or two below. I creep up to, I creep up to the railing and peer down. Ah, fish sticks. The trapper has a dog tied up very, very well. Its feet are bound together and its torso is tied to railings on the floor. She circles the, the prey, and I hear the smug, playful tone she used with me the other day. She moves close to the trapped dog and lowers her voice. I can't make out what she's saying, but the conversation seems quite one-sided. After some moments, she starts prodding around the victim's torso and seems to find what she's looking for. The tied-up dog seems completely out of it. However, Oh my god, she's going to torture them. Instead of smashing its pendant immediately, the trapper chats away for a bit longer. Not to listening any response from the victim, the trapper shrugs and finally takes a swipe at the dog. What is she asking about? Well, that's one down. The trapper watches the dog dissolve before sauntering away. The next day. Anyhow, today I'm going to try to scout a high up, up floor. My freight elevator doesn't even go past the 40th floor. So I can I take the customer elevators from the 10th floor, the separate freight elevators from the 20th. Compared to typical arena set in the open, this level design complicates traveling since there are bottlenecks at each floor's access points. <laughs> Prefer dogs that operate like the trapper. This is, okay, wait, that's like a, she, is this, it's almost like she's a DVD character now, right? She's literally the, the trapper from DVD and we're the survivors. Somebody do the Jennies. Anyway, I want, I want to get a better idea of the state of the of competition. So far, I've seen a larger black sheaver in the luxury restaurant floors. The dog eliminated by the trapper had occupied, the, had occupied the floors above the trapper, from my guess. I arrive at the next series of floors, the amenities. Basically, luxury hotel rooms in a mall? That sounds sick. That, that, that actually sounds cool. There's some trip wires near the elevator, but luckily I spot them in time and avoid them. These wires are pretty thick. No wonder I didn't fall for them. For going deep inside, I need to plan an escape route. Circling the perimeter, I find, I find a fire escape stairwell and triple check that it opens and closes properly. Can't take any chances as that narrow escape from the trapper. I memorize the routes and head back to the elevator area. Alright, hope this works out. I'll pretend to be caught and lure out the dog on this floor. I purposely pull on one of the trip wires. But instead of a trap, there's a strong jolt of electricity. Oh no! What? 
Uh, I let an involuntary yap. While not a little shock, it's quite enough to numb me. Ah, shit. Now I know. Now I see why these wires are thick. Yay. I limp away and hunker behind the pilot plant to recover. Do they recover health slowly? Or did I have to, do I have to find chug jugs, you know, to fill up my shield? Surprisingly, no dog comes since. So once the feeling returns to my limbs, I emerge from cover. I pick a branch off the pilot plant and use it to prod some of the remaining lines. <laughs> I was hoping to get to get it. Uh, I was hoping to get its attention, whoever it is. It might be busy, or perhaps it didn't bother to set the wires and to notify when trapped. I want to explore the hotel rooms, but there's more of these traps. It's too dangerous. The scene of being at the trapper's mercy keeps replaying, sapping all my courage to go further. I'm being so confident, such a wimp. Just then, someone jumps out of the, uh, the elevator. <gasps> I follow my instincts and run down the corridor to the left. There's a fire escape. Just before I can round the corner, it calls after me. I can't catch you there, so listen for a second. The voice. It's her! I glance back. She's still standing in front of the elevator, so it doesn't sound like a trap. I pause, but only turn partially towards her. My body lines ring the clay that I intend to ball if she makes any sudden movement. You see, I have a proposition for you. I'm interested in making these floors part of my trapper floors. Even she uses that term, trapper. What's in it for me? My voice is barely a squeak. No, Sid, get, to get it together. Can't show her any weakness. See, I'm interested in partnering up with someone. What? The maybe partnering is the wrong word. I need a helper that can be comfortable around. Of course, in return, you'll be getting a much higher ranking than you really deserve. Right. Under normal circumstances, I would have challenged her on, on her assumptions. To tell her I can get whatever thing ranking I want without her. She wants someone she can be comfortable around. <laughs> she means someone she can eliminate at, at any time. Never in my life has anyone talked down to me like that. But I can't even justify getting offended. Even someone as practical as I am cannot deny the truth of what she's implying. She even had the decency to say in an indirect way. She really could eliminate me at any time. I have to agree so I can survive for a bit longer. Oh god. So... I know that I beat her at some point, right? But I don't want to give, like, her any feelings of, like, you know... Trying to, like, attempt a thing. I want to- I want to submit as well as I can without getting rid of my pride. Just so that I can maybe get closer to her to try to figure it out. I hope you change your mind. But I'll do it. I'm just gonna be honest here. And this punishment will only be temporary. I hope you change your mind, but I'll do it. She nods in response. Now it's gonna be hard to work. Now it's gonna be hard to work together if she's saying now. It's gonna be hard to work to get together if she's saying that far away. But I understand why you're keeping your distance. So, see here. She reaches into her shirt and pulls out her, her pendant. Da! Slowly and deliberately, she puts it back into her shirt but makes the exact location of it clear. Don't worry, I don't need to see yours. Not right now, anyways. So we're gonna come here and discuss a way to make this floor's ours? Shakily, I nod. Oh my god. She's pure confidence. Also... I may have to call it here because I can feel my voice getting significantly shakier. I don't want to call it here because it's it's such a good part of the story, right? Like, I'm still so curious about what happens, but... I can feel my voice really, really waning here. This may have to be the end for today. Because it's been five hours, and you can kind of hear it, the, the scratchiness here. If I get really close, you can kind of hear the like, scratchiness. It feels very slim, you know? Like a like a Slim Jim. Like a Slim Jim being, being slammed down my thrusty. Narrating all this is hard. There's a lot more lines than I expected. But... You can see the quality that we're working with, right? Again, something about the story is so interesting. There's, there's, there's a, such a, a fascinating quality about it. It feels like sci-fi almost, which I think is such an interesting genre to, to tackle because of all the different ways you can take it. And yet it grounds itself in a, sol in, in, in a reality that feels r very grounded and real. It feels like a very normal reality with these you know, slightly high technological as well as fantastical elements like the feather of, of, of reality and the so on. I really, really like this game. I'm going to continue it tomorrow. Instead of doing Road Warden, I'm going to continue, continue this tomorrow. We'll do Road Warden on uh, Thursday instead. 
because I'm not gonna be able to play Tears of the Kingdom until Friday anyways, I think, depending on our timelines. Um, but also because Tears of the Kingdom comes out at midnight, so I'll be playing World Warden before Tears of the, of, of the Kingdom. Again, before I go, and again, I'm sorry that I have to go now, but again, it's my throat is, is killing me. It, it, like, it's actually getting pretty bad. Better to save my throat than to lose it, right? I just want to point out that their next game does have... Okay, I'm not pooping. Sorry, I'm no longer pooping. Not poop then, dog. I just want to point out their next game does have a Kickstarter on, okay? If you haven't had the chance, please play the game. Please play the demo of the next game, Autumn with the Shiba Inu. It's actually really, really good. I really like it a lot. I think it's extremely, extremely good. I think the quality feels... It's like you could tell that it feels kind of like leveled up in terms of like how interesting it is as a story. Right? You get a much more immediate sense of the personalities of the characters. And the artwork was just, again, just, just really good. Please. I'm going to post it inside the chat because I... I I really want to see it happen. If any of you are rich, beyond belief, I'm talking like seven figures worth, okay? And you have so much extra money that you can just spend on it. For the love of God, please, please back it. Because if it doesn't, there's no telling how long it'll take to make. There's 10 days left on it. I really want to see this sequel, or not a sequel, but you know, the second game in the series come, come to fruition. I am going to continue this tomorrow. Summer with the Shiba Inu t tomorrow. Sorry, my throat is just, you know, done for today. I tried to push it as long as I could, but I think that's a good place to end it off as well. Now we're on her team, and now we have something... Uh, we have a bit of a, um... How do you say? A bit of a a, a, a... a cliffhanger to look forward to, yes? Thank you again for coming to watch. Um, I'm gonna end stream here as well. I, I don't think I, I have the energy after this. I need to prepare my throat anyways for... Recovery. I need to get some honey tea. Thank you for watching. As always, I appreciate it a lot. No, no, thank you for coming. My my good friend, Lloyd Lloyd Hentai. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you as, as well, my uh, beautiful wife, uh, for coming as well. I'd like to thank my new followers as well. Uh, Cyril Plays, as well as Tech Tree Century. Thank you for following as well. Again, no need to chat or anything. You're just, you're free to, to just watch, right? If you do want to chat, I do read chat. I do respond. If you, if you missed the uh, initial portions of the stream, just remember, the VODs are always on the VOD channel. Links in the profile, links in my profile below, okay? Keep an eye out on the main channel. I swear to God, a new video is coming soon. I just need to edit it. The Resident Evil series will be done. The Crosscode series will be done. I got a couple of one-off videos that I wanted to edit into that will be done as well. Okay, keep an eye out. Thank you everyone for watching. Have a wonderful day. I'm gonna go back to the washroom. I can feel a turtle starting to form in my in my butthole. Goodbye and have a good day. <laughs>